What's up guys? It's your boy Om Sensei back with Reborn is to Sai Shiba in DXD. Part 6. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. After Tatsaya said the three magical words to Zeoticus, the red-headed devil snapped, and his brows immediately shifted to show his anger. Zeoticus started to release his aura and glared at Tatsaya, in order to make him scared. But soon widened his eyes, when he saw Tatsaya smirking at him while sitting back more comfortably. Tatsaya looked at the devil in front of him and said, so did you like those three magical words? Zeoticus only gritted his teeth and said, don't cross the line shitty brat. Tatsaya just looked at him with an amused smile and said, oh crossing the lines is one of my favorite hobbies. Seeing these shit-like faces like you are making right now makes me feel so happy that I cannot tell you. Zeoticus only narrowed his eyes and said, you are making delight of me. Even if I have not fought with someone for a long time, you should still not underestimate someone who has survived the Great War. Hearing that Tatsaya started laughing which made Zeoticus' anger flare up and he said, what is so funny here? Or is it that you finally lost it? Tatsaya calmed himself down and then looked at him and said, no no, I just remembered a fallen similar to you who was proud of himself for surviving the Great War. Do you know what happened to him? Tatsaya then stopped smiling and glared at Zeoticus while activating his Sharingan making him flinch. Zeoticus who saw the cold look from Tatsaya's eyes whose effect increased because of the Sharingan took a step back. Tatsaya who saw him taking a step back smirked and said, all bark and no bite, heh. At least that fallen had the courage to stand up to me. Some great devil you are. Hearing the insult Zeoticus started to release his demonic power and said, you will pay for mocking me, you dare say that a fallen is better than me. Tatsaya just kept smiling and said, congratulations your ears are working properly. Zeoticus who now had enough of Tatsaya, fired an orb of demonic energy towards Tatsaya, who kept looking at the orb with a neutral expression on his face. When the orb was just centimeters away from his face Tatsaya's Sharingan changed, and the orb started to get absorbed in a spiral-like motion inside Tatsaya's Kamui dimension. The scene made Zeoticus completely shocked, and he could only open his mouth wide in surprise. Seeing that Zeoticus was shocked Tatsaya smirked and said, you done, Gremory in a mocking tone the devil who heard Tatsaya's mocking tone, snapped back to reality and glared at Tatsaya. He gritted his teeth clenched his fist and jumped at Tatsaya in order to punch him. Tatsaya looked at him with a bored expression and opened his mouth to yawn. He continued to look at the devil coming towards him in slow motion because of his Sharingan, and used his telekinesis to send him crashing in the ceiling. Tatsaya looked up and said, you like my ceiling? Zeoticus pushed his body down with his hands and got his head out of the ceiling and jumped down on the floor. He stared at Tatsaya and is now villigant of him, he then slowly started to charge up his demonic power for a big attack, thinking that Tatsaya would not notice it. But Tatsaya being Tatsaya, noticed the energy being charged by the devil, and narrowed his eyes and said, you do know that there are other people beside us in the house, right? Hearing that Zeoticus got surprised, but a grin appeared on his face and he said, so what? I'm sure that my son and Seraphil can easily withstand the attack while saving their sisters, that's what matters to me. About the rest, well they might get caught up in action. Tatsaya smiled at him and said, you know you are very twisted unlike your personality you show to the others. Zeoticus continued to grin and said, oh, I am very proud of my acting. Tatsaya nodded and said, you know I am also very proud of something. He then disappeared from Zeoticus's sight, making him widen his eyes in surprise. He then heard a voice which made him completely shocked, I am very good at butt kicking. And used a bit of his strength and kicked him making him crash into the wall of the room, which also broke the barrier he placed. Zeoticus fell off from the wall and was not able to move Tatsaya's kick broke several of his bones, and the only thing that he could feel was pain. He looked hatefully towards Tatsaya, who was only looking at him with a cold expression on his face. Seeing the look on his face Zeoticus was completely scared, he was not able to think what to do, he was not able to move, his magic did not work, physical attacks didn't work, and his experience from the Great War was not helping him at all. He could only grit his teeth and curse Tatsaya in his mind. Tatsaya then started walking towards him making Zeoticus twitch his body wanting to move away from there, but was not able to do anything. Tatsaya came in front of him and crouched down to look at his face more clearly. Zeoticus who saw him crouch down in front of him while his Sharingan was still active, was now shivering, and was hoping for someone to save him. Tatsaya moved his hand and grabbed his hair to lift his head to his level, and stared directly in his eyes. Tatsaya then said with a cold voice, listen here, I don't care whether you are a devil or how great your house is. Heck I don't even care if you try to kill me. But just now the attack you were planning to launch could have injured those dear to me, and that was the only thing that you should not have done. He then surrounded the room with a soundproof barrier, and stabbed a holy sword in his stomach, after which Zeoticus started screaming in pain. Tatsaya didn't stop there and started to release holy magic around the room, making the pain more severe for the devil, while also lowering his pain resistance. 
Xeonicus was looking at Tetsuya and wanted to ask for mercy, but the only thing that came out of his mouth was screams filled with pain. Tetsuya also continued to look at him with cold eyes, making him even more scared. Tetsuya looked at the devil whose body was twitching and moved forward and held the hilt of the sword. Seeing that Xeoticus got more scared thinking that he was going to stab it deeper, but contrary to his expectations, Tetsuya took the sword out and stopped releasing the holy magic around the room. Tetsuya then casted a healing magic on the devil, making his wounds and injuries completely disappear without any trace. Xeoticus who was surprised by what Tetsuya was doing suddenly snapped and started checking his body, and after he made sure that there were no problems, he looked at Tetsuya and bowed his head and said, thank you for having mercy. Tetsuya looked at him with a smile on his face and then said, now let's go for level 2. Making Xeoticus could completely shock then look up at Tetsuya. But before he was able to two swords were stabbed in his stomach, and the amount of holy magic that Tetsuya was releasing also got doubled, making it even more painful for the devil, making his screams even louder. Suddenly the door was pushed open making Tetsuya turn his head and look at the person who came here. In front of him were the two mass who came there and had a pained expression on their faces, because of the holy energy present in the room. Tetsuya stopped releasing his holy magic and said, Good timing Serzichus, I was about to come and talk to you about something. And glared at him. Serzichus looked at his father who was twitching in pain and thought, What have you done to piss him off father? Tetsuya who heard his thoughts smiled and said, Oh, he just started to talk about handing over the territory back to the Gremory, but quickly got angry on being refused, and was about to unleash an attack, which could have harmed most of the people in the room you were before. Tetsuya the walked towards Serzichus and placed his hand on Serzichus' shoulder and said, Now just asking but, did you actually know about something like this to happen? While he looked at him with a friendly smile. Serzichus gulped his saliva and immediately shook his head, stating that he didn't know anything about this matter. Tetsuya nodded and said, you should make sure that your father only open his mouth where it is necessary, otherwise who knows when a bad person will attack him, because of him slipping his tongue. Serzichus simply nodded his head and then bowed and said, I deeply apologize for whatever my father has done. Please spare him for my sake. Xeoticus who was now not in as much pain as he was before because of Tetsuya, stopped releasing his holy magic, looked at his son and coughed some blood and said, don't believe him, he was the one who attacked me first. He is making things up. Tetsuya only glared at Xeoticus and said, if I were to seriously attack you first, then there won't even be a hair of your pathetic self left. You didn't even cared about the safety of your own children, and now is shamefully blaming me. Xeoticus was about to say something more, but Serzichus raised his hand making him stop and said, father let's stop this here and not cause trouble. This is not our territory. Though his words were polite as tone was not, it was a commanding tone instead of the usual gentle tone that Serzichus used. Seraphol looked at Tetsuya and said, Tetsuya-chan I apologize as well for any misconduct on the part of us devils, but please spare his life, otherwise there will be a lot of problems that the devil council will raise. After all not only he is a pure blood, but also is the head of a house of the 72 pillars. Tetsuya looked at Seraphol and seeing the panicked expression that she had, he sighed and snapped his fingers, making the swords disappear from his stomach. Tetsuya looked at Serzichus and said, take him away, one more time something like this happens, and he will be a goner, I don't care if you will have some elders from the council missing, but he will die if he tries something against me. Serzichus gave a deep bow and immediately rushed towards his father, and crouched down to lift him up, but Xeoticus lifted his hand to stop his son. Xeoticus slowly lifted his body and looked at Tetsuya and said, boy you will pay for all this humiliation. I will know the whole Grimory territory will hunt you down. Tetsuya snorted and said, like I said, I don't care about you insects. Come at me all you want. Xeoticus glared at Tetsuya and said, I will destroy you and your family, and though before he was able to finish Tetsuya immediately rushed towards Xeoticus and punched his stomach, making Xeoticus cough a large amount of blood, and fall down on the floor. Tetsuya lifted his head to his height and said, you wanna have a taste of the game we were playing now again, bastard? Seeing what was happening Serzichus prepared himself to go in his super form and said, Tetsuya, I beg you please let him go. Tetsuya looked at Serzichus, and then threw the devil in his hands and said, leave. Serzichus didn't say anything and immediately teleported away with his father. After all the commotion was over and the others have left the Shiba residence, Tetsuya told the event that took place between Xeoticus and him to his team plus Shuri and Akeno, making all of them especially Akeno surprised by his act. Of course Tetsuya's team already knew about Xeoticus's personality from Grafia and Venelana, but they didn't expect him to act like that in their territory. Tetsuya then decided to go back to his bed and forget about that matter, and to help him the girls decided to do something for him in his room. Though Akeno was not able to enter the room even though she tried to enter sneakily. The next morning Tetsuya woke up completely naked and totally refreshed. He looked at his sides and saw his girls sleeping peacefully with a smile on their faces while they were naked as well. Tetsuya smiled at them and used his magic to clean all of their bodies from all the sweat and other fluids that their bodies were covered with, as all of them were reeking with the smell of the activity they did at night. Tetsuya then got up and came downstairs and saw Akeno and Shuri preparing breakfast. Tetsuya went to the kitchen which alerted to mother and daughter of his presence, and both of them turned around and smiled at him. Tetsuya just nodded with his usual neutral expression, and took a glass and filled it water and gulped it down. 
He looked at Akeno and asked, can you brew me a cup of coffee? Akeno smiled brightly and nodded her head and said, sure one coffee coming right up. Tetsuya nodded with a smile on his face and sat back on a chair while testing his head on the table. Shuri looked at him and said, you seem a bit troubled. Tetsuya looked at her for a while and said, just thinking about the future. Hearing that Shuri covered her mouth with her hand and said, Pufufufu, so you are thinking about the future with me. Sorry but I already have a husband, how about Akeno, here. I think both of you would be a great match for each other. Hearing that Akeno started blushing and peeked at Tetsuya to see his reaction. Tetsuya who heard what Shuri just said didn't show any change in his expression and said, not that, I am thinking about the thing that happened with Zeoticus yesterday. Hearing that both mother and daughter got a bit sad and seeing that Shuri said, so you were talking about your talk with that devil, huh? But anyway what do you think about Akeno? Tetsuya looked at her for a while, but soon shifted his gaze at Akeno and said, she is beautiful, great and reliable, though a huge pervert. Hearing what he said Akeno blushed but the last part made her brows twitch a bit, but she could not deny that. Shuri chuckled and said, so why don't you marry her in future, I think that you both will be a great couple. Besides, if you marry her maybe I can get a bit relief from my work. Tetsuya smiled at her and said, sure, just give me a resignation letter, and you will get complete freedom from your work. Shuri immediately stiffened up and then a twitching smile appeared on her face and she said, boss do you know how much I like to work in the office that you have given me? Tetsuya smiled and said, oh really then I guess you won't have a problem handling the documents that have been piling up during your vacation. Ugh, boss you are too cruel. Tetsuya looked at her and sighed and said, fine, I will tell Yasaka to recommend someone for the company and help you with your work. Hearing that Shuri's face immediately brightened up and she said, Tetsuya-chan, if you want you can take Akeno to the bed, right now. I won't tell the others about it. Tetsuya stared at her for a while and said, you are literally selling your daughter. Shuri chuckled and said, look at her expression and then speak. Tetsuya then turned his head and saw Akeno having a blush on her face, while keeping her hand on her cheek and imagining the deed that she will do with Tetsuya. Tetsuya stared at her for a while and then sighed and said, both of you are really weird. Tetsuya then looked at Akeno and said, Akeno, Akeno, Akeno. Akeno suddenly snapped out of her imagination and cleaned the drool that had been coming out of her mouth and looked at Tetsuya with a smile and said, what happened? Shall we go inside a room? Tetsuya shook his head and said, let's take things slowly and is there something that you have to do today? Akeno nodded and then started thinking and then said, I think that Riaz is going to release the sea of her bishop today. Why? Do you need me for something? Tetsuya thought for a while and then said, I want you to start training harder now, because how the things went yesterday, I don't think that Zeotifix will stand by idly, he will try to harm Thode near me, you should be well prepared, because aside from his Riaz and Serzages he doesn't care about anybody, he may try to harm you, seeing that you and Shuri are close to me. I can protect Shuri as she doesn't have to follow orders from Gremory, but you on the other hand may be called and could be in trouble. So make sure to inform anyone from my team when you have to do something for him. Hearing what Tetsuya said, both Shuri and Akeno got serious and nodded at him. Tetsuya nodded as well and threw a bracelet towards Akeno and Shuri which they caught and looked at it for a while, before turning towards Tetsuya with a confused expression. Tetsuya looked at both of them and said, they will protect you in times of danger, and you can contact anyone from my team, if the need arises for it through that bracelet. It can also form a barrier capable of taking three hits from ultimate class devils. Both of them then looked at the bracelets with surprise visible on their faces, and were a little hesitant to take such an item from Tetsuya. Tetsuya who noticed their hesitation smiled and said, just take it for my sake, if you have those it will make me feel at ease a bit thinking that you are safe. Both of them looked at Tetsuya for a while and sighed. Akeno looked at Shuri and said, that's why he has so many girls, what's not to like about him? Shuri chuckled and said, well, then the only thing that you have to do is to make sure to make him fall for you. Akeno nodded and took the cup of coffee and placed it in front of Tetsuya and gave a peck on his cheek. Tetsuya looked at her to which she just showed a mischievous smile on her face and said, Pufufufu, be prepared too for my attacks from time to time now. Tetsuya looked at her for a while and then sighed and said, whatever, oh and make sure to tell the others except Ria's about this as well, and make sure to warn them to not disclose this information. Akeno looked at him with a confused expression and asked, why not tell Ria's about this? Tetsuya shrugged his shoulders and said, no matter what we say at the end of the day he is her father whom she has been with for the longest time. Even if she were to believe us she might want to clear her doubt with her father, and our plans might get exposed if she says too much, cause honestly no matter how you see, Zeoticus has much more experience than Rias, and he can easily extract information from her. Akeno thought for a while and then nodded her head thinking what Tetsuya said is possible. Shuri then looked at the two and asked, then what you are planning to do if he takes some action? Tetsuya who heard the question grinned maniacally and said, if something like that happens then there will be a massacre in the underworld they have forgotten what fear is after the wars were over, and at that time they will know whom should they not mess with. After everyone was up Tetsuya explained the same thing that he told Akeno and Shuri to all of them, making everyone a bit more serious about the situation. Akeno then got dressed up in school uniform and left for the release of the bishop, along with Tetsuya, while the rest of them decided to hang out with Shuri and show her around the town. 
Tetsuya and Akeno were walking side by side with Akeno locking her arm with Tetsuya's, which made the people around them focus on the couple. Tetsuya looked at Akeno and said, do you really have to do this, it's quite hot already. Akeno chuckled and said, ara ara, don't you like the feeling on your hand? And push his hand deeper in her breasts. Tetsuya sighed and moved his face closer to Akeno's and blow in her ear, making her release her hand with a eep coming out of her mouth. Tetsuya smiled and said, much better. And started walking. Seeing that Akeno sighed and quietly walked beside him with a disappointed face. Tetsuya saw her face and sighed and grabbed his hand and said, well I guess holding hands will not be too uncomfortable. And looked at Akeno. Akeno looked at her hand which was being held by Tetsuya's, and smiled and said, well I will allow you to get away with this, but only this time. And held his hand tighter. Tetsuya looked at her and nodded his head, and both of them continued walking towards the school. After Tetsuya and Akeno reached the school both of them met with the rest of the members of the orc. Seeing both of them coming in together while holding their hands the rest of the members looked at the two for a while, and then sighed. Asami jumped on Tetsuya immediately hugged him and said, my mom was full of praises for you after we came back from your house. Hearing that Tetsuya smiled and gave a peck on her lips and said, well, what else would you expect from me? Tetsuya then looked at Kaneko and patted her head and said, so how was the open house for you? Kaneko blushed a bit and then cited the question and whispered in his ear, when Isama annoyed me a lot. She kept on shouting and praising me for every little thing in the class. Tetsuya just chuckled making Kaneko pout. Tetsuya looked at Kaneko and immediately hugged her, leaving both Akeno and Asami aside and said, ah, how can you be so cute? And started rubbing his cheek with Kaneko's making her blush deeply. Seeing him the rest of the people standing there only smiled wryly and let Tetsuya interact with Kaneko. Riz then looked at the door covered with many keep out signs and said, anyway are you all ready to meet our team's bishop? Hearing that all of them became a bit serious, even Tetsuya stopped hugging Kaneko after seeing that Kaneko was serious. Asami looked at the door and said, so you mean to say that there is a bishop behind the door? Riz nodded her head and said, yeah, the door you see have many seals placed on them, but the seals are only active till midnight, after that the occupant is allowed to roam freely around the campus, but that person refused to accept this rule. Asami looked at the door with a confused expression and said, so is the person perhaps a shut-in? Akeno who heard what Asami said smiled and said, though this person is perhaps our best contract earner. Making Asami complete shocked. Kiba nodded and said, yeah, the person makes contract using a computer. Zenovia then narrowed her eyes and said, but to have their powers sealed I wonder what kind of person stays behind that door? Tetsuya then said, that person is the perfect partner that you could ask for when you have the late night grinding or participate in an event in a game. His skills are top notch. After he said that all the people looked at him with a confused expression and Tetsuya said, this is the only devil that I sign contracts with, so definitely I know about this. Riaz nodded and then started breaking the seals on the door, and a magic formation appeared oh it, and the seals started crumbling apart. Riaz then held the handle of the door and pushed it open making light enter inside the completely dark room. And just as she did that the person living inside made a noise. Iyaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Both Tetsuya and Gaspar smiled and said, Whenever I get bored and wants to skip classes, I come to the orc. Gaspar then said, And once Tetsuya Senpai entered my room and slowly and slowly we started playing games together and became good friends. Tetsuya nodded and said, Yeah, he is just like my little brother. Gaspar still smiled and said, Yeah, and the snacks that Senpai makes are really delicious, they are even better than the ones I used to eat. Hearing that Ria's ears twitched and she said, Surely you just Gaspar those snacks that I order for you are all imported and are of really high quality. Gaspar looked at her with a confused expression and said, I don't know about that, but when compared to Senpai's food, they will only taste ordinary. Hearing that Ria's lips twitched and she was about to say something, but before she was able to say something Kiba nodded and said, I know right, the food he prepares is simply out of this world. Kaneko nodded as well and said, yes, the sweets that Senpai makes are the best, but his head pats are even better. And a slight blush appeared on her face. Akeno placed a hand on her cheek and said, his food makes me feel so hot that I cannot explain. Asami then walked towards Tetsuya and Gaspar and said, I don't care whether you are a male or female, if you are able to tell how good Tetsuya's food is, then you are a good person. And placed her hand on Gaspar's shoulder, making him whiten his eyes in surprise, and unconsciously his sacred gear gets activated, and all the others in the room except for Tetsuya and Gaspar, were left frozen. Gaspar covered his eyes with his hands and said, Please don't hit me I am sorry, seeing that Gaspar got scared Tetsuya sighed and hugged him, and started patting his back and said, There there calm down Gaspar. No one is going to hurt you here. And even if someone was to try I am still here to protect you. Gaspar then removed his hands from his eyes and looked at Tetsuya and said, Senpai. And started crying in his embrace. Tetsuya sighed and continued to console the little vampire till he calmed down, and the time started moving again. Asami got surprised by the sudden change in Tetsuya's and Gaspar's position and said, What just happened? Hearing that Kiba had a wry smile on his face while Akeno just sighed and said, It's his sacred gear, the forbidden Baylor view. Akeno the waited for Ria's to start the explanation, but after waiting for a while and hearing no word from her, she turned her head and saw Ria's staring at all of them. Akeno tilted her head and asked, What happened Ria's? Ria's then looked at all of them and said, Have you all tasted Tetsuya's food at least once? Hearing this question all of them were surprised, but nonetheless her peerage nodded their head, and Asami said, We all usually have our lunches together, along with President Sona and Vice President Tsubaki. Hearing that Ria's got even more surprised and then asked, You all have lunch together and you don't even call me? Hearing her question the rest don't even take a single second and said, No. Making Ria's fall down on her knees. Ria's then looked at her peerage and asked, Why didn't you invite me as well? Akeno then said, Because there is someone who said that the school's cafeteria does not have a lot of variety. Kaneko then said, You said that the sweets here are not up to your taste. Kiba smiled and said, You previously told us that you want to have your lunch in silence alone, as you get tired by the praises of other students and don't want to be in spotlight. Asami then said, Why would I invite more people and get my own share decreased because of more people? Hearing their answers Ria's got even more and more depressed, and she looked at Tetsuya. Tetsuya looked at her with a smile on his face and said, I don't want any rumors to follow me by inviting you personally. And after that Ria's got totally depressed and stood up and started walking out of the room like a zombie. Gaspar looked at Ria's and then asked, What happened to Ria's senpai? Tetsuya smiled and said, She took a lot of mental damage. Gaspar looked at Tetsuya with a confused expression to which Tetsuya just smiled. Tetsuya then looked at Gaspar and said, Hey why don't you introduce yourself to Asami? Gaspar looked at Asami and freaked out a bit and said, And then nice to meet you. MMM my name is Gaspar Vladi, a half vampire. I want to go back in my coffin. And tears started to form in his eyes. Kaneko looked at him and said, go and sleep in there for eternity. And thought, even though he is in senpai's hands he still wants to go back to his coffin. I will punish him for disrespecting senpai. Akeno showed a wry smile and said, about that you see we have got the permission to take you out of this room, so why don't you come out with us? Gaspar immediately shook his head and said, no no no, I don't want to go outside, outside is scary. I want to go back in my coffin. Seeing Gaspar was becoming rather impatient, Tetsuya softly patted his head, making him calm down a bit and Kaneko glaring at Gaspar. Tetsuya then looked at Gaspar and said, Hey why don't you try to live in the outside world for a while? It will be fun. Gaspar looked at Tetsuya and said, But senpai it is scary outside, I don't want to go out. Tetsuya just smiled and said, If you keep on getting scared of going out of this room, then you will not be able to enjoy your life properly, why don't you try it for a while, who knows that you may come to like living outside and overcome your fear, and when that happens, let's go to a video game conventions and tournaments together. It will be a lot of fun. And like I said before I will be there to protect you after all, I cannot let the only devil whom I make contracts with suffer, right? Gaspar looked at Tetsuya for a while, and then slowly nodded his head. Tetsuya smiled at that and said, Good, let's make you overcome your fear and make a man out of you, after all you won't like to be called a girl, would you? Gaspar hearing those words immediately nodded his head and said, I will overcome my fears and be a man. Tetsuya nodded and said, Good, now let's go. Tetsuya then put Gaspar down to allow him to take a step outside on his own. Gaspar then looked towards the door with wary XP in his face and was hesitating to take a step out. 
looked at Saev and the others stood behind him and let him take his time to walk a step further. Gaspar then gulped his saliva and looked at the door with a serious expression and said, I am a man, I am not scared. I am a man, I am not scared. And kept repeating it for a while. Finally building up his courage he slowly lifted his leg and took a step out of the door, making the others who have been intently looking at the vampire for all this time smile at his progress. Gaspar too was beaming with smile for taking a step out of the room, and was about to turn around and look at the others and see their expressions, but before he was able to a zombie Riaz came out from the corner and said, why are you all taking so much time? With a cold voice. Seeing his king in that condition Gaspar freaked out and immediately rushed inside the room and hid inside his coffin and kept muttering, outside is scary. Riaz senpai is scary. She will attack me. I am scared. The rest of the people looked at Riaz with a dumbfounded expression, making Riaz snap out of her zombie mode and look at the others with a confused expression. All of them sighed into Tsaya said, take the zombie away, I will try to bring him out. You guys wait in the main room. All of them nodded and started walk out of the room, while Akano and Kaneko dragged Riaz away from TH room. After that Tetsuya was somehow able to convince Gaspar once again to come out and lead him to the main hall. Tetsuya took a seat besides Kaneko, while Gaspar was standing in the center. Suddenly he felt that his phone started ringing, and he took it out and noticed that it was Himari who was calling him. Tetsuya excised himself and got out of the room and picked it up. Yeah, Himari? Tetsuya can you come at my location immediately? What happened? Your predictions were correct. You wait there I will be there in an instant. Tetsuya then ended his call and informed the others that he had some work to take care of. He then looked at Akeno and sent a telepathic message to her making her slightly surprised, but soon she turned serious and nodded her head. Tetsuya then formed a magic circle and teleported away to Himari's and others' location. Tetsuya suddenly appeared in an abandoned alley, and he looked around the alley, only to find some marks which showed that a fight took place here. Tetsuya then looked at the girls and asked, what happened here? Kagura came forward and said, just like you told us this morning, there were some devils who followed us on the way here, and once they found a chance tried to ambush us. Though we beat the hell out of them, but the important part here is that there were some fallen angels involved as well. Hearing that Atitsaya looked at the corpses lying here and there on the ground. He looked at the girls and said, you could have Atli had spared their heads, so that we can recognize them. Hearing him all the girls snorted and Shizuka said, they were even trying to play with us, they should be grateful that at least they Atitsaya cut her speech and said, you should have cut their manhood first, and then you should have killed them slowly. With a smile on his face. Seeing his smile all the girls gulped their saliva and thought at the same time, these devils were lucky that they did not face him. But their thoughts were interrupted by Shuri who walked towards Tetsuya and said, you have a great mincet, you will go very far in life. All of them looked at Shuri and weren't sure what to say. Tetsuya sighed and said, anyway, you have us let one of these insects run away right? All of them nodded their head, and Miyuki said, yeah, we were not able to stop him, and he escaped somehow. Tetsuya nodded and said, good, I want the boss of these insects or at least some higher ranking insects come out of their holes. They have lived far too long. A maniac-like grin appeared on his face and he said, things are taking an interesting turn now, I will make sure to make full use of it. He then looked at the girls and asked, what was the level of power that you all showed to the enemy? Ingold said. Some of us showed our powers to be of mid-middle class to the peak high class level. Tetsuya nodded and said, good job there, now escort Shuri back home, and make sure to cover all evidences of fight, I don't want the other areas like the one here, an expert can easily tell from the marks left behind, that the winning side was holding back a lot. The girls nodded and then started walking back. Tetsuya used his magic to clear the area, and then stored the dead bodies. He then decided to talk to Azazel about this matter, and then tracked his energy signature, which made him greatly surprised as he was currently in the Kuo Academy. Tetsuya then teleported there and started walking towards the location where everyone was gathered. As he got close to their location he heard Azazel's voice, you do know that even if all of you were to attack together, it will still not make an effect right? Hearing that Tetsuya smirked and said, so how about we try that now, with me included of course. Hearing his voice all of them turned their heads and saw him walking towards then with his hands in his pockets. Noticing him Azazel's lips twitched and he said, now now let's not do that, you don't want to bully this friendly neighborhood full in right? Tetsuya smiled and said, haha surely you just Azazel, why would I want to bully you? Hearing that Azazel smiled and said, yeah I thought before he was able to finish Tetsuya said, I will just rip pf your wings, and will make fried fallen wings for you, extra spicy of that? Hearing that Azazel took a step back and said, even though I am a fan of your food, I don't like the idea of being a part of the ingredients. Tetsuya's face became neutral and he said, you all can keep your guard down, he will not harm you. Hearing him the remaining orc members along with Saji, lowered their guard, but were still keeping a close eye on Azazel. Tetsuya then asked, so why are you here? Azazel calmed down as well and said, I heard about a holy demonic sword user here, and you know my curiosity? Tetsuya nodded and said, unfortunately, he is not here at the moment. Azazel sighed and said, well it cannot be helped. He then turned his gaze which fell upon a tree behind which Gaspar was hiding. Yo, vampire? Making Gaspar shriek out. Forbidden Baylor view, a sacred gear which can be very dangerous if the user is not able to control it. 
He then looked at Saji and said, and the dark draconic pulse, absorption line is it? You can train that half vampire there by sucking out the excess power from it. This made the rest of the people surprised, and Azazel said, seriously, you didn't know that, boy don't underestimate that sacred gear, that gear has the power of the evil black dragon, Vritra, the prison dragon of the five dragon kings. Azazel then put his hand on his goatee and said, ah, there is a much faster way to do that, by drinking the red dragon's blood. After all vampires are made to drink blood. Well all that is left for you all to do is to try every method I just told. And Azazel started walking away. Seeing that Tetsaya narrowed his eyes and said, Azazel there is something that I want to ask you? Azazel slightly turned his head and stopped. Tetsaya then said, are there any fallen angels here in the town that you called for? Hearing his question Azazel made a confused expression. Seeing that Tetsaya closed his eyes and sighed and said, forget it. See you later then. Azazel looked at Tetsaya for a while, and then shrugged his shoulders and said, see you then. And walked away. Later that night every one of them were in the gymnasium in their PE uniform, while Gaspar was in girl's uniform, and had the absorption line attached to his head. Tetsaya looked at Saji and said, suck out more out of him. Saji nodded and said, yes, and Nikki and started absorbing more power from Gaspar, making him moan. Tetsaya looked at Gaspar and said, stop moaning like a girl, this instant. Gaspar looked at Tetsaya and shyly nodded his head. He then turned his head and saw Kaneko rubbing something on the dodgeballs and asked, what are you doing Kaneko? Kaneko looked at Tetsaya and said in her monotone voice, coating these balls with garlic paste. Making Gaspar shriek out and try to run away only to be brought back by Zenovia. Asami throw it without mercy. He have to man up a bit. Asami nodded and said, don't hate me Gaspar, this is for your own good. And threw the garlic covered dodgeball towards Gaspar. Gaspar who saw the ball coming towards him freaked out a bit, and his sacred gear activated, and the time stopped for all of them, except for Tetsaya and Asper tried to run away. Suddenly the time started running normally, and Gaspar was brought back by Zenovia. Asami looked at Gaspar and said, you have to stop the ball, not us. Kaneko looked at Gaspar and said, if you cannot stop the ball then get hit by it in the face. Yuaya Kaneko-chan is bullying me. Asami looked at Tetsaya and said, why don't we try the other method, that drinking my blood method. Hearing that Gaspar started freaking out and said, no, I don't like blood. Asami looked at Gaspar and said, but aren't you a vampire? Gaspar shook his head and said, no no no, I don't like anything raw. Seeing him whining Kaneko looked at Gaspar and said, good for nothing vampire. And Gaspar started crying once again. Seeing him Tetsaya sighed and walked towards him and crouched down to his level and said, Gaspar look at me. Gaspar slowly lifted his head and saw Tetsaya looking at him. Tetsaya looked in Gaspar's eyes and said, do you want to be like this forever, whining like this? Didn't you say that you will become a man? Gaspar sniffed and said, but senpai, I don't like blood, I don't like outside, I am scared. Tetsaya placed his hands on Gaspar's shoulders and said, and when are you planning to overcome these fears, a man is not like this, a man never gives up, and even if he is scared of something he never shows it to others and face it head on. Don't you want to be like that? Gaspar looked at Tetsaya for a while, and then nodded his head and said, yes, I want to be a man. Are you really sure? I am sure. It will be very though. I am ready for it. Are you ready to become strong? Yeah I am ready for it. Tetsaya nodded and said, good, if you do not give up then I promise that I am not going to give up in making you a real man. Gaspar nodded his head and said, yes, I will become strong. Tetsaya nodded and said, do you know what the greatest hero said, when his disciple was resolute just like you? Hearing the question Gaspar shook his head. Tetsaya then pierced his finger with a fine needle, and some drops of blood trickled down from his finger, and then Tetsaya used his magic to turn them into pills. He then took the pill and showed it to Gaspar, and suddenly Tetsaya's face complete changed such that his eyes were not visible, and his face became a bit angular, just like All Might, eat it. Gaspar immediately freaked out on the sight of blood and ran away while screaming like a girl. After Tetsaya was somehow able to keep Gaspar stay outside even after he was freaked out by blood coming out of Tetsaya's finger. Tetsaya then promised him to not force him to drink blood, and continued the training without it. On the end Gaspar was able to stop 5 balls out of 50, without his power being drained out by the absorption line. He even stood out of his box for one whole something which was quite commendable for the shut-in vampire. The next day in the school Tetsaya was roaming around aimlessly, along with the second years in his group plus Zenovia and Asami. On the way they encountered Rias and Akeno who approached them and Akeno said, right on time, is my chan, Tetsaya-kun there is a place that we want you two to visit after school. Tetsaya and Asami looked at each other, and then looked back at Akeno, and Tetsaya said, text me the address and time, and I will be there. Akeno nodded and said, fine, see you all later. And then walked away along with her king. Later that day Tetsaya who have already changed back to his casual clothes, was walking on the streets of Kuo, and was going towards the shrine where Akeno called him. On his way he felt powerful holy signatures in the town, and feeling them a smile appeared on his face. He then quickened his pace. Soon he reached the bottom of the hill where the shrine was, and met Asami there who was still wearing her uniform. Asami looked at Tetsaya and said, do you have any idea why are we called here? Tetsaya looked at her and with a smile on his face said, in fact I do. Hearing that Asami's eyes widened and she asked, then why have we been called? 
Tetsuya just smiled and started climbing the stairs and said, where will be the fun if I tell you the reason? Hearing that Asami pouted and said, fine don't tell me. And ran after him and jumped on his back. Tetsuya who was somehow able to maintain his balance after Asami jumped on him, turned his head and said, that was dangerous, you know? Asami looked at him with a deadpan expression and said, you don't have the rights to call that kind of thing dangerous. Hearing that Tetsuya's brows twitched but he calmed down and said, whatever, hurry up we have to go to the shrine. Asami nodded and said, yeah, let's go. But still didn't dot off from his back. Tetsuya looked at her to which he only hugged him tighter and said, what happened let's go. Tetsuya sighed and said, fine fine just don't hug me so tight, it's already very hot. Asami smirked and said, are you sure that you are not feeling embarrassed because of the feeling of my breasts on your back? Tetsuya snorted and said, says the one whose hands are continuously moving all over my body. Hearing that Asami smirked and said, well how can I pass an opportunity like this? And started moving her hand towards Tetsuya's crotch. Seeing how things were going Tetsuya smirked and moved his hands to grab her butt and gave it a light squeeze, which earned an eep from the brown-haired girl on his back. Tetsuya didn't turn around and said, what happened? With a playful tone. Hearing what he said Asami glared at him and locked her legs around his waist and tried to squeeze his waist in between her legs. Tetsuya who didn't only felt the pleasure from her soft thighs, had a smile on his face and said, your thighs have a nice feel to them. Thanks for the treat. Hearing that Asami blushed and hit her face behind his back and muttered and said, pervert. Tetsuya just closed his eyes and said, you are the last person that I want to call me a pervert. Asami raised her head and looked at Tetsuya and slowly moved closer to his face. She then grabbed his face with both her hands and slowly turned it around. Tetsuya who was now facing Asami was a bit confused by her action looked at Asami who started to close the distance between them and pressed her lips against Tetsuya's. Tetsuya who received a sudden kiss from Asami was surprised by her actions but soon started to kiss her back. Asami who took the lead in the beginning decided to maintain it and tried to push her tongue into Tetsuya's mouth but was immediately counter-attacked by Tetsuya's tongue which coiled around hers and soon dominated it. Both of them continued to make out for several minutes without even caring for the little peeper whom both of them has already sensed. Asami who got out of breath soon separated her mouth from Tetsuya's, with a thin string of saliva still connecting them. But before she was able to move back Tetsuya used his psychic powers and again pulled her in a kiss. Asami who was surprised by his sudden action, whitened her eyes in surprise, but soon started melting in the kiss once again, and continued to make out with him. Soon both of them separated once again, and Asami who had flushed face, immediately turned Tetsuya's face away, and hid her face behind his back and muttered, you really are a pervert. Tetsuya just chuckled and said, well, thank you for the reward. And again started walking towards the shrine. On the way Tetsuya looked towards a tree and said, you know, it is not good to peep on someone when they are doing something intimate. Just as he said that Ikeno, who was wearing a shrine priestess clothes, came out with a blushing face and said, ara ara, looks like I was caught, by the way Asami-chan you were very aggressive just a while ago. Seeing you two made me very hot. Hearing that Asami started blushing once again and hit her face behind Tetsuya's and said, just kill me now. Tetsuya who smiled and turned his face and said, now now, don't pop like that, we still have to take steps and make you reach adulthood. Don't tell me that you don't want to do that. Hearing that Asami immediately jolted up and said, there is no way I do t want that, I am ready to do it anytime with you just tell me when and where. With a huge smile on her face. Tetsuya looked at her with a deadpan expression and said, weren't you embarrassed and wanted to die just now because of the kiss. Hearing that Asami immediately blushed once again and hit his head with her fist and said, idiot don't say such embarrassing things, so easily. Both Tetsuya and Akeno looked at her for a while, and then Akeno said, forget it Tetsuya her priorities and sense of shame are completely different. Tetsuya nodded and said, yeah, let's get going already. And again started walking towards the shrine with Akeno beside him, while Asami was hiding behind his back with a blush on her face. After Tetsuya and the others climbed a few more steps all of them reached in front of the shrine gate, Asami jumped off from Tetsuya's back and looked towards the gate and asked, so what now? Aren't shrines dangerous places for devils? Tetsuya looked at Asami and said, don't worry I can see there are some enchantments here which will make sure that devils are not harmed. So we can pass through without any problems. Asami nodded, and then all of them stepped through the gate, and just as they did all of them heard a voice and stooped on their spots. So this must be the current red dragon empress. And a very bright light appeared in front of them. Soon the light started dying down, and two figures appeared from the light. Asami stared at the two figures and said, golden wings? I'm front of them were two people one male and the other female both with blonde hair. The male looked at Asami and said, she is the red dragon empress in the oath, saying that he turned his head and saw Tetsuya, and immediately he stopped speaking, and his mouth remained open. Seeing him like that all the females turned their heads and looked at Tetsuya, and immediately the blonde haired woman's eyes widened. Tetsuya looked at her and with a smile at his face said, to Gabriel, long time no see. Gabriel smiled brightly and was about to reply to him, but the blonde man interrupted everyone and said, Satama sensei long time no see do you remember me? I am your big fan, we met in Vatican and immediately appeared in front of Tetsuya and started shaking his hand. Tetsuya looked at Michael with a wry smile and said, of course I remember you Michael, how have you been? 
Michael looked very happy when Tetsuya said that he remembers him and was about to reply to him, but suddenly a fist landed on his face, and Michael was thrown away. All of them looked at the blonde male who was thrown away, and then turned their head to see who the fist belonged to, and saw Gabriel standing there with a beautiful smile on her face. She immediately jumped on Tetsuya and hugged him and said, Tetsuya, I really missed you a lot. Tetsuya hugged her back and said, calm down, I am not going to run away. But Gabriel keep hugging him for a while, and then looked up to him with a pout on her face. Seeing the pout Tetsuya immediately blushed at her cuteness but controlled himself and said, what happened? Why are you so angry? Gabriel said, HMPH, you didn't come to meet me at all for all this time. Tetsuya just smiled helplessly and patted her head and said, sorry sorry, but I was very busy with school and all you know? Gabriel continued to pout and hugged him tighter and said, I am not hearing any excuses. Tetsuya who felt her soft breasts on his chest, was trying very hard to prevent his brother from taking any action. Normally he could have easily controlled his urges, but the act he did with all his girls last night, still had some effect on him, and his body was reacting to the stimulation. Tetsuya looked at Gabriel and said, then what should I do for you, so that you will forgive me? Gabriel who heard him looked up with a smile on her face and said, then let's go and show me around the town just like how we did back then. Tetsuya nodded and said with a smile on his face, fine let's go together, once the work here is done. Gabriel smiled brightly and snuggled to him once again. This action made Tetsuya holding back his brother more difficult. Suddenly his savior came and pulled Gabriel back much to Tetsuya's relief. Tetsuya looked towards his savior and saw Michael reprimanding Gabriel for her actions. Tetsuya walked forward and hugged Michael much to everyone's surprise and said, in future whenever I will publish a new volume, one will send it to you before everyone else. Hearing that Michael's eyes widened and he hugged Tetsuya back and said, thanks a lot sensei this is the greatest gift that I can ask for. Tetsuya then separated himself from Michael and turned serious and asked, so what is the reason for you to come to this town along with Gabriel no less? Hearing that all of them turned serious as well and Michael asked, we have something to discuss with the Red Dragon Empress here, bye before that sends Tetsuya, what are you doing here? Tetsuya just realized that both the angels do not know of his identity and said, well you see this town is my territory, so my presence was required in the meeting between you all. Hearing that both Michael's and Gabriel's eyes widen and they said, you belong to the supernatural society, know before that did you know about us being Seraphs when we met in Vatican. Tetsuya just smiled at him making Michael sigh and said, to not be able to look through you at all, you must be something. But since you are the leader of Kuo then that means that the one who defeated that cadre was you. Tetsuya nodded and said, yup, and sorry for doing that to your former brother. Michael and Gabriel shook their heads and said, don't worry about that it was necessary action in that situation. Asami then looked at the trio and asked, Tetsuya do you know these guys? Hearing her question Michael looked at Asami with an apologetic expression and said, ah, where are my manners, my name is Michael, a seraph and the current leader of heaven, and this here is my sister. Gabriel came forward and said, hello, my name is Gabriel, a seraph. Asami nodded and said, Asami Hayuidu, a devil in the current red dragon empress. So are you also one of those that love Tetsuya? Hearing that both Michael and Tetsuya immediately looked at Asami, while Akeno just chuckled. Gabriel showed a bright smile on her face and said, yes, I love Tetsuya a lot. Which made both Michael and Tetsuya shocked and looked at her. Gabriel then continued and said, I love Asia as well, all three of us were friends you know. And then both Michael and Tetsuya gave a sigh, though both of them were disappointed a bit. Michael for her sister to realize her feelings while Tetsuya for Michael's sister for not realizing his feelings. Both of them then thought at the same time, when will she realize? Both of them looked at each other and showed a helpless smile. Tetsuya then said, let's first get inside and then discuss further. Michael nodded and said, let's do that. Tetsuya and the others went inside the shrine and sat down with Asami and Michael sitting in front of each other, while the other three were sitting a bit away from them with Tetsuya sitting in between Akeno and Gabriel. Asami who saw the serious expression on Michael's face, was a bit tensed and seeing that Tetsuya said, you don't have to be so tensed Asami, Michael is a good guy. Hearing that Asami looked at Tetsuya and after seeing the smile on his face, she released a tired sigh. Michael then gave a fake cough to gain Asami's attention and said, Asami Hayuidu, the current Red Dragon Empress we from the Heaven Faction, wish for you to accept this small gift from us, and hope to form a good relation relation between us, and we can be allies, even though we are both from different factions and races. And suddenly an European sword with four golden dragon claws as a hilt appeared out of nowhere and hovered in the middle of the room. Michael then said, this here is the holy sword Ascalon, a dragon slayer. We wish for you to wield a tread dragon empress. Seeing the sword and feeling the aura it was emitting Isami gulped her saliva and asked, can I really wield it, it is both holy and dragon slaying in nature, it can be said that this sword is my natural enemy. Just as she said that Drake's gauntlet materialized on her arm and the jewel started glowing, as long as the sacred gear's host has a proper will towards something, then nothing is impossible. Just grab the sword and focus your aura at it. Asami nodded and held the hilt of the sword, and felt small jolts of current pass through her body. She then narrowed her eyes and thought, I can do this, no I have to do this, an opportunity to gain power like this is hard to come by, and I am not going to let it go, I have to get stronger, strong enough to stand by the others in Tetsuya's group. 
Even though I know that they will never abandon me, I still can let the things go as they are, I have to catch up to them. Suddenly the sword started to glow brighter and brighter, and started releasing its draconic aura making Michael, Gabriel and Akeno widen their eyes in surprise, while a small grin appeared on Tetsaya's face. The sword's shape started to change as well, and it started to get longer, while the hilt and handle of the sword started shrinking. The light intensified once again and slowly the light started changing its color to red, and once it did it started to get dimmer till it finally died down. When the light died down, it revealed the gauntlet to be attached to the blade of the sword, but the thing that was different was instead of the sword having a silver and purple blade, it was red and purple, seeing which Tetsaya raised his eyebrows. Suddenly the gem on the gauntlet started glowing brighter and brighter. Ah. But just as the gem did that Asami started screaming in pain. Seeing that Tetsaya immediately stood from his spot and rushed towards her. He tried to grab her shoulder, but felt a bit of resistance in approaching her. Tetsaya immediately started releasing a bit of his aura and glared at Michael, Michael what is the meaning of this, why is she suffering from pain? On feeling the sudden pressure and killing intent all the people in the room except for Asami, started sweating heavily and had problem in breathing. Michael looked towards Tetsaya in horror and said, I don't know what is happening, I swear that we didn't do anything. Tetsaya narrowed his eyes and said, then what explanation do you have for this? Michael was at a loss of words and didn't know what to say, but suddenly Drake said, it is not that angel's fault. Hearing that Tetsaya stopped releasing his killing intent towards the other the people in the room and focused it at the gauntlet and said, spit up whatever you know. Drake who was inside the sacred gear was immediately terrorized by the amount of killing intent that Tetsaya was releasing and said, as she wanted to grow stronger, and her will was focused on that goal, while she was merging the sword with me this is because of that. Tetsaya narrowed his eyes and said, tell me the truth, is her in danger? Hearing the question the Drake said, as long as she doesn't lose her will then she is not in danger, but hearing that Tetsaya immediately dispelled the barrier which was causing a resistance to him before, and just as he did a huge burst of energy escaped from her body and pushed the others a bit. Feeling the energy that just came from the burst of Seraphs and Tetsaya's eyes immediately whitened, and all of them thought, it is the dragon slaying energy. Tetsaya immediately hugged her body and started taking the extra energy to pass through his body to reduce her pain a bit. Feeling the someone hugging her body, Asami opened her eyes a bit while she was still screaming, and saw Tetsaya hugging her, while bullets of sweat were formed on his forehead, and had a pained expression on his face. She immediately whitened her eyes and said, you, what are you doing? Get away, you are hurting yourself. Tetsaya who heard her voice felt a bit relief and looked at her and said, if you have the energy and focus to reprimand me, then focus on what you are doing. I am not leaving you till you are done. Asami looked at Tetsaya with a glare and said, are you an idiot, just go away. Tetsaya who heard that felt a bit irritated, moved his head away a bit and then with all the momentum he could gather, had butted her and said, you are the idiot here who told you, a demonic dragon to try to take in the powers of a dragon slayer, a holy one at that Asami who received the headbutt, felt a lot of pain and said, phew ooh, that hurts you idiot. Oh is that how you treat your lover Tetsaya headbutted her once again and said, no this is how I treat idiots and currently you are being one just get this over with for god's sake, just as he said that both Akeno and Asami felt a headache, and Asami said, you fucker don't say that word in front of a devil. Hearing that Tetsaya said, just get this over with for fuck's sake. And started to channel more energy through his body which started to cause intense pain to Tetsaya. Shit, this is the first time that I am suffering from this amount of pain, seriously, how strong is her resolve? I am glad that I didn't choose to be a dragon or devil at the time of reincarnation. Feeling that he was getting hurt by the energy he was channeling, he activated his healing magic and regeneration to the max, and immediately he started to feel a relaxed, he even tried to send the healing magic to Asami's body, but in the current state her body was rejecting it, and he didn't want to find out what forceful sending it could do. Asami who felt her pain being lessened because of Tetsaya absorbing more amount of energy, looked towards Tetsaya and said, by the way, will you listen to my one request to if this get over without any problems? Tetsaya looked at her and said, I will so just finish this. Hearing that Asami's eyes widened and suddenly huge amount of energy started to come out of her which shocked all of them present in the room including Tetsaya. Asami started to absorb and channel more energy through her body and shouted, hell yeah, we are going to fuck the whole night, baby you are you. She said that and have a battle cry. All of them except Gabriel looked at her with a weird expression on their faces, even Drake was doing the same, and Tetsaya said, that's the source of your motivation. But Asami ignored him and kept on giving a battle cry. The gem on the gauntlet then said, even though it is weird, I am still impressed by her motivation, Asami then said, I don't care what you think if being weird can help me reach my goals then fuck everything I am weird, the gauntlet light started to intensify more, and the Seraphs and Akeno closed their eyes. Dragon Slayer element power is taken. After Drake notified the light started to die down, and the excess aura started to get back inside the sword. Tetsaya then stopped hugging Asami and held her shoulder and started shaking her and said, what the hell were you thinking? Do you even know what could have happened to you, but then he noticed that Asami was starting to lose consciousness and stopped shaking her. Asami then started to pass out, and with a smile on her face said, I did it. And closed her eyes and went to sleep. Tetsaya sighed and placed her head on his lap and started stroking her head. Seriously, she is a huge idiot. He then looked at the gauntlet and said, now Drake tell me what the hell just happened. 
The gauntlet started blinking and Drake said, her will to become strong and stand beside your group in the future was so strong that while she was merging the sacred gear and the sword, she unconsciously triggered something inside her body and started absorbing the dragon slayer element from the sword. Hearing that Titsaya started massaging his temples and said, what am I going to do with her, so what all did she gain? The gem once again blinked and Drake said, she gained the ability to use dragon slayer magic of her element, which in her case is fire. Tetsaya nodded his head, but then Michael interrupted them and said, then does that mean that Ascalon I just a simple holy sword now? Tetsaya looked at Michael and said, sorry for threatening you earlier. And bowed his head. Michael waved his hands and said, you don't need to apologize, I would have done something similar if someone close to me would have happened to go through something similar. Tetsaya nodded with a smile and said, thank you for understanding. Now Drake speak. The gem started glowing and Drake said, no, only some part of the dragon slayer element was absorbed by her, and in return the sword got some of my power, it is much more durable now. Michael nodded and said, thank god, I don't know what the others in the heaven would have done, if they knew that someone messed with Ascalon like that. He then looked at Tetsaya and said, well then my work here is done. I shall go back now. Tetsaya silently placed Asami's head on a pillow, and then stood up and said, bye then, it was nice meeting you after a long time. And moved his hand forward. Michael grabbed Tetsaya's hand and shook it and said, it was a pleasure. He then turned around and said, Gabriel, let's go. Gabriel looked at Tetsaya and said, bye Tetsaya, don't forget the promise, we will go together after the meeting. Tetsaya nodded and said, yeah, we will. Gabriel smiled and then stood beside Michael and teleported away with the magic circle. After both the angels were gone Akeno who saw Asami sleeping, looked at Tetsaya and said, Tetsaya-kun, yo before she was able to finish Tetsaya raised his hand to stop her and said, if it's about you being a half-fallen, then I already know, I have already met you masochist of a father. And yeah, I don't have any problem with you being a fallen. Akeno who heard him blinked her eyes in surprise and asked, how did you know that I wanted to talk about this? Tetsaya shrugged his shoulders and said, sure he told me that you were fussing about this, so just a hunch of mine that you wanted to talk to me about this. Akeno nodded and then hesitatingly said, do you really do not hate me having this mixed blood inside me? Tetsaya shook his head and said, compared to devils I think that fallen angels are more awesome. Sure they can grow stronger at the pace of devils who grow stronger by making contracts, having affinity to light which can seriously damage the devils, while having cool black wings, what else is there do you want? And compared to angels who have many restrictions over them the fallen can do whatever they want. Akeno looked at him for a while and then said, and what about all the innocent people that they kill, even Asami-chan is killed by them. Hearing that Tetsaya narrowed his eyes and said, then if you are talking about that, then tell me which faction doesn't do that? Hearing that question Akeno kept silent as she was not able to find any answer to that. Tetsaya then said, it is common for people to take care of problem when it is not too dangerous, and that is the truth about life, surely you can protect yourself from all that, but if you think that the other party does not do anything like that, then that's nothing but you being naive. Akeno who heard what Tetsaya said remained silent and lowered her head. Tetsaya seeing that Saidan put his hand on her head and said, don't think about it much, it just depends on person to person, about the way they think things through. Mine is mine, yours is yours. Akeno looked up and stared at Tetsaya's face for a while, and then a smile appeared on her face. You know, it is getting very hard to hold myself back from attacking you. Tetsaya just smiled and stopped petting her head making Akeno pout. Tetsaya just chuckled and said, sorry, but I guess my schedule is pretty busy because I already promised someone. Isn't that right Asami? Asami who had woken up a bit earlier freaked out a bit when she heard Tetsaya calling her. She then sat up and started rubbing the back of her head with a wry smile on her face. Seeing that Tetsaya shook his head and said, let's get going, already. We don't have anything to do here left, right? And turned her head towards Akeno. Akeno just smiled mischievously and said, just one last thing left, and immediately moved closer to him and placed her lips on Tetsaya's, making Tetsaya a bit surprised, while Asami was blushing on seeing Akeno act aggressively. Akeno didn't wait and started to move her tongue towards Tetsaya's mouth wanting to dominate him, but Tetsaya immediately blocked her and started to push her tongue back and started dominating her instead. Akeno who suddenly felt being dominated blushed a bit because of the pleasure and soon started to melt in the kiss. After making out for a while Tetsaya and Akeno separated from each other, with both of them panting a bit for air. Akeno placed a hand on her cheek and said, that felt amazing wanna have a go at it again, and maybe who knows a bit further as well. Hearing that Asami immediately wrapped her hand around Tetsaya and said, sorry Akeno-san, but tonight Tetsaya is mine. Akeno looked at Asami with a smile and said, ara ara Asami-chan, is very aggressive today, now why don't you let me join as well, who knows that you might enjoy it more. Hearing that Asami thought for a while and then looked at Tetsaya who looked back at her and said, I don't know, I already told you that I would hear one of your requests, if you want it that way, then I don't have any problem. Asami once again started thinking, then looked at Akeno with narrowed eyes and said, fine, but I am going at it first. Akeno just chuckled and said, I have no problems with that, in fact it would feel like I am having an affair, ah, just thinking about it is making me hot. Tetsaya and Asami looked at her and then shook their head, and Tetsaya said, then let's go to the bedroom directly and immediately teleported himself with the other two. 
Suddenly Tetsuya along with Akeno and Asami appeared in his bedroom, and Tetsuya immediately formed a barrier around the room, so as to prevent the sounds from going out of the room. He also Asami's connection with Drake so as to maintain their privacy. He then looked at the girls and saw that both of them had already started to take off their clothes. Tetsuya then approached Asami and pulled her closer to him by grabbing her waist. He then put his lips on her and started to make out with her. He then moved his hand towards Akeno and removed her shrine maiden robe, and started groping her breasts and pinching her nipples, which started making her roused making her moan in pleasure. Soon Asami and Tetsuya separated from each other, and Tetsuya saw Asami with a flushed face. Seeing the opportunity Akeno didn't waste any time and immediately pushed Tetsuya on the bed while she started her own makeout session with him. Asami who was now out of her days, looked at the couple making out together, but soon her gaze shifted towards the bulge in Tetsuya's pants, and she immediately gulped her saliva. Looks like it is the time to use my vast knowledge about sex. Asami thought that and moved towards the bed and slowly started to take off Tetsuya pants. When she saw that only the boxers that Tetsuya was wearing was left she took in a deep breath and then looked back at the bulge. She then moved her hand towards the boxers and took them off which revealed Tetsuya's member standing high and mighty. Seeing it Asami became breathless and said, it looks like something straight out of a porno. She then moved her hand towards his dick and started to give him a handjob while slowly started to increase her pace. Akeno who noticed a muffled moans that Tetsuya was giving out because of the pleasure, separated herself from him, and turned around to face Tetsuya's member which was in Asami's hands. Akeno blushed on seeing the size of Tetsuya's dick and said, Ara Ara, I didn't thought that you were packing something like this inside those pants. She then moved her finger on the outline of his dick, and slowly started to rub it around the tip, making Tetsuya feeling a jolt of pleasure through his body. Akeno then looked at Asami and said, Asami-chan want to help him together? Asami who heard Akeno looked at her with a confused expression which immediately turned into a grin, when she saw Akeno lifting her boobs with her hands. Asami started to take off her shirt whose buttons were already open, and then started to unhook her bra. She then bent a bit so that her breasts were at the same height as Tetsuya's dick, and positioned it around it. Akeno seeing that chuckled, but she too did the same and then enveloped the dick around hers and Asami's breasts. Both of them looked at Tetsuya and said, let's see how long will you last. And both of them started to massaging his dick between their breasts in a rhythmic movement, making Tetsuya feel the softness of their breasts around his member. Akeno who saw the face that Tetsuya was making, showed a mischievous smile on her face, and moved her head forward, and started licking his dick. Seeing what Akeno was doing Asami's eyes widened and she said, ah. No fair Akeno-san, I wanted to do that. Akeno just smiled and said, then do it I am not stopping you and kept on licking his member. Asami too moved her head forward and put the head of the dick in her mouth, and started to move her tongue all around it, making Tetsuya's pleasure increase exponentially. Akeno too didn't stood behind and started to move her breasts faster, and seeing that Asami started to do the same as well. After 10 minutes or so with Akeno and Asami kept on pleasuring him, Tetsuya was unable to take it anymore and said, I am combing suddenly Tetsuya's dick, which was covered between Asami's and Akeno's breasts, ejaculated an large amount of his semen, came splurred out of his dick, and covered the girl's faces and breasts, making them stop. Akeno wiped a bit of the sperm sticking to her face with her finger and said, Ara Ara, I didn't expect that you had this much stored inside you. And licked her finger. Asami too did the same and then wiped her face and breasts and said, Now let's start the main eve, before she was able to finish Tetsuya stood up and pushed her on the bed and light on top of him. He then moved his face towards Asami's and started giving her kisses all over her face and neck. He then moved his mouth towards her ear and whispered, Now let's start with pleasuring you and nibbled on her ear for a bit before moving her face, and started biting her right nipple while he stared massaging her other breasts, which started making her wet, and giving out moans of pleasure. He then moved his other hand towards her pussy, and slowly took off her panties, and started rubbing her clit making her moans louder. Akeno who was getting hot seeing those two started to rub herself on her own. Tetsuya then stopped biting her nipple and then looked at her and said, shall we start now, you are wet enough I guess. Asami whose face was completely flushed and was breathing heavily, gave a weak nod, seeing which Tetsuya grinned and placed his dick in front of her entrance. He rubbed it against her pussy for a while, and then inserted it inside her and penetrated her in one thrust, making her scream from the pain. Tetsuya immediately started kissing her so as to stop her screams, and also to divert her focus from the pain. Soon Asami stopped screaming seeing which Tetsuya stopped kissing her and looked at her. Asami who saw Tetsuya looking at her gave a nod indicating that he can move now, and he did once he saw her giving a nod. He started moving a bit slower at the bajining, so as to make her get accustomed to it, and slowly started to increase the speed of his thrusts, making Asami's moans getting louder and louder with the speed of his thrusts. He then flipped her around making Asami on top of him, and started to thrust faster. Asami who saw that she was now on top of him, started to move her hips on her own, which made both her ass and boobs jump up and down, with each time she moved much to Tsaya's appreciation. Tetsuya then moved his hands towards her breasts and started fondling them, while occasionally giving her nipples a slight tease or a pinch, which made her moans intensify at that time. Soon Tetsuya sat up and hugged Asami, and started to thrust on his own, as Asami was getting a bit slower, and Asami hugged him back and placed her head on his shoulder, while her nails pierced in Tetsuya's back, though he didn't feel any pain from them. 
The Sami who was now panting heavily moved her face a bit and whispered in Tatsaya's ear, Tatsaya I am close AH to my limit AH. Hearing that Tatsaya moved his face away and looked directly at her face and said, then let's do it together and push her back on the bed and started to piston thrusting, making Asami moan like crazy, soon Asami was unable to hold on and tightened her grip around Tatsaya, which he could've sworn could've broken the bones of many mid-high class level people. Tatsaya too didn't stop and did a deep penetration, making Asami roll her eyes back while her tongue came out of her mouth, and she cooned along with Tatsaya, who ejaculated inside her, after making sure that she would not get pregnant. He then looked at Asami whose body was currently twitching and asked, so how was it? Asami looked at Tatsaya and said, great and smiled at him. Tatsaya then felt a pair of hands wrapping around him while he felt a soft sensation on his back. Akeno moved her head close to Tatsaya's ear and said, looks like it's my turn now, and bit his earlobe, and started nobbling it, while well also started to rub his member with her hands, to make it come back to its mightiest position, which did not take more than a few seconds. Tatsaya nodded and turned around and saw Akeno lying on the bed. He then moved forward and spread her legs and said, looks like we don't need any foreplay here. And pinched her clitoris making her give out a loud moan. Seeing he moaned Tatsaya smirked and turned her body around and said, lift your ass. And Akeno did it knowing what Tatsaya was thinking. Tatsaya then positioned her properly such that they were on doggy style, and Tatsaya immediately pushed his member inside her, making Akeno jolt out in pain, while also giving out a moan of pleasure. Tatsaya moved a bit forward and turned Akeno's face around and started kissing her. Akeno who was enjoying the kiss, suddenly felt Tatsaya groping her breasts which started to make her moans louder, but only a muffled sound came as her mouth was covered by Tatsaya's. Tatsaya then started pinching her nipples and gave them a slight tease from time to time, much to Akeno's amusement. Soon Tatsaya stopped kissing her and started banging her crazily, while spanking her ass from time to time, which made her hips completely red on the spots where Tatsaya spanked her. Akeno had already gone crazy from the speed with which Tatsaya was banging her and had her tongue coming out of her mouth, while her eyes were rolled back. After half an hour or so of thrusting Tatsaya felt that he was about to coom, while Akeno was already lying on the bed, with her ass raised, as she has came twice already from all the thrusts and spanks that Tatsaya gave her. Tatsaya did one last thrust while ejaculating a huge load inside her. Tatsaya then took his dick out of her pussy and saw Akeno was already unconscious and some of the semen was leaking out of her pussy. He then laid her beside the already sleeping Asami and covered their bodies with a blanket. He then noticed that he was still hard and decided to take a cold bath to calm himself and his member down. He then entered the bathroom and stood under a shower of cold water which started to calm him down, but soon he noticed two magic circles appear near him. He then turned around to see who it was and was completely shocked on seeing who came inside the bathroom. In front of him were two girls one with red hair and the other with black, and Tatsaya was not bothered by the red-haired lady to be naked, but the thing that shocked him to the core was that the other lady who definitely looked like Aloy was naked as well. Tatsaya looked at the black-haired girl and asked, what happened Office? Do you want something from me? Office just nodded her head with an expressionless face and said that and pointed towards Tatsaya's dick, which was already erect seeing those two naked. Hearing what Office just said left Tatsaya completely speechless, and he didn't know how to respond to the situation. He then looked at Raya with narrowed eyes, thinking that she was the one who told her to do that. Raya seeing Tatsaya's gaze shook her head and said, I didn't do anything, we just felt you fucking the two girls on, and she herself said that she wanted to do it with you. Honestly you should have placed a stronger barrier, but oh well, I cannot complain here can I? And looked towards his dick. Office who saw that Tatsaya didn't answer her looked at him and said, I can't? With a bit disappointment in her voice though her face was still expressionless. Seeing her like that Tatsaya was tempted to push her immediately but stopped himself, thinking that her small body might get hurt because of that. Raya who felt the hesitation in Tatsaya's emotions looked towards Office and said. He doesn't mind, but you have to turn your body in a mature form, first. Office looked at Raya and asked, why? Is this body not good? Raya just smiled and said, no this lolican definitely prefers your current cute body, but if you don't turn to a mature form you might get hurt while doing sex with him, and Tatsaya don't want that. Office then looked at Tatsaya who only looked back at her with a helpless smile. Office nodded and then changed her body to her adult form and said, good. Tatsaya didn't say anything and just pulled her and riot towards him. The next morning when Tatsaya woke up he felt his body a bit heavier and saw four naked girls lying over him. He sighed and then got up without waking the other four and went downstairs after wearing his clothes. While walking downstairs he took out his phone and saw a lot of messages and calls from Azazel, Sona and Seraphil. He looked at his phone with a confused expression and opened one of the message and after reading it, he kept his phone back and called the rest of his team downstairs. When all of them came down he noticed all of them looking intently at him, while Shuri was chuckling. Tatsaya immediately understood why they were staring at him and said, if you are thinking about what I think you are thinking then yes, I did it. Now onto to the more important topic. Hearing that all of them became serious and Tatsaya said, looks like we have to attend the meeting between the three factions as well, as we have the authority over Kuo, so out of you all which two are going to attend the meeting with me? Hearing that all of them started discussing among themselves and Asia asked, can't all of us attend with you? 
Tetsuya shook his head and said, I don't think that it will be a good idea, first of all, there is the fact that all of you were attacked recently, so leaving the house in Shurisan without any security, doesn't seem like a good option. Secondly, Office was talking about the one of the factions of the Cow's Brigade planning to attack the town on the day of the meet. So if all of us were to be ambushed by their plan, then it might get problematic. All of them then understood the meaning of Tetsuya's decision, and then once again started discussing. Soon they were done discussing, and the ones who were going with him were Ingvold and Miyuki, Ingvold because she was the second strongest after Kurumi, and they left the strongest out of them for emergency, while Miyuki because she won rock paper scissors, which left the others completely disheartened. After they were done grieving office and Raya came down with office still being in her adult form, but soon changed back to her usual form and sat on Tetsaya's lap. Tetsaya then looked at office and said, office, are you still leading the cow's brigade? Office shook her head and said, no, since I got my home back I do not lead them. But I still go over to their meetings because Vali said they will get suspicious if I were to leave so suddenly. Tetsaya nodded and went back to feeding office and himself the breakfast that the girls prepared. Later the other two came down as well, and just when Asami's and the other second years' his eyes met all of them showed their thumbs up, while Akeno just went towards Shuri and started to describe the battle that she fought last night. Office who heard Akeno describing the details to her mother, caressed her belly and said, I did as well. And then looked at the others making all of them completely speechless, while Tetsaya just choked on the food he was eating. Seeing them Raya was just trying very hard to not break out laughing. After hearing that all of them looked at Tetsaya with a bit of disgust in their eyes, and seeing them Tetsaya immediately said, before any of you decide to report me, let me say something. Firstly, I don't, regret it, secondly, she is legal, and lastly, she turned into her adult form when we did that. He then looked at office and said, right, office? And hearing the question office nodded her head, making the others sigh. Tetsaya sighed as well and then said, office, you should not talk about such things in front of others. Office looked at Tetsaya then at Akeno and said, she did it as well. Tetsaya looked at Akeno who was smiling mischievously, and then turned back to office and said, don't take her as an example, she is not a good girl. Akeno who heard him didn't got angry, but instead grinned and said, then it looks like you have to punish this bad girl of yours. Tetsaya looked at her with a dumbfounded expression, but soon looked back at office and said, understood office? Office just nodded her head and said, understood. And Tetsaya patted her head making office happy. Tetsaya then looked at Asami and Akeno and said, shouldn't you be leaving by now, I think Riaz would be needing you both for the meeting. Hearing that both Akeno and Asami looked at the clock and immediately started collecting their belongings before teleporting to the school. Tetsaya looked at Mayuki and Ingvold and said, we should get going as well. And both of them nodded and went back to their rooms to change their clothes. Tetsaya then looked at office and said, office I have to go as well, so can you get up? Office looked at Tetsaya for a while and then nodded her head. Seeing that Tetsaya smiled at her, but soon he felt a smooth sensation on his lips and saw office was kissing him. She kissed him for a while and then stood up and sat beside Raya, who patted her head and praised her for her taking action. Tetsaya got up from his seat as well, and then went back to his room with a smile on his face. After all three were done preparing they came down, and Tetsaya warned the ones who would be staying behind, and then teleported to the school with the others. He looked at the other two and said, both of you keep your guard up all the time, and don't cause any trouble till someone messes with you. Mayuki looked at Tetsaya with a smile and said, and what to do if someone were to mess with us? Tetsaya smiled as well and said, mess them up so hard that they cannot even mess with themselves. And continued to smile while Mayuki did the same as well. Seeing the two siblings smiling Ingvold shuddered and thought, I pity those who will mess with these two maniacs. And then all of them felt a barrier was formed around the school. Tetsaya looked at the other two who looked back at them as well, and then nodded their heads. Tetsaya smiled and said, well, looks like it starts now. And the three of them started walking towards the meeting room. When they were close to the room they heard some voices from behind the door and then enter the room, and Tetsaya said, I hope that I am not late. After Tetsaya said those words all of them turned their gazes and looked at him. Tetsaya also noticed Vali standing behind Azazel leaning against a wall. Tetsaya looked at him and waved his hand to which he replied with a nod. Tetsaya also noticed the members of Gremory group, Sona, Tsubaki, his childhood friend Arena, and Grafia standing behind their respective leaders. As for those who were sitting around the table as leaders were Serzich's and Seraphol representatives of the Devil Faction. Michael and Gabriel as representatives of the Heaven Faction, and lastly Azazel and a bearded old man who was looking at him with a glare. Tetsaya who noticed him whitened his eyes and said, the masochist is here as well, what a surprise. Hearing what he called him all the others present around the room except for Gabriel, tried to control their laugh, except for Azazel who was laughing his ass off. Azazel looked at the man beside him and said, Barakiel, you are quite famous, huh? The man named Barakiel gave a glare to Azazel making him immediately stop laughing. He then looked at Tetsaya and said, and you brat, keep don't get too full of yourself, I already have a score to settle with you. Tetsaya ignored him, but soon an idea came to his mind, and he turned his head and looked at Akeno and said, Akeno I hope you are feeling well, after all that. At this not only Barakiel but Sona, Tsubaki, Serafal and Grafia looked at him. And all of them thought at the same time, he did it with her. 
Brachial stood up from his chair and immediately walked towards Tetsuya and was looking directly in his eyes with hatred evident on his face. Tetsuya looked back at him with a smile on his face and said, What happened masochist San? But Brachial ignored what he called him and then said, Kid, don't mess around with her if you are not serious. Tetsuya became neutral and said, If it comes to those things I am always serious. Brachial was about to say something, but Azazel interrupted them and said, Now now, let's calm down, we don't want to have a dispute before the meeting starts, now do we? Both of them looked at him, and Brachial and Tetsuya immediately said, Keep quiet pervert. Hearing that Azazel's brows twitched and he said, You yourself are pervs, and you are calling me a pervert. Brachial looked at Azazel and said, I am not a pervert like you pervert. Tetsuya just smiled and said, Now that was rude of you Azazel do you really want to taste my fried fallen wings so much? Hearing that Azazel immediately shivered. Tetsuya just chuckled on seeing that and said, Besides we are not perverts you know. At this Barakiel looked at Tetsuya with a confused expression, thinking why he was taking his side, but the Tetsuya said, I am a man of culture, while this old man is a man of torture. Hearing that the whole meeting hall fell silent and they didn't know how to react to that. Tetsuya then looked at Barakiel with a serious expression and then said, We will talk later, I think it's getting late for the, the discussion. Barakiel wanted to retort, but knowing what Tetsuya was saying was true he backed down and sat on his seat. Tetsuya also walked towards his seat which was between Seraphol and Gabriel, and then sat down, while Mayuki and Ingvald just stood behind him. Seeing that everyone was seated Serzages gave a fake cough and then said, Since all of us have now gathered let us begin this meeting. At this all of them nodded. Serzages nodded as well and then said, A few days ago Kakabiel attacked the sisters of two of the mass, with my sister being one of them, and both the Citri peerage along with my sister's peerage, played a big role in that incident. Serzages then turned around and said, Riaz of you may give us the report on that incident. Riaz who heard Serzages said, Sorry Lord Lucifer, but during most part of the battle I was unconscious, so I think that I might not be the right choice for this job. Hearing that Serzages was surprised, but he didn't show it on his face. At this Seraphol looked at Sona and said, Then Sona-chan would you be able to enlighten us on that incident? With a smile on her face. Sona nodded her head and then started telling them about the incident that happened. Once she was done Serzages looked around the room and asked, Can anyone testify her claim? At this only Tetsuya and his group raised their hands as the other devils didn't dare to raise their hands when their king was not raising hers. Tetsuya then looked at Bali who raised his hand as well. Seraphol then looked at Sona and thanked her. Serzages then looked at Azazel and said, So what do the governor general of the fallen angels have to say about this matter? Azazel looked at Serzages and said, If you are asking about whether I knew about this or not, then I didn't knew about this, he was always a very unruly subordinate, he was very unsatisfied with my decision of retreating when we were almost about to win the war. But you don't have to worry about him anymore, he has already been sealed, and even if he were to get out somehow I don't think that he can do something anymore, his mind is completely broken, thanks to a certain someone. And move his gaze towards Tetsuya. At this all those who have seen the three-way war shuddered, while the one who caused the war just smiled at the others. Michael who saw some discomfort among some members who were present inside, have a fake off to get back their focus and said, the topic of discussion is not Kakabiel himself, but the motives he was after. He then remained silent for a while and then asked, and what is the thing that happened to Kakabiel which made him motionless during the fight? Lady Sona said earlier that during the battle Kakabiel got motionless all of a sudden, and when he woke up he lost all his will to fight. What is the thing that happened to him, can any one of you explain that to me? Hearing that the other people who were sitting on the chairs and didn't know about the war became curious as well while those who knew about it just felt a shiver run down their spine. Azazel looked towards Michael and said, Michael take this advice from your former brother, you are better off not knowing about it, you can immediately fall if you know what exactly happened. Which made the other leaders more curious. Serzaches looked at Azazel and said, if we are here to discuss, then let's discuss on these important matters. But he then felt a shaking hand on holding his knee, and saw Seraphol holding him, and she said, Serzaches Chan, believe me you don't want to know what happened, I have seen it with my own eyes, and I have still not been able to forget such a gruesome sight, I I, I cannot believe that a magical girl can be like that and her voice kept on getting colder and colder. Seeing her like the rest of ignorant ones thought, what the hell actually happened to make this hyperactive devil like that? Tetsuya who saw that the leader were still curious about it, raised his hand said, then how about a test drive? Hearing him all of them looked at him while the experienced ones thought, now who is going to fall in abyss? What test drive? Asked Serzages. Tetsuya looked at him and said, I will show one of you what happened to him. Serzages looked at him with a confused expression and asked, and after that? Tetsuya just smiled and said, oh, you will see after that. He then looked at Barakiel and asked, Want a volunteer old man or are you chickening out? Azazel immediately placed his hand on Barakiel's shoulder and said, No Barakiel, you can receive a huge brain damage. But Barakiel smacked his hand away and said, Heh, I am not weak-willed like you, Brad I am ready. Tetsuya nodded and then a smilly appeared on his face and he said, Good good, for showing such bravery, I will award you with a special prize, I will let you see what happened to Kakabiel from his point of view. And just as he said that the experienced one's face started to get pale and the two heavenly dragons thought, this fallen got himself into some deep shit. 
Tetsuya eyes then change for a bit, and immediately Barakiel's head smacked on the table. Seeing his friend's sacrifice Azazel closed his eyes and thought, I will remember always remember you my friend. But soon his eyes opened wide when he heard Tetsuya saying, You you um Azazel can you please check something for me, I think that he is be blushing. Azazel blinked his eyes in surprise, and then looked at his friend who definitely had a blush on his face, while a foolish grin appeared on his face. Seeing him like that all the experienced ones could only look at him with a weird look, while the others were thinking what the hell happened to him. While the others were thinking that the man of the discussion was only laughing like an idiot. Soon Rekiel opened his eyes and blinked for a while, but soon he came back to his senses and glared at Tetsuya and said, How could you do something like that to a fallen angel, even though he betrayed us he was still a comrade of mine before. But Azazel looked at him and said, Barakiel you have already lost a right to complain after you showed the expression filled with pleasure to the others. Barakiel who heard that whitened his eyes in shock and then immediately started sweating and didn't know how to answer. Seeing the awkward atmosphere that was forming around the room, Serzichas showed a wry smile and said, let's leave that matter for now I think that it is quite sensitive, let's just put some trust in our fellow leaders here and drop this matter. Don't you agree with me Michael? Michael looked at Serzichas for a while and then looked at Tetsuya and said, is the thing that you did really very gruesome? Tetsuya shrugged his shoulders and said, depends on the taste that the person has, but just so you know, two heavenly dragons, one dragon king, one satan. And a governor general of the fallen angels, immediately became unconscious after seeing the incident, and regained their consciousness after hours. Hearing that all the innocents widened their eyes while the experienced ones just sighed. The innocents looked at Barakiel and Michael said, you must really be a brave soul former brother Barakiel to not even flinch after seeing such a scene. And the other innocents nodded as well. Seeing the appreciative look in their eyes Barakiel felt guilty, while the experienced ones were trying very hard to not laugh out loud. Tetsuya who somehow controlled himself looked at the other leaders and said, now let's continue the discussion we have already wasted a lot of time. Hearing that the other leaders became serious as well and started looking at each other waiting for someone to speak up. Seeing that nobody was willing to speak Azazel raised his hand and said, let's cut down the chase and talk peace, what do you say? And looked at the other leaders who became surprised on seeing him talk so openly about it. While Tetsuya just thought, now the main event begins Azazel then looked at the devils and said, weren't you planning was the same thing for a long time, or am I wrong? Serzichas and Seraphil looked at him with a serious expression for a while, but soon Serzichas nodded his head. He then looked at Azazel and said, we already had a guess that you would be proposing something like this, so we discussed it with the others beforehand. The devil faction is willing to sign the peace treaty. Michael nodded as well and said, heaven is also willing to sign the peace treaty. Azazel nodded with a smile on his face. He then looked around with his carefree attitude and said, now since that is out of our way, we have some equally strong if not stronger individuals, compared to our factions inside the room. The White Dragon Emperor, the Red Dragon Empress and last but not the least, Tetsuya and his group. So what are your views about this treaty? Hearing that everyone looked at the three individuals and then concentrated on Vali and Azazel said, Vali Vali who was leaning back against the wall, opened his eyes and said, I only want to fight with strong opponents. Tetsuya then smirked and said, and look a good boss. Which made Vali glare at him. Azazel the cough to get everyone's attention and then said, but you can do that when there is peace as well right? Vali just shrugged his shoulders and said, that I can't. All of them then looked at Asami making her flinch a bit, but she calmed herself down. Azazel then asked, and what about you Red Dragon Empress? Asami looked towards Azazel and then said, as long as I get to be with Tetsuya and my friends, then I don't care. Hearing that all of them were surprised while Tetsuya, Irina, Miyuki, Ingvald and the fellow students of the Kuohai just smiled at her. Azazel chuckled and then said, a devil giving less priority for her faction now that's a new. Hearing that Serzages just made a wry smile and said, yeah that's definitely new. He then looked at Asami and said, if it were to be heard by some other devils who are in power, you could be severely punished you know? Tetsuya just smiled and looked at Serzages and said, everybody have their priorities Serzages, don't tell me you will not choose your family over the devils. Hearing that Serzages looked at Tetsuya and said, I am a mag Tetsuya, I cannot be biased. Hearing that Tetsuya looked at Serzichas with an amused smile and said, you really must be very diligent towards your duties. Hearing that the whole room looked at Tetsuya with serious look and all of them thought, I think something bad is going to happen. Serzichas soon turned normal and just gave a laugh in response. Mayuki and Ingvald looked at Tetsuya's back and thought, Ani-sama Tetsuya is up to something. Everyone once again looked at Tetsuya and Azazel said, now Tetsuya wh before he was able to finish Tetsuya raised his hand making him stop, and a smile appeared on his making the feeling of uneasiness return to their bodies. Tetsuya looked at the devils and the fallen angels and said, before you ask me about this treaty, there is something that I want to ask, especially from the devils and fallen angels. While he still had a smile on his face. Hearing him the devils and the fallen angels gulped their salivas, while the angels unconsciously released a sigh of relief. Tetsuya then eyed both Serzichas and Azazel, and then stood up from his place and started walking around the room, making the tension in the room rise, with each passing second. You see a few days ago an incident happened in the town which involved my family. The incident was simply an assassination attempt on them while I was not around them and they were not in the house as well. Hearing that the other four gulped their salivas once again. 
Tetsaya then stopped at a place near the table and looked at the leaders with his smillion set, and you know what the funny part is, the ones who tried to attack were devils and fallen angels. He then looked at the leaders and said, now I truly want to believe that you people must not be the ones who were involved in this, but you should understand where I am coming from, so I just wanted to ask you. His expression suddenly turned cold, and his killing intent spread across the room, making all the people present in the room shiver in fear. You really don't have any hand in this right? In a cold tone. The devils and fallen angels LEADERS except Seraphil, who were experiencing more amount of killing intent than others, were feeling it very difficult to open their mouths. Seeing their condition the rest of the people in the ROOM except for his girls, wanted to protest, but they too were feeling some amount of killing intent, which made them unable to speak up. Seeing that no one was able to speak Tetsaya lowered his killing intent a bit and said, now speak. The leaders who were still feeling the pressure looked at Tetsaya, and Azazel said, I, the governor general of fallen angels swear on my life that I have taken no part in this incident. Tetsaya immediately looked at H directly in the eyes making Azazel flinch a bit. Tetsaya then used his telepathy to read his mind, and after confirming what he was saying was true, he stopped pressuring the fallen angels and angels, and looked at the devils. Serzichus looked at him and then said, I, Serzichus Lucifer, swears on my life that I have not taken any part in this incident. Seraphol nodded as well and said, I, Seraphol Leviathan, swears on my life that I have not taken any part in this incident. Both of them looked with a serious expression on their faces, even Seraphol was serious, because the amount of killing intent that she was facing was too much for her. Tetsaya checked their thoughts as well, and stopped pressuring them making everybody in the room to sigh in relief. Tetsaya seeing that smiled and said, now now, there is still some work left my friends. Which made everyone serious once again. Tetsaya looked at Azazel and Serzichus and said, as I have said earlier that my family was attempted to assassinate, but as you can see that all of them are completely fine, so you should be knowing what happened to the assassins right? Hearing that the rest of the leaders nodded their heads and said, they must be killed, right? Tetsaya nodded and then made a disappointed face and said, unfortunately yes, and since they are dead, I cannot ask questions to them. But he then showed a bright smile and said, but I can still do one thing. He then snapped his fingers, and soon a tear in the space opened, and a lot of corpses started to fall from them, and got piled up on the floor. Seeing the sheer number of corpses made the younger supernaturals a bit uneasy, but the others were still calm. Tetsaya then walked towards the corpses and said, All of this are very fresh, since I stored them in a time storage space, so they are as good as new Tetsaya then lifted one of the corpses and showed it to the others and said, As you can see my team attacked them quite brutally. So their facial features are quite difficult to recognize. He then threw the corpse to the side. He then lifted another corpse and showed it to the others, but this time the older Grimory Peerage, the Mass, Grafia Sonan and Tsubaki, had a change in their expression which Tetsaya clearly noticed. He then smiled and said, but still there are some corpses which can be recognized, so are you both willing to check those corpses and tell me whether they are someone you identify? Hearing that Azazel and Barakiel immediately nodded while Serzichus and Seraphol gave a hesitant nod which the others clearly saw. Tetsaya then used his telekinesis to segregate the bodies into those who are recognizable and those which are not. He then took out a silver gun, and pointed at the heap of unrecognizable punch, and pulled the trigger, and immediately the heap of bodies got destroyed immediately in front of the very eyes of the others, which made all of them tensed. Tetsaya then put his gun back and said, now now don't be shy, inspect to your heart's content. And sat back on his seat and looked at the others check the bodies. Serzichus who was looking at the bodies was sweating bullets and he thought, most of them are from father's peerage. Shit, what have I got myself into? Seraphol looked at Serzichus and thought, Thessersioticus's peerage members, we really are in deep trouble if Tetsaya decides to take actions. I can tell that he already knows whose doings it was, but he waiting for something. Tetsaya then stood up from his chair and said, well, have you guys checked? Hearing him Azazel and Barakiel nodded their heads, and Azazel said, yes, none of them are from the Grigori all of them are strays, we can even show the records on the date they became a stray, and the reason for that as well. He said and put a file that he had in his hand in front of Tetsaya. Tetsaya went through the file and nodded his head and said, thanks for the cooperation. And returned the file back to Azazel. Azazel took the file in his hand and released a tired sigh and said, you scared the shit out of me kid, never ever in my life I am going to mess with you. Tetsaya just chuckled and then looked at devils, and Serzichus said, none of them are known, they must be strays or someone I don't know. Tetsaya just smiled and said, you really are an unbiased man, huh? Which made Serzichus flinch while Seraphol started sweating. Tetsaya just smiled and said, well since they were strays then nothing can be done about that, but if these devils work under someone belonging to the faction then. And the devils immediately stiffened UP except for those who didn't knew about them, which was not missed by the other factions present in the room. Tetsaya then focused on Serzichus and said, do you really not know any of them? Seeing Tetsaya's gaze at him Serzichus gulped his saliva but still nodded his head. Tetsaya looked at him for a while, and then stood up and started walking towards him, which made him flinch. Tetsaya then stood beside him and placed his hand on his shoulder and said, if I find out that someone from the faction was behind this, and you are defending him you should know what might happen right? Serzichus released his aura noticing which the other leader frowned and got ready for attacking. Serzichus then said, and what might happen? 
Tatsaya just smiled and said, well my hand might slip, but the question here is how many might slip off from existence because of that. And immediately flared up his aura which made Serzich's immediately kneel down on the floor, shocking the others. Azazel and Michael immediately stood up from their places and said, Tatsaya please we are here for peace, just calm down a bit. Tatsaya looked back at them for a while, and then stopped releasing his aura, making the others sigh. Tatsaya then offered his hand to Serzich's to stand up and said in a low voice, You know Serzich's, you are similar to me, you like your family a lot, and I really admire that about you. Serzich's then stood up from the ground, but Tatsaya then pulled him towards himself and whispered in his ear and said, But you should know that I will not tolerate something like this. He then let him go and said, as a capable man, you should be know what you will have to do right? Serzich's looked at Tatsaya for a while, and simply nodded his head and said, I will help you in the matter that we talked about earlier. Tatsaya just smiled and said, you catch on fast, good good, you give me the information on the council, and I promise that I will not kill that someone who tried this assassination just this time. Both of them then stopped whispering and then shaked their hands and went back to their seats. After Tatsaya and Serzich's had their talk both of them sat back on their seats, but there was still an air of awkwardness in the room. Tatsaya looked at Azazel and smiled at him. Azazel who saw his smile gave a fake cough and said, Okay, let's continue from where we left off so Tatsaya what is your is your say about this treaty? Tatsaya placed his elbows on the table and then rested his head on his hands and said, I have always been neutral towards all and have only taken some action when the other party showed some hostile actions and am thinking of doing the same in the future. Azazel was then about to say something, but suddenly the surroundings started changing and most of the people in the room stopped moving. Tatsaya looked around with his neutral expression, and then Azazel said, looks like some stopped the time, though we are safe because of our immense power. Vali then opened his eyes and looked at Asami and said, and we have our heavenly dragons. And looks like they all are saved because of their holy swords. He said while looking at Asami, Kiba, Zenovia and Arena. Azazel then looked at Mayuki and Ingvold and said, looks like your group is really not someone to be underestimated? Tatsaya just smiled and said, well, what should I say I am very proud of them. Both of them smiled, but suddenly the building shook which alerted every moving member in the room. Tatsaya just smiled and said, we have some C-O-M-P-A-N-Y. Everyone then went towards the window to look at the enemy and saw some weird robe clair people flying upside down in the air. Gabriel then said, magicians, how bearing that Seraphal pouted and said, hey, I am the magical girl here. Seeing her Tatsaya patted her head and said, now now, you should not be mad, don't forget there is an even stronger magical girl than you. Seraphal who was blissfully smiling on being patted immediately whitened her eyes and said, who dare to take that spot from me? Tatsaya just smiled and said, oh, don't you remember, the one who fought the three-way war, and immediately Seraphal's face paled. Seeing that Tatsaya just chuckled and hugged her and said, what happened? Seraphal started hitting her chest and said, that was no magical girl, I cannot accept it. Seeing her throwing a tantrum Tatsaya just chuckled and hugged her tighter and started consoling her. Soon Seraphal stopped and was just smiling while being hugged by Tatsaya. But soon the room started to get colder and by reflex the members of the Kuo High School, Vali and Arena, looked at Miyuki, but were surprised to see that she was not the one who was releasing the aura. Suddenly a hand landed on Seraphal's shoulder making her freaked out which made all of them to look at her. As soon as they turned their head they saw a silver-haired maid standing behind Seraphal. Leviathan Sama it is not the time to play around. Stop taking advantage of him. Seraphal who understood the actual meaning of Grafia's words just smiled and said, What is wrong with this Grafia, my future husband is consoling me while I am scared. I don't think there is any problem with that. And started releasing her own cold aura, which made the area around them start to freeze up. The other people in the room just stood at a sight, and Azazel whispered to Serzich's, Hey, shouldn't you ask them to stop? You are a mao, right? Serzich's looked at Azazel and said, If you have the wish of getting your balls packed up in a nice and cold layer of ice, you are more than welcome to try that. Hearing that Azazel remained silent for a while, but then turned his head and said, Hey Barakiel interested in getting your balls get iced up? To which Barakiel looked at him with a glare and then thought, that does sound tempting, but no I have to maintain my image in front of my daughter. Suddenly he felt someone place their hand on his shoulder, and he turned his head to see Michael looking at him and then said, Barakiel, you should stop drooling, it's starting to get frozen. Hearing which Barakiel immediately wiped his mouth and found some frozen drool in his hand. PFF he then turned his head to see the other people trying very hard to hold back their laugh. His gaze then fell on those people who are frozen and he thought, Akeno is not able to move so should I try to stop them. Tatsaya whose body has also started to get frozen a bit, raised his aura a bit, which alerted the two girls, and both of them looked at Tatsaya who was smiling at them. Tatsaya then said, I think that we should stop here, don't you think? Hearing which Seraphol sighed and said, fine but I will come later to your house. She then looked at Grafia and said, to play some games of course. And separated from Tatsaya. Grafia looked back at Seraphol with a glare, but then felt a hand on her head and saw Tatsaya patting her. Tatsaya then said, you have not been visiting lately. He then lowed his voice and said, is he still troubling you? Grafia who heard the question nodded her head and said, I have been busy with my duties lately. 
She too then lowered her voice and then said, he was doing so, but after coming back to the underworld after the open house he is avoiding contact from me or rather all the females he comes close to. She then whitened her eyes and said, did you? Tetsuya just placed his finger on her lips and said, just consider it my parting gift to him, since he was so nice to me when he visited my house. And then started walking towards the others. Grafia who saw his back smiled for a bit, but soon returned her cold expression and followed behind him. Tetsuya who approached them saw Barakiel fuming with rage, while the others were trying hard not to laugh. He ignored them and said, so. How many are out there? Serzichas soon calmed down and said, we don't know as their numbers are still increasing, but the problem is that they are in possession of Gasper, and if his power kept on growing, then even we might stop moving. As he said that one of the barrier magic circle got destroyed and Azazel said, anyway we have to do something about the half vampire. Vali then said, want me to do it? I can just one shot the terrorists and the half vampire. Hearing which Tetsaya looked at him and then said, oh, I consider Gasper my brother, were you saying something Vali? I didn't quite hear you? Vali immediately said, I was asking if you want me to one shot the entire terrorist army son that we can go and save the half vampire. With his whole forehead covered in sweat. Tetsaya just smiled and said, no need to worry about that, this matter is personal now. Suddenly a lot of killing intent started to ooze out of his body, and Tetsaya said, Kaneko is there as well, and nobody dares to mess either with my brother or with my cat. Just as Tetsaya was about to move out a magic circle appeared inside the room. Tetsaya looked at the magic circle and then said, looks like we have a guest. After he said that a bespectacled woman with a huge chest, brown hair and tan skin appeared from the circle. He then noticed the leaders to narrow their eyes on seeing this woman, while the others were just on their guard against her. The woman just gave a bow and said, good day to you all, leaders of the three factions. Seraphol was surprised seeing her here and said, WW what are you doing here? Serzichas then said, descendant of the Leviathan, Kateria Leviathan. The lady or Kateria Leviathan just grinned and raised her staff, and a magic orb started to form over it. Seeing that it could explode anytime Tetsaya took his gun out and just fired at the orb, making it disappear much to the surprise of Kateria. Don't you think that this room is a little bit congested for such an attack? And smiled at her. Kateria glared at Tetsaya and said, Who the hell are you human, how dare you stand in my way? Tetsaya bowed a little and said, I am Tetsaya just a friendly human and a man of culture. After he said that the whole room fell silent, but soon as it all burst out laughing. Kateria just glared at him and pointed her staff towards him, and started to charge an attack, but before she was able to Tetsaya once again cancelled her attack. Kateria just got more pissed and said, stop doing that. But Tetsaya just smiled for a while and then said, if you want to continue this further, let's just go outside. But then Tetsaya felt a hand placed on his shoulder and saw Azazel looking at him. Azazel then said, we can take care of her, you still have to do something about the half vampire, or things will mess up pretty bad. Tetsaya who was just reminded by Azazel widened her eyes and said, ah, yes I still have to do that. He was about to take off, but he stopped and looked at Ingvold and asked, you know her? And pointed at Kateria which made her a bit surprised. Ingvold looked at Tetsaya and said, yeah, but I met her just once when I was young, so I don't much about her. She is my distant aunt of sorts. Tetsaya nodded and then looked at Kateria and said, well it was nice meeting you distant aunt-in-law. And the teleported from the room. Kateria who stood there completely motionless asked, what just happened? Ingvold looked at her and said, it is nice to meet you and Kateria. Making Kateria look at her. Kateria's eyes then widened and she said, you are a leviathan as well. To which Ingvold nodded making her surprised. Kateria then shook her head and said, doesn't matter if you are not with the old Satan faction, then you are an enemy besides I can feel that you are not a pure blood as well. And before anyone could have said anything she fired another orb, causing a huge explosion which engulfed the whole building. Meanwhile Tetsaya who came out to intercept the terrorists stood still in the sky, making the enemies look at him as he was an idiot. Tetsaya looked at them and said, hello there. To which one of them who Tetsaya seemed to be the leader said, um, hello? Tetsaya then smiled and said, good, now die. And immediately used his psychic powers to crush all the magician's heads, killing all of them instantly. He looked at the bodies of the mages who were falling on the ground and said, well, this area is cleared, let's go towards the old school site and deal with the rest. And started flying towards the old school building. The other people who saw the dead bodies of the terrorists falling down, had their mouths completely open wide, except for Mayuki who had a proud smile on her face, and Ingvold who just gave a tired sigh. Azazel looked at Serzichas and said, hey can you handle all of them as easily as he did? Serzichas looked at Azazel and said, what do you think am I? A monster. But soon he felt a sword on his neck, and immediately he started sweating. Oi redhead, did you just call Dani Isama a monster? Serzichas slowly turned his head so that the sword does not cut his neck, and looked at Mayuki who was looking at him with a menacing glare. Serzichas showed a wry smile and said, now now Miyuki, how can I say something like that about him? Miyuki who was still pointing her sword at his neck said, you better not even try or something even worse could happen to that small stick of yours hanging down there than being frozen in ice. And moved her sword away, and immediately a happy smile appeared on her face, and she saw the magician's bodies falling from the sky and said, well nothing less expected from Ani-sama. 
Serzichus looked at Azazel with tears in his eyes and said, Azazel I am a Mayu right? Azazel just caressed his back and said, Just don't think much about it, I have already stopped minding them. Follow my advice it will help you live longer. Kateria looked at the sky with horror in her eyes and said, What just happened? Vali looked at her and said, Tetsaya happened and smirked. He then thought, even though my plan to reveal that I am a part of the Cow's Brigade is crushed very badly by Tetsaya, just thought of fighting someone with this kind of power, someday is making me excited. Kateria then looked at the group and said, whatever, I will just kill you all, I don't need their help anyway. Besides I still have office's power. And started releasing her aura. Azazel started releasing his aura and said, sirs, but before he was able to finish Ingvald raised her hand and said, can I deal with her? Which made the rest of them completely silent. Kateria then started laughing and said in a mocking tone, that was a very nice joke, you want to fight with me? Azazel looked at Ingvald and then said, are you sure that you can handle her because if anything happens to you, then we are definitely doomed. Tetsaya will kill us. Ingvald nodded and said, I am sure and if you think that I am on the losing side, you can interfere anytime you want. Azazel looked at her for a while and then shrugged his shoulder and said, well then do what you want. All the leaders looked at him and said, are you sure Azazel? Azazel looked at them and said, if she says that she can deal with her then she can do it, don't forget she is in his group. All of them thought for a while and then nodded their heads. Seraphol looked at Ingvald and said, don't worry Ingvald Chan if you were to be in danger I will save you. Ingvald nodded and then walked forward and said, well let's check how am I compared to these old satans, and started releasing her aura, making all of them completely shocked by her power. Tetsaya who felt her power smiled and said, well Kateria is done for. Ingvald started to fly in the air while releasing a violet aura around her, making others feel the pressure coming from her body. Kateria narrowed her eyes and said, looks like you were not joking when you said that you want to fight me. You look quite strong, why don't you join us and help us rule the world, we belong to the same clan after all. Ingvald just smiled and said, I don't mind, but you only if Tetsaya and my friends decide to join. But you don't think that they will be willing to join you so, sorry. Kateria just shrugged and said, your loss, I gave you a chance, but oh well whatever, now die. And fired a lot of magic beams towards Ingvald. Seeing the beams coming towards her Ingvald made a defensive magic circle and blocked her attacks, and immediately fired a lot of magic orbs towards Katera, who started flying around to dodge them. Seeing that Kateria was distracted by the orbs Ingvald prepared another magic circle and various huge dragon-like creatures made of water were launched towards Kateria, making not only her but also the others who were watching the BATTLE except Miyuki and Asami, completely surprised by her power. Azazel just smiled and said, looks like she has inherited a lot of the original Leviathan's power, to be able to make those creatures in such a short time, what to say, she will be able to kick the butts of us leaders soon enough. Hearing which the other leaders nodded as well. While Mayuki thought, she hasn't even revealed her true power yet, though. Kateria who saw the dragons coming towards her, formed a huge defensive magic circle and started blocking the attacks. She have this much control over water, even though she is a mixed blood. Looks like I have to use that or else this battle may get stretched out. I have to deal with them before that human brat comes back. She was then about to use something, but before she was able to she saw a bluish yellow beam coming towards her and immediately dodged. Ingvald smiled and said, I have to say that you are good. And then immediately use her WHIP Lucy's whip from fairy tale, again to attack her continuously which Kateria kept on dodging. What the hell is this thing, no matter how far I go it just keep on getting longer and longer. Kateria said then fired another wave of demonic energy towards Ingvald. Ingvald just moved her hand a bit, and the whip crashed to the wave and immediately destroyed it. Seeing the power of the whip the audience was once again surprised. Michael then said, that whip is something? Is that her sacred gear? To which Miyuki shook her head and said, no it's her weapon that Ani Isama gave her. Michael narrowed his eyes and said, hmm, but I can feel that she have a sacred gear? Do you know what is it? Miyuki just smiled and said, sorry, this information is confidential. Michael looked at her for a while and then sighed before nodding his head. Azazel looked at the whip with stars in his eyes and said, that is something, I have to ask Tetsaya later to let me have a look at it, to be able to negate an attack from Kateria so easily, oh I am getting very excited. Don't you think so too Barakiel? Barakiel who was intently looking at the whip thought, yeah, that whip looks great, I wonder how would it feel? And some lewd thoughts started coming in his mind. Azazel looked at his friend with a weird gaze and said, forget it, he is a lost cause. And started watching the battle once again. Kateria seeing her attack getting completely destroyed by the whip narrowed her eyes and said, looks like I have to get serious. You should be ready to die brat. And then a small magic circle appeared in her hands and a slot of snakes made of energy came out of it and surrounded her body, and then her body went purple for a while, before coming back to normal while still being covered in snakes. Seeing that Azazel, Vali, Miyuki and Ingvald narrowed their eyes. Kateria then moved her hand forward, and a huge magic circle appeared in her hand. Seeing the circle Ingvald to form a circle of her own of similar size to Kateria, and at the same time both of them fired their attacks towards each other, with Kateria's being a mixture of blackish and orange colored wave, while Ingvald's was a deep blue colored one. When both the waves collided a very strong shockwave was released, but soon both the attacks cancelled each other out. 
Seeing that there was no damage on either of them made the leaders and those who were not aware of Ingvald's full strength, completely shocked by her power. Ingvald smiled and said, looks like I can go Olu, but before she was able to finish Azazel came in front of her and said, now now, Leviathan Chan let me take over there are some things that we have to discuss. Ingvald looked at Azazel with an unpleased expression, but soon sighed and said, whatever it must be important since someone like you is butting in. Hearing her say someone like you Azazel's lips twitched, and but he didn't say anything and was about to thank her for understanding, but Kateria interrupted her and said in a mocking tone, what happened got scared of my power or what? Want to hide behind that boyfriend of yours? How about it, I killed that weak ass shitty human in front of yo, but before she was able to finish the who atmosphere around them started to get tense, and huge amount of energy started to come out from two people. Azazel who was blown away by the sudden burst of power was completely stupefied, but soon calmed himself down and looked towards the sky, and saw Miyuki and Ingvald standing side by side with a huge amount of aura surrounding them. Both of them looked at Kateria with a cold glare, and Miyuki said simultaneously, oi oi oi, hag looks like you have lived enough. Ingvald then said, looks like it is time for the extinction of the pure blood leviathans. Seeing the two of them the others only gulped their saliva most of them thought, of all people she could have thought to kill, why should she say the name of the one person who cannot be killed? Well we pity you Kateria. While a certain fallen angel's thoughts, this pressure, ahh I am feeling so blissful. Currently Tatsaya was flying towards the old school building, and and soon he noticed some magicians who were surrounding something which looked like a magic circle, but Gaspar and Kaneko were stuck to it. Tatsaya immediately landed in front of them, making the magicians alerted and point their knives at Kaneko and Gaspar. One of the magicians looked at Tatsaya with a glare and said, how is he here, we made sure to cut off all the teleportation circles formations. Another one of the magicians then said, take one more step and we will might hurt them. Tatsaya looked at Gaspar and Kaneko and saw Kaneko who was stuck upside down and had a few cuts and scratches over her body. Kaneko who saw him looking at her blushed and thought that Tatsaya was looking at her panties which were clearly visible because of her skirt being flipped. She then said, Senpai, don't look at my panties. Gaspar then said, Tatsaya Senpai it hurts a lot. Tatsaya's brows twitched and he said, you naughty kitty, I was looking at your injuries, and you Gaspar stopped speaking like a girl hearing that Kaneko blushed from embarrassment, while some tears came out of Gaspar's eyes. He then looked at Gaspar and said, Gaspar how can you cry, are you not a man? Gaspar looked at Tatsaya and said, but I don't want all this, I don't want to hurt my friends at all. Hearing that Tatsaya narrowed his eyes and said, if you don't want your friends to suffer because of you, then you have to become strong and control your power. You told me that you want to become strong, was that a joke? Hearing his strict tone Gaspar flinched but still shook his head and said, no I want to get strong, but I am scared. Tatsaya glared at him and said, what did I told you that you have to do when you ask me to become strong? Gaspar's face immediately become angular, and his eyes immediately became narrowed and he said, eat this. With an all might expression. But just as he opened his mouth a bit Tatsaya threw a pell made of his blood in Gaspar's mouth and said, yes just do that, you need to try something different if you want to become strong. Being scared of something isn't an answer. Gaspar who felt the taste of blood in his mouth, whitened his eyes and started to get scared, but after hearing Tatsaya's words, a determined expression appeared on his face, and he gulped down the pill. Just when he gulped down the pill his eyes shone and he immediately split it into a number of bats and stopped the time in the area. Though Tatsaya was still able to move and saw Gaspar saving Kaneko. Gaspar then brought Kaneko back to Tatsaya, and then the time started moving. Tatsaya immediately caught Kaneko in his arms making Kaneko blush. The magicians who saw both Gaspar and Kaneko disappeared from the circle, were shocked and were about to say something, but before they were able to Tatsaya shouted, and what the hell were you all doing, not making any moves when I was talking to Gaspar and just kept on watching me are you all idiots, at least you should have made some plans or something. Seeing him scolding them the magicians felt a bit guilty, but soon one of them realized something and said, hey we are the terrorists here. Why are you scolding us? We hurt those two brats, you should be attacking us, not correcting our mistakes. Tatsaya then looked at Kaneko's injuries and immediately healed them and said, want me to beat them or you want to do it on your own. Kaneko shook her head and jumped down from Tatsaya's hands and said, I and Jaya Kun can handle them, right Jaya Kun. The bats who were hovering behind Tatsaya had a gleam in their eyes, and they said, of course I am a man after all. And immediately all the magicians were stopped by Gaspar. Kaneko didn't waste any time and immediately covered her fists with magic and punched the magicians with all her power, but when she killed one of the female magicians, her big breasts jiggled a bit making some tick marks appear on her forehead. She narrowed her eyes and then said, you don't deserve to live. And the aura surrounding her fist suddenly became large, making Gaspar surprised. He looked at Tatsaya and asked, Tatsaya senpai, what happened to Kaneko-chan? Tatsaya looked at the bat who was sitting on his shoulder and whispered, Kaneko went into a state which is called the rage of the flat chest. In these moments it is best to maintain your distance from her and definitely and I mean definitely not talk about someone's chest. The bat nodded its head and said, I understand senpai, I will make sure not to talk about this to her. Tatsaya nodded and said, you better do it, if you don't want your cardboard box to be filled with garlic. Which immediately made Gaspar started sweating. Both of them then looked back only to see Kaneko brutally attacking the magicians. 
Tetsaya and Gaspar looked at each other, and then Tetsaya said, let's look the other way, I don't want the image that I have of her in my mind to be ruined. To which Gaspar nodded as well and immediately Tetsaya and all the bats looked the other way. After Kaneko was done beating the magicians she returned back to Tetsaya and Gaspar, who was now back in his human form. Both Tetsaya and Gaspar then looked at the magicians' bodies and felt a bit troubled on seeing that how badly they were beaten. Not wanting the image that Kaneko had in his mind, Tetsaya took out his gun and disintegrated the bodies immediately. Suddenly all three of them felt a sudden rise in power, which made Kaneko and Gaspar started sweating, while Tetsaya thought, what the hell are they planning to do? Destroy the whole town or what? What pissed Ingvold and Miyuki so much? He then looked at the other two and said, let's go back before they decide to destroy the whole town. And immediately teleported along with Gaspar and Kaneko. At the same moment all three of them appeared near the leaders making all the leaders turn around and look at them, and when they saw him all of them gave a sigh of relief. Tetsaya looked at them with a confused expression and then asked, what the hell happened that they decided to crush Kateria? Grafia looked at him and simply said, Kateria threatened to kill you, so they decided to kill her. Tetsaya looked at her for a while, and then formed a strong barrier around the whole school and said, kick her ass, don't let even a single cell of her body remain present on the surface of earth. Hearing that both of them looked at Tetsaya and soon a small smile appeared on their faces, and then they looked at Kateria and said, now not even luck is on your side. And then started to raise their power levels to the maximum. Seeing that they can still get more powerful all of them except for Asami and Tetsaya were completely speechless. Serzichus looked at Seraphil and she looked back at him, and then Serzichus said, both of them are already as strong as you and even me in my this form. Seraphil simply nodded her head and then looked at Tetsaya and asked, Tetsaya-chan does Ingvold-chan want to take the seat of Leviathan from me? Tetsaya looked at her and just shrugged her shoulders and said, who knows, if she wants, then I am not going to stop her. It's her decision after all. Seraphil thought for a while and then nodded her head and said, well I don't mind, it will only help me get more free time. Azazel looked at Tetsaya and asked, hey why are you asking them to go all out? Tetsaya smirked and said, to show the ones who are hiding from our sights that we are no pushovers. After all they are watching us so we should not hold back and put up a great show. He then moved his hand through the oar and caught something in his hand and said, isn't that right, members of the cow's brigade? And showed a bird-like creature which was invisible from everyone's sight before Tetsaya caught it. The leader's eyes immediately widened and then Azazel said, so they have been spying on us for all this time. And how do you know about the terrorist organization Cow's Brigade? Tetsaya just smiled and said, well you can say that I have had quite a lot of lovely meetings with their members in the past. In fact I met Ingvold because of them. He said that and then crushed the bird-like creature in his hands. He then looked back up and saw Ingvold and Miyuki brutally attacking Kateria who was trying her best to run away, but because of teleportation circles being obstructed by Tetsaya, she was not able to do so. Ingvold then formed another huge magic circle, while Miyuki did the same as well, and soon a huge dragon made of ice was launched at Kateria, who was already sweating, seeing the sheer size of the dragon. The dragon then crashed into the ground, and then opened its mouth to trap Kateria inside of it Miyuki and Ingvold, then used their magic to fill the whole inside of the dragon, with water making it impossible for Kateria to breathe. Miyuki then smiled and then immediately made countless printed sharp spikes inside the dragon, which pierced Kateria's wild body. Ingvold then moved towards the dragon and said, well, let's get you out of this misery and moved the handle of the whip near the mouth of the dragon, and then activated it, so that the a huge amount of current passed through the water and shocked Kateria's body, and immediately killing Hyarov, she was not already dead from fear and suffocation, and being pierced by the spikes all over her body. Seeing how brutally she was killed even the leaders were a bit scared by that, and then Azazel said, I don't know who is the real devil now? Tetsaya looked at Barakiel and then asked, yo, brave soul want to try this special treatment? Barakiel looked at Tetsaya and said, even though I am brave I am not an idiot who is going lay down his life for Plisu Kofkov showing their bravery. Tetsaya then dispelled the barrier, and just as he did that he saw a lot of magicians coming towards them, and he then said, looks like it, it is their second unit. Well what are you guys waiting for? Start attacking them. At this all the younger devils along with Arena nodded their heads and then went to the battle. He then looked at Vali and used his telepathy on him and said, go and make your epic resignation to the Grigori. Hearing that Bali nodded and then went balance breaker and along with Asami, and started destroying the magicians. After that the girls came back to Tetsaya, and after he was done praising them, he sat down on chairs that Tetsaya formed with his magic, along with the other leaders who watched the others fight with the magicians, while eating popcorn and cheering the younger people. Seeing how the leaders in Tetsaya group were simply watching them and cheering them instead of helping made a lot of them pissed, but they still decided to end it. After all the magicians were dead, Vali attacked Asami who easily dodged his attack, and then Vali revealed him being a part of the Cow's Brigade, and a descendant of the original Lucifer. He then asked for a fight with Asami, which ended up in a draw because of Asami being proficient in fighting plus her Ascalon, which was able to do a lot of damage to Vali. Soon Bhikkhu came in the school after breaking the barrier, and greeted Tetsaya who greeted him back and went back with Vali telling him about some fight with the gods. After they left the three factions started to maintain the whole school building, while the others once again started discussing. 
Tetsaya came towards the leaders and said, Hey Michael, I think you should check the officials of the church every once in a while. I heard from Zenovia that they are brainwashing humans to the point they are not able to experience joy in anything. Hearing that both Michael and Gabriel were completely shocked, and they immediately apologized to Zenovia making her flustered. Tetsaya chuckled at that and then said, Also can you do something so that she can pray to God? And pointed at Zenovia. Michael looked a bit surprised, and then asked Zenovia whether she still believed in God, to which she replied making both Michael and Gabriel happy. Zenovia then looked at Tetsaya and said, Thank you for all that, and placing the matter of the wrong ways of the church in front of them. Tetsaya just patted her head and said, No problem. And started walking away with his team. Leaving behind the others. He then realized something and turned around and said, Oh yeah, I will not be joining the alliance, but will still be neutral. CIAO and teleported away with his team leaving behind everyone completely speechless, while Azazel just laughed it off. A few days have passed since the meeting between the three factions, and there was quite an uproar among the devils of the Kuo High School regarding Tetsaya, and his group not being in the alliance. Azazel also became the new advisor of the orc and a teacher in the school, and Tetsaya had to admit that it was good decision as hanging out with Gaspar and Azazel, while skipping classes was something that he enjoyed a lot. Though he and the other two were constantly reprimanded by Sona, but Tetsaya easily got out of the situation by making Sona flustered or threatening her with some magical girl so tan photos. Currently Tetsaya and his group along with Gremory and Citri group who all decide to stay together, were in a train compartment heading towards the underworld. Tetsaya was playing a game of chess with Sona, while the others were enjoying themselves. Riaz came towards them and asked, Hey Tetsaya can you tell me why did you not join the alliance? Tetsaya didn't even look at her and said, because I didn't want to. Hearing that Ria's brows twitched while Sona just sighed and said, Leave it Ria's, he is not going to change his decision, but still it was shocking when you said that you are not going to join the alliance. Tetsaya just stood up from his seat and said, If you think that it was shocking, then you all have a lot to learn. First rule of every leader should be to not take any rash moves and take everything into consideration, and by the way checkmate. And walked away leaving the two heiresses confused. He then sat beside Azazel who was at the bar and took a drink for himself. Azazel looked at him and asked, Drinking this early? Tetsaya looked at him and said, like you are one to talk. Anyway how is the alliance coming along? Azazel took a sip of his drink and said, well it is going well, it's just that my schedule got very hectic. I have already sent some invitations to some mythologies who I think might cooperate with us. Tetsaya just nodded and then said, and how are you going to rule out the spies and traitors? Azazel just sighed and said, well we can just pray to God and hope that nothing goes wrong, after all it is impossible for us to find who is a spy, or who is not if we don't have any evidence, and just pointing someone out without evidence, will only make the relations with the other factions worse. Tetsaya nodded and then said, by the way I hope that you don't use God when you are with devils, your impressions in front of them which is already bad will worsen further. And looked at the devils who were clutching their heads because of the pain. Azazel just smiled wryly and apologized for his mistake. Riaz then looked at him and said, it's fine, by the way Azazel can you tell us why the guy sitting beside you didn't join the alliance, I am getting curious because of it. I just went through the documents and didn't find anything that may cause any harm to him. Azazel took his glass and gulped the remaining drink down and said, yeah, there is nothing there in the clause related to his group, and that is the reason. Hearing that the rest of the people except for Tetsaya's group got confused, but some people who were on the smarter side, realized what was the reason. Tetsaya looked at Sona who had widened eyes and said with a smile, it looks like you realized it's so tan. Sona looked at him with a serious expression and said, There is indeed nothing there in the documents that will be bad for your group, but the fact that there is nothing that is beneficial for you, made you reject the alliance, right? Tetsaya just nodded and said, Indeed it is just like a contract which say that we will provide you protection, when you are in danger, but in return you have to work for the alliance. I mean which idiot will even take agree to such an agreement. Besides it will be mostly you the alliance who will be in need of protection, rather than us. So it is totally one-sided crap. There are clauses that are helpful for the three factions, like Azazel's research on sacred gears, Devil's peerage technology information and even Heaven's support, which is beneficial for Devils as they are weak against Holy Element. I have no use of any of these benefits that the Alliance is giving, so simply not joining it is something that I would do. Hearing that most of the people who were not aware of Tetsaya's group full, might thought that he was arrogant and Riaz said, you mean to say that you have no need for protection against enemies? Don't you think that you are getting too arrogant? No matter how strong you are, you cannot be stronger than the three factions. Hearing that Tetsaya was about to say something but Azazel interrupted him and then said, Don't underestimate him Gremory Ares, his whole group even without him participating, can easily crush both Gregory and Devil faction, with ease. Ria's looked surprised from Azazel's words, and she was not alone. Sona's peerage except for Sona, Tsubaki and Saji, had the same thought as well. Ria's then said, That is simply over-exaggeration? But Azazel shook his head and said, I would have agreed with you if I would have not seen the power of those two girls against Kateria that day, but now I cannot say the same, especially since I don't know the power that other members of his group pack. Who knows if they are at the same level as them or some might be even stronger than them. Hearing that the all of them remained silent till an announcement about reaching the Citri territory was made. 
Tetsuya stood up from his seat and bid Sona and the others farewell, and promised to meet her later. Azazel then looked at Ria's and then said, Anyway let's go, we have to discuss something important right? Ria's looked at Azazel and then nodded her head. Azazel then looked at Tetsuya and said, You too Tetsuya. Tetsuya who was playing games with Gaspar, threw the console towards Kiba who caught it and said, Coming. And left with the other two. Tetsuya went to a different compartment with Ria's and Azazel, and all of them sat down around the table, and Azazel said, As you both may know that we are trying to bring the different factions together for the upcoming threat of the Cow's Brigade. Yes, I am well aware of that. Ria's, stop beating around the bush, and just get to important part. Tetsuya, Azazel looked at him and said, Hey, Atlas let me build up the atmosphere. He then sighed and said, We have invited the Norse mythology to sign the peace treaty here in the underworld, so please make sure that your groups don't cause any problems in the time we are here, it will leave a bad impression on them. Tetsuya just shrugged his shoulders and said, I have already made it clear, as long as you don't mess up too bad, we will not do anything. His voice then turned cold and he said, but just cross the line even a bit, both Azazel and Ria's tensed up on seeing his expression and hearing his voice, and both of them nodded their heads. Tetsuya looked at them then his expression eased up, and in his normal tone he said, so you want to just tell that or is there something else? Azazel and Ria's looked at each other, and then with a depressed tone Ria's said, Ani Isama has arranged someone to test my peerage, so we ask you and your group to not interfere with that. Sai why do he have to arrange something like this? Tetsuya and Azazel looked at her, and then both of them thought, obviously, to let you all know your place, and not get ahead of yourself. Both of them then looked at each other and then gave an understanding nod. Seeing them doing that Ria's narrowed her eyes and thought, why do I have a feeling that both of you just thought something rude? Azazel looked at her and said, of course not. And gave a laugh. Tetsuya smiled and said, cause I did. Hearing that both Azazel and Ria's looked at him in disbelief, but seeing his smile both of them immediately averted their gazes. Tetsuya then stood up and then said, well then I guess all this talk is done. Azazel and Ria's stood up as well, and then nodded their heads and went back to the compartment where everyone was sitting. Just as they reached the compartment the train suddenly stopped and because of inertia. Ria's went falling towards Tetsuya. Tetsuya looked at the person who was coming towards him and saw Ria's looking at him. Tetsuya nodded his head and moved one of his hand and grabbed Ria's head, preventing her from the fall. Ria's who now had stopped falling looked at Tetsuya with a sweat drop and asked, shouldn't in a situation when a beautiful girl like me is falling down, a gentleman like you should catch me in your arms? Tetsuya just smiled and gripped her head tighter making Ria's shriek out in pain and said, oh, I am sorry for not being gentlemanly enough. He then strengthened his grip more and said, you should be happy that I didn't let a beautiful girl like you fall down. Ria's who was screaming out in pain, was trying very hard to get away from Tetsuya's grip, but was not even able to move his hand a bit. Tetsuya then looked at the others who were looking at the comedy show that was happening in front of them with a deadpan look and said, girls, team meeting, back compartment. Now. The girls in his team nodded and then left towards the compartment. Tetsuya looked at the others and said, well then excuse me. And then stopped squeezing Ria's head and then left with the others as well. Tetsuya looked at the girls and said, sit down and do whatever you want. All the girls looked at him for a while, and then Shizuka said, and the meeting? Tetsuya looked at her and then said, the redhead Siskon wants to have a test for her peerage, and we have to stay away from him. Understanding what was happening all of them nodded and then started to talk to each other. Suddenly Karen looked at Tetsuya and asked, so what are we going to do in the summer vacation? Tetsuya looked at her and then said, well, first few days we can relax and meet with some friends here in the underworld. Then there is also the youth devils meet, my main objective of coming here. Azazel also told me about some peace meeting with the Norse mythology. Hearing that Miyuki said, those perverts that once came to the house during the raiding game with Phoenix? It has been a long time since we saw them. Hamari then asked, and why is that youth meeting important? Tetsuya just smiled and said, oh, that is a surprise. He then said, also there will be your training session at the HQ, so try to relax as much as you can in the first few days. Almost all of them immediately became stiff when they heard about the training, and all of them thought, we have to experience hell once again. Tetsuya just smiled and said, I heard that. Kurumi then said, but still we have not visited the castle since a long time, will it not be completely dirty? Tetsuya shook his head and said, don't worry I have already sent some people for the cleanup. All of them got confused by that and asked, who? Raya and Tiamat. Tiamat wanted to check out the castle and look for the treasures there, whereas Raya can just clean up the entire thing in a blink of an eye. So she is enjoying at the various facilities that I have put in the same dimension as the Hanging Garden of Babylon. Hearing that Kagura asked, what all have you put there? Tetsuya thought for a while and then said, a race course, a game center, a training area, theater, amusement park and there are a lot more things, basically you can call it the perfect place for relaxation, oh, there is also an artificial beach there. All of them looked at him with a dumbfounded look and then asked, what the heck have you done to the dimension in the time we didn't go there? Tetsuya shrugged his shoulders and said, well the dimension was pretty much empty, so I decided to fill it up, don't you think that it will be a good place to relax, a place where no one other than his can enter? You can call it as a private island, it's just that the island is in a whole separate dimension. All of them thought for a while and then nodded their heads, they too think that it will be a good place for relaxation. 
Sinan then asked, oh yeah, where is office at the moment? Tetsuya looked at her and said, she said, that she was going to be with Kuroka and Lefei for some time, apparently there is some meeting between the members of the cow's brigade. Sinan nodded and then suddenly the door of the compartment opened, and Riaz and Azazel came in there, and Azazel said, well I think we should get going, all of them are already sent to their training location. All of them nodded and then went with Azazel and Riaz. After Tetsuya and the others went out of the train, they were immediately teleported and appeared in front of a small mountain. Azazel looked at them and said, they are fighting just ahead behind us. Tetsuya nodded, and then all of them flew in the air and reached the top of the mountain, and came to the edge to see the others fighting a huge bipedal dragon. Seeing the dragon, Tetsuya thought for a while and then used his magic to summon his familiar. Just as he did that a magic circle appeared beside him, and a beautiful lady with blue hair appeared out of it and jumped at Tetsuya. Tetsuya caught her and gave her a peck on the lips and said, looks like someone missed me? Tiamat hugged him and said, yeah, I missed you a lot, if not for taking care of my treasures and the young dragons, I would have permanently stayed in your house. Just as she said that Kurumi snorted and said, heh, and we would have to take care of another freeloader, and lizard hag at that. Tiamat immediately looked at Kurumi with a glare and said, wanna have a go vixen. Kurumi glared back at her and said, sure lizard hag. Both were about to release their power and clash with each other, but before they were able to Tetsuya gave a chop on both of their heads and said, behave, both of them looked at Tetsuya with a hateful look to which Tetsuya replied with a smile on his face. He then said, anyway Tia. Tiamat who heard him calling her name became alerted and looked at him. Tetsuya pointed towards the bipedal dragon and then asked, how strong is he compared to you? Tiamat looked at the dragon which Tetsuya pointed to and said, if I get serious, I can defeat him easily, but still it will be a tough fight, after all Tanan is a former dragon king. Tetsuya thought for a while and then asked, and what do you think Asami? Tiamat then looked at a red armored figure flying in the sky with a sword attached to her gauntlet and fighting with Tanan. She looked at her for a while and then said, she has improved a lot since the first time I met her in the forest, when you all came to get your familiars. I guess you have progressed quite a lot. Tetsuya then narrowed his eyes and then asked, so how do you evaluate her, compared to the previous red dragon hosts? Tiamat immediately whitened her eyes and said, she seems better than average to which the others looked at her with a surprise. Tetsuya was about to say something, but suddenly Arias interrupted her and said, nothing less expected from my servant. Before anyone can reply Tetsuya said, what are you doing here? Hearing his question Riaz and Azazel looked at him with a confused expression, while the rest of them just sighed knowing what Tetsuya was going to do. Riaz looked at him with a dumbfounded expression and then said, I'm observing my peerage. Tetsuya looked at her with his usual neutral expression and then asked, why has your brother sent that dragon here? To check my peerage. And what are you to them? The king of their peerage. Tetsuya nodded his head and moved towards Riaz and placed his hand on her head. Seeing that Riaz was confused but suddenly Tetsuya gripped her head and said, then that means that you are a part of the peerage as well, so move your lazy ass and help them a bit. He then opened a portal and took a stance. Riaz whose head was gripped by Tetsuya was trying her best to free her, but just like before it was still all in vain. Tetsuya then lifted her body and said, here, I will give you a head start, also I advise you to prepare some attack, so that you do not waste a head start. Hearing that Riaz started panicking as she has almost guessed what Tetsuya was about to do, and just followed her instructions and started charging her power. Tetsuya pulled his hand back, and by using enough force so that Riaz don't die, he gripped her head tighter and threw her while shouting, Ria deed bazooka, and immediately Riaz was thrown at a very high through the portal. All of them then looked down the hill and saw a similar portal appear down there, and from it a crimson colored flash appeared. Riaz who just appeared on the battlefield shouted, get out of the way I. And immediately all her peerage members stopped attacking the dragon and just moved away from her path. Seeing that the path was clear Riaz immediately unleashed all the power that she had stored up till now in one attack. A huge magic circle was formed in front of her hands, and just seeing the sheet size of the circle some of the people were surprised by it. Tetsuya who looked at the circle said, though her method is inefficient, I guess she did train a bit recently. And the others just nodded their heads. Riaz then immediately fired the huge orb of power of destruction towards Tannen seeing which Tannen got a bit wary as well, and decided to use a bit more of his power. Tannen then fired huge amounts of flame towards the orb, but this time as well the others were surprised when they saw that the orb held out for a bit, before being completely engulfed in the flames. Asami who saw the flames coming towards her group, immediately rushed towards Riaz, and then caught her and moved away, while the others did the same as well. Tetsuya who saw the scene in front of him nodded his head and then looked at Tiamat and asked, so what you were saying continue. Tiamat nodded and said, she is good, but just like the past wielders she is relying on the sacred gear too much, and just like them she too will be consumed by the juggernaut drive, sooner or later. Tetsuya nodded and then said, well there is still time for that, I will take care of that when it will surface. He then looked at the battlefield once again, and then a grin appeared on his face and he said, looks like my red dragon is going to use her dragon slayer magic. Hearing that the other people who were standing beside him got surprised and Azazel asked, you mean to say that she have dragon slayer magic, since when? Tetsuya didn't look at him and said, just a few days ago she absorbed it from Ascalon. But I don't think that she could do much right now, she have no practice using it. 
And just like Tetsuya said, the Sami just covered the sword with a weak fire dragon slayer aura and attacked the dragon, who just got a few cuts, which were not fatal. All of them continued the fight for a bit longer, but all of a sudden they saw Tanan charging up for a big attack, but before anything got out of hand all of them appeared on the ground, and Azazel stopped Tanan. Tetsuya and the others went towards the devils and helped them and Asia started healing them. Rias looked at Tetsuya with a glare seeing which Tetsuya smiled and said, looks like you really enjoyed the fight. Rias only narrowed her eyes and said, I could have died. Tetsuya nodded and then said, yes, you could have. Rias just got more annoyed by that and said, you, how can you treat someone like this, I am your friend. Tetsuya nodded and then said, you are my friend that's why I am helping you become stronger. We are at a time where the cow's brigade may attack as any time. So there might be chances that someone might not be there to save you, then what are you planning on doing at that time? Just wait for your death? Hearing his reasoning Rias immediately shut her mouth and started thinking about what Tetsuya said. Tetsuya then shrugged his shoulders and said, and if it had come to a life-death situating, then I would have stopped him, so don't worry. Suddenly the ground started to tremble, and they saw the huge dragon coming towards them. Tanan looked at Tiamat and asked, it is very rare to see you old friend. How come you are here today? Tiamat nodded her head and said, yeah, I just came to meet my mate. And pointed at Tetsuya. Tanan then looked at Tetsuya to which Tetsuya just waved his hand in response and said, Tetsuya Shiba, human. Tia's mate. Tanan looked at Tetsuya for a while and then said, I cannot feel anything special from you. Tetsuya just smiled and said, isn't it common sense to hide your power so that the enemy don't recognize you? Tanan just nodded and said, that is true but who in this day and age do that? Tetsuya's lips twitched and he said, I don't know um maybe people who have the capability to think. Hearing that most of the people around him tried their best to not laugh at the answer while well, Tanan just said, did you just make fun of me? Tetsuya just smiled in response and said, who knows? Tanan looked at him for a while and then sighed and said, forget it, since Tiamat chose you as her mate, you must be something, and I really don't want to mess with that mad woman. Immediately Tiamat had tick marks on her forehead, which only kept on increasing when Kurumi start to insult her. She glared at Kurumi and said, wanna have a go. Kurumi glared back and said, huh, come at me hag. But once again Tetsuya hand chopped their heads and stopped the two of them and said, behave. To which just the two of them pouted. After Tetsuya was done reprimanding Tiamat and Kurumi, all of them decided to go to go for a bath, as the Gremory group was covered in sweat and dirt. Tetsuya who was done undressing looked at the others, and then his eyes fell on his not-so-masculine brother. Gasper, hurry up and take off your clothes, you have to take a bath. You cannot go back to the Gremory territory if you are dirty. Gasper looked at Tetsuya with a blushing face and then said, but it's very embarrassing, here. Tetsuya then said, if you don't do it here then where are you planning on taking your bath, the women's section? Gasper then with a bit of hesitation in his voice said, see can I? Tetsuya walked towards him and placed a hand on his shoulder and then said, Gasper you are a man right? Gasper looked at him and nodded his head. Seeing that Tetsuya nodded and then said, then as a proud man, you shouldn't be embarrassed to take off your clothes in front of other men. Be confident in yourself. Besides, Tetsuya then placed his other hand on his shoulder and said, do you really think that I will let any other man see my girls while bathing? Looks like you are in for some punishment Gasper Kun. And smiled. Seeing his smile Gasper shuddered and tried to run away, and even used his sacred gear unconsciously, but it didn't affect Tetsuya, and he used his telekinesis to stop Gasper, and then undressed him, and took him to the hot spring. Gasper who was just covered in a towel and that up to his waist was very embarrassed, and some tears were formed in his eyes. Seeing that Tetsuya sighed and hugged Gasper and consoled himself and then slowly descended in the hot water with Gasper in his embrace. Once Gasper calmed down Tetsuya made him sit beside him and told him relax properly like a man, and himself sat back in a relaxing position. Tetsuya could hear the girls asking him to come up to their side, but he just ignored them and relaxed with the Kiba and Gasper, while he just gave a bottle of sake to Azazel, who minded his own business after that. Soon Tetsuya sat up and started chatting with Kiba and Gasper, making Gasper more open to the rest of them, while the girls who had finally given up on calling Tetsuya, simply chatted with each other. Once all of them were clean and refreshed, they all left the hot spring, and then got into some carriages, which belonged to the Gremory household and continued their journey, while Azazel just teleported to Serzich's office to discuss about the meeting. Tetsuya and his group who were kept in a different carriage than Rhea's peerage were chatting to each other. Tetsuya then became serious and said, be careful from here on out we are in Ziotifix territory now, we don't know what all he might have planned. Although, I doubt he will be at his home thanks to my special gift. Hearing that all of them nodded and then chuckled on thinking what Tetsuya did to the Gremory head. They were thinking that he must be quite frustrated since he cannot get close to any woman. Suddenly all of them looked at the person who was sitting beside Tetsuya with a glare, while Tetsuya just smiled wryly. Miyuki then said, I don't know what are you doing here, if you are the maid of the family, shouldn't you be in their carriage instead? The silver-haired maid who was sitting beside Tetsuya with a cold expression on her face said, it is my duty as the maid to not let the guests feel uncomfortable, so I am simply making sure of that while also protecting Tetsuya-sama from hungry bit cough cough wolves. Hearing that the girl's brows twitched and all of them thought, you are the most hungry amongst all of us. 
Kurumi then pointed at Tetsuya's arm which was enclosed between Grafia's breasts and said, and what do you have to say about that? Grafia looked at Tetsuya's hand, and then after a while said, I am just preventing him from doing something indecent to all of you, by making sure that he is unable to move his hand. No need to thank me, it is my duty to take care of the guests. And looked back at them with a smile which soon turned into her usual cold expression. Seeing her smile the rest of them became a bit pissed, and then Himari looked at Tetsuya and said, why are you not saying anything to her? Tetsuya blinked his for a while and then nodded his head. He looked at Grafia and then with the other hand which was free, patted her head and said, good job, Fia. And smiled at her. Being patted by her Grafia mouth curled up in a smile, and she just nodded her head. Seeing the two of them the rest of them just sighed and stopped thinking about the matter. They knew that they were currently in the Grafia's home ground, and in this place she has a lot of power over them. Soon the Gremory mansion came in their sight, and Grafia reluctantly released Tetsuya's hand and said, I shall be going now, I have to make the preparations for the arrival. She said and then teleported away to the mansion. Seeing her leave Tetsuya just sat back comfortably and said, Miyuki frees up the pursuers and kill them without leaving behind any trace of them. Miyuki just nodded as she too felt the devils who were appeared as soon as Grafia teleported from the carriage. A magic circle then formed in her hand and all of a sudden the group of devils who were following them froze up and then crumbled up in fine pieces and died without leaving any traces. Tetsuya nodded and said, good job Miyuki. Miyuki just smiled and nodded her head. Tetsuya then used his psychic powers and found a service which was installed in their carriage that the devils used to know when Grafia left the carriage. He just took it in his hand and crushed it breaking its connection. He then looked outside the window and said, if the same number of people will come daily during our stay, then I guess the whole territory's population will be a problem. He then took out his silver gun and pointed it towards the devils, who were either hiding or flying above them, acting as their guards, and started firing each one of them down one by one, with his misdispersion. Once he was done he put his gun back and said, most of Zioticus's own force is gone now. He then felt that the carriage stopped moving and said, looks like we reached at our destination. And then looked at the door and saw it suddenly opened by one of the butlers. Tetsuya just nodded at the girls and stepped off the carriage, and after making sure that everything was fine, he helped the girls to step off the carriage. All of them then walked towards the Gremory group, who have surprisingly reached the mansion 15 minutes before them. Tetsuya looked at Trias and said, well looks like our carriage was quite slow, compared to yours. He then looked around the mansion and then said, also don't you think that the security is pretty lax? Trias nodded as well and then said, I have been wondering that as well, there are very few people who have been stationed here. This has never happened before. Tetsuya just looked at his group and then said, I wonder why. And the girls smiled at his comment. Riaz the smiled and then said, well, leaving that aside let's get going. And started walking towards her house leading the others. Grafia who was standing beside the door opened it and bowed towards the others and said, welcome home Riaz Sama and her family. She then looked at Tetsuya's group and said, welcome to the Gremory Manor. And then moved aside to let the path be cleared for them. The other just nodded and entered the house and were surprised by the number of maids and butlers bowing to them. Suddenly all of them heard a voice and turned their heads. A small boy with the same hair as Riaz was running towards them with an excited smile on his face. Riaz Nisama. Riaz who heard him call her name smiled and opened her arms to take him in a hug, but the boy just went past her making her completely speechless. Tetsuya, Ani-chan. And the boy jumped at Tetsuya with a very happy smile on his face. Tetsuya just smiled at the boy and caught him in his hands. Calm down Milikas, I am very happy to see you as well, Milikas just hugged Tetsuya and said, I miss you a lot Ani-chan. Did you bring anything for me? Did you bring anything for me? Tetsuya just smiled and said, of course I brought gifts for you, after all you are my favorite young devil, but let's see your gifts later. Hearing that Milika's pouted bit still nodded his head. Tetsuya smiled at him and then patted his head and said, now I think that you should introduce yourself to the others, there are a few amongst us who do not know you. Tetsuya then put Milika's down on the floor, and Milika's immediately went to his formal mode, and gave a bow and said, it is very nice to meet you all, my name is Milika's Gremory. I hope that we all get along. Tetsuya then looked at Trias and said, Ria's your turn. Ria's who have been standing with her arms open wide came back to reality and then immediately turned around and said, meet him guys, he is my brother's son. Suddenly she realized something and said, wait a minute, how are Milika's and Tetsuya know each other? Tetsuya just smiled and patted Milika's head and said, well we have met quite a number of time in the past, he is a regular customer you know. Also he is just like my little brother. As he said that all of them including the maids and butlers, smiled at him and Milika's, except for Ria's and Gasper. Riaz who was surprised to know that her nephew knew about Tetsuya before her and Gaspar who mumbled, my little brother position is in danger. Kaneko who was standing beside him placed a hand on his shoulder, making him freak out a bit. He then turned her head and saw Kaneko looking at him. Kaneko then said, I know how you feel, I also have to fight for the lap, take it as an advice from a senpai, never give up, or you will lose your position. And then looked back at the others. Gaspar looked at Milikas for a while and then thought, I will not lose to you. After the new members were done introducing them to Milikas they all started to walk again, with Milikas taking the lead. Soon they reached a room and Milikas rushed inside and shouted, Ria's Nisama has came. 
Inside the room they all saw a brow-haired woman who looked similar to Ria's in both age and appearance. Seeing her walk towards them with a smile Ria smiled as well and walked a step forward and opened her hands, but before she was able to open them, the woman went past Ria's and hugged Tetsaya and said, long time no see Tetsaya kun. Tetsaya nodded his head and said, yeah, long time no see Vanilana san. Meanwhile the rest of them were trying to hold back their laugh on seeing a redeated girl who was standing in between the room with her arms open white. Venelana soon separated himself from Tetsaya and looked at the others and said, Ara, looks like all of you came, I can see some new faces here though. She then bowed and said, nice to meet you all my name is Venelana Gremory. I am Ria's mother. The older members of the Gremory group and Tetsaya's group bowed and greeted her seeing which Asami and Zenovia bowed as well. Ria's who was now out of trance looked at Venelana and said, mother you know Tetsaya as well? Venelana placed her hand on her mouth and said, Fu Fu Fu, well of course. I have been in his care for quite a long time. She then walked towards her and hugged Ria's and said, well, it's been quite a while since we met. I guess last time it was the party for your victory in the raiding game. Ria's hugged her back and said, yeah, it's been a while. Soon both of them separated and Venelana said, now what don't you and your peerage who already have their rooms here, go and rest, meanwhile I show the others their rooms. Ria's looked at the old members of her peerage, and then nodded her head and said, yeah, all of us must be tired, Asami Zenovia rest well and treat this as your own home. She then looked at Tetsaya's group and said, you all as well, treat it as your own home. She and the older members of the peerage left the room, and then Venelana looked at Grafia and said, Grafia if you would. Grafia nodded and then looked at the others and said, please follow me. And they walked towards Tetsaya and was about to lead them, but suddenly stopped. Venelana looked at Tetsaya and said, Tetsaya kun there is something that I want to ask you. Tetsaya looked at her and when he saw her serious face understood what she was going to ask. He looked at Milikas and said, Milikas, how about you go and prepare your room, we have to talk a bit. Later I will come there and give you the gifts. Milikas looked at Tetsaya and nodded his head and silently left the room. Even though he understood that something serious was going to happen he didn't know what, but thinking that it must be something that he should not hear about, he left the room. Tetsaya then looked at Benelana and said, I guess I know what you want to ask and please Grafia ask the other maids and butlers to leave us for a while. Grafia nodded and then looked at the other maids and butlers who seeing her gaze bowed and left the room. Tetsaya looked at Zenovia and then said, Zenovia if you are going to stay here, then pledge on the name of your god that you will not speak about this to anyone. If not please, leave. Zenovia looked at him for a while, and then with a determined expression on her face nodded her head. Tetsaya nodded and then asked, this is about Zeotifix, right? Hearing his name Venelana frowned a bit but immediately became normal and nodded her head. Tetsaya nodded as well and then started telling her about what happened when he came to the open house, his threats and the attacks that he did to his group, and how on the way they would have been attacked after Grafia left. Hearing all that Zenovia, Asami, Venelana and Grafia were surprised. Venelana and Grafia immediately bowed, and Venelana said, I am sorry for all this, I didn't know that he has been doing all this behind our backs. Grafia then said, I apologize as well, we really didn't know that all this has been happening, I will surely talk about this to Serzich's Sama. Tetsaya immediately shook his head and said, please raise your heads. And both of them looked at him. Tetsaya then said, you don't have to apologize for something that you haven't done, and Grafia don't talk about this to Serzich's, I will handle it on my own, if Serzich's gets involved, then his reputation will be ruined, and even though I don't have any problem with that. But still the masses will surely slander the house of Gremory, and too much commotion will be caused, which might ruin the peace that the three factions are aiming for. He then grinned and said, and I would like to take care of him myself. Seeing his grin all of them filled their saliva and shuddered a bit. Tetsaya then said, oh, also you don't need to be troubled by him, he will not come close to you anymore. He said and then explained about the gift that he had given to Zeoticus. Hearing about that those who didn't know about it started laughing. Venelana then looked at Tetsaya and said, thank you for all this Tetsaya kun. Tetsaya just waved his hand and said, no no, you don't have to thank me, it was my personal revenge. Venelana just smiled and then said, fu fu fu, but still I am thankful to you. She then grabbed his hand and put it between her breasts and said, well leaving that aside, you must be very tired. Let's go I will show you the room. Seeing that the rest of the girl's brows twitched but Grafia walked towards the men pulled Tetsaya away and hugged his other hand and said, don't worry Venelana sama, I can show him the way. You need not trouble yourself over such matters. With her expressionless face. Venelana looked at Grafia with a smile on her face and said, Ara Grafia, you have yet to show others their rooms I will show him, you still have a lot of work to do, don't you? And pulled Tetsaya towards her. Grafia still looked at her with an expressionless face and said, you don't have to worry about that, it is my duty to take care of guests and pulled Tetsaya. Seeing the two bicker Asami and Zenovia looked at them with a sweat drop, while the rest of the girls just sighed. Zenovia then asked, what is happening here? Kurumis looked at the scene in front of her and said, battle for the Iron Throne. Hearing her Zenovia and Asami looked at her and Zenovia asked, what is that? All of the girls looked at her with a speechless expression, and then Asami said, they are hungry. But still Zenovia looked at her with a confused expression on her face. Karen then said, they want a D, but still Zenovia was confused. She then looked at the two and said, they want to make babies? 
And all of the girls nodded their heads on hearing her answer. Kurumi then said, now let's see who will win? Sinan then asked, but why is he not saying anything? Kurumi looked at her and said, he is not even thinking about them, his mind is somewhere else. Hearing that all of them looked at Tatsuya whose eyes were closed and had a serious expression on his face. Seeing that Sinan immediately used her link and asked, what are you doing? Tatsuya who heard the telepathic message opened his eyes and looked at her and said telepathically, searching for all the traps that he has set up in this house for us, and defusing them. He then noticed his arms covered in something soft and looked at the two women. He then asked, what is happening here? Hearing which the whole room fell silent but suddenly the door opened and Milikas came in the room and said, Tatsuya on e chan when are you planning to come? Tatsuya freed his arms and walked towards Milikas and apologized to him. Milikas then immediately grabbed Tatsuya's hand and dragged him towards his room. After the two were gone Kurumi said, looks like Milikas wins the war. Later that day when Tatsuya was done playing with Milikas for a while, both of them slept in his room, as Milikas requested already slept while playing, and Tatsuya also thought that Milikas' room would be much more safer than any other room in the mansion. In the evening he felt someone shaking him and reluctantly opened his eyes to see Grafia shaking him. Once she saw that he was awake she stood straight and said, I am sorry for disturbing your sleep, but dinner is ready. Tatsuya nodded and then lifted the boy who was lying on top of him and said, Milikas wake up. Milikas 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 then slowly opened his eyes and rubbed them. Tatsuya then informed him about what Grafia told him, and he was then wide awake. Milikas then stared at Tatsuya's face and said, Ani Sama there is something on your face. Tatsuya got confused by that, and then took out a mirror and saw many red marks on his face. Seeing them his gaze immediately shifted towards Grafia who had a small smile on her face. Tatsuya then thought, I certainly felt someone touching my face, but I just let that be, but to think that she took advantage of it and kiss all over my face. He smiled as well and looked at Milikas and said, you go ahead I will come after washing my face. Milikas nodded and then left the room. Once Tatsuya saw that the door was shut, he immediately pulled Grafia and pushed her on the bed and got on top of her. He then said, I didn't know that the maids of the Grimmery family are so naughty. Hearing that Grafia just smiled at him. Seeing her smile Tatsaya grinned and said, not refuting the claim, looks like you indeed are the culprit. Now, this calls for punishment. He then placed his hand on her chest and pinched her left nipple over her clothes. Not expecting the sudden action Grafia immediately opened her mouth to let out a moan, but before she was able to Tatsaya covered her mouth with his own, and immediately started kissing her. Grafia who was already in shock because of her nipple being pinched, got even more surprised by the kiss, but soon she came back to her senses and cupped Tatsaya's cheeks, and started kissing him back. Tatsaya who saw this grinned and moved his other hand and pinched her other nipple as well. Feeling that Grafia once again tried to moan but this time as well, Tatsaya took advantage of that and inserted his tongue in her mouth, and started exploring her mouth very roughly. Grafia who felt the sudden attack tried to counter him, but all her effort was in vain. Tatsaya kept on doing it roughly till he felt that Grafia was going to climax, and just at that moment he stopped and separated himself from her. Grafia who suddenly stopped feeling the pleasure she was feeling earlier, got confused and looked at Tatsaya who was standing straight and was fixing his appearance. He then used his magic to clean up his body, and looked at Grafia with a smile and said, let's go then, we are getting late for the dinner. Grafia wanted to ask him to continue, but seeing the smile on his face, she understood that he will keep on teasing her. She looked at him with a pleading expression and said, Ti Tatsaya sama, see can we before she was able to finish Tatsaya flicked her forehead and said, if we continued then how will it be a punishment? And then started walking towards the door and left the room. Grafia who saw him leave her still unsatisfied pouted for a bit. Soon she gave out an annoyed sigh, and then stood up from the bed, and then fixed her appearance and said, I don't know whether to do this again or not. He will punish me, but still he didn't let me finish my business. She then turned back to the maid mode and silently moved out of the room. When Tatsaya entered the dining room he only saw Venelana and Milikas to be sitting there. He looked at them with a confused expression and asked, where are the others? Venelana smiled at him and said, Grafia has gone to call them, it seems you and Milikas were the first ones whom she called. But I wonder why they still didn't come. Tatsaya just smiled and said, yeah, I wonder why as well. She is a very capable maid in my opinion. And then walked towards an empty seat and sat beside Milikas. Soon the others started to come in one by one, and when the fight for the seat beside Tatsaya was about to start, Gaspar ignored the others, and immediately sat beside him, even though he was totally embarrassed by her actions. He looked at Milikas and thought, I I I am not G going to lose. Seeing his determined expression the girls who wanted to complain simply let the matter go and silently to their seats. While eating Ria suddenly asked, where is father? I haven't seen him since I came back? Venelana looked at her and said, he has been working very hard, and only sometimes comes back. Ria's only nodded her head and then once again everyone started eating. Tatsaya then noticed Asami having trouble eating in a formal manner, so he used his telekinesis to move her body and help her eating. Seeing her body move automatically Asami was confused, but soon she realized and looked at Tatsaya, who just gave her a wink. Tatsaya then looked at Ria's and asked, so what are you all doing tomorrow? Ria's looked at Tatsaya and said, well, we all are free during the day, but in the evening we have to attend the youth's devil meet. Oh, and Ani Isama said that you all are invited as well. 
Tetsuya just smiled and said, how very kind of him. He then sent a telepathic message to his team and said, looks like we will be meeting the Diodora asshole tomorrow. Asia be prepared at all times, and we don't know till what extent that shit can drop. Asia slowly turned her head and nodded with a smile on her face, and then sent a telepathic message to others and said, if he dare try something I will smash his balls with my full strength. In a very cheerful voice. Seeing the innocent girl talk like that the rest of the team only looked at her with a sweat drop. After dinner everyone went back to the room that they were provided, and to the girl's dismay, they were all in a different room than Tetsuya's. Though Tetsuya too didn't stay in his room as Milika's made him play with him till late at night, and afterwards both of them slept in his room. And because of this a certain maid who was waiting for her punishment was disappointed. The next day the whole mansion was in uproar as the staff were working for the preparations for the youth devil meet. All the maids and butlers were moving from here and there, teleporting various stuff that was been kept in their residence to the place where the function was to be held. Tetsuya and Milikas who were watching the whole scene from the side, were amazes from the tension that was present among the staff, and then Tetsuya asked, how many people are actually there that work in the house? Milikas looked at Tetsuya and said, enough to have a different maid attend you daily for an year. Maybe a few more. Tetsuya looked at him for a while and seeing his expression Milikas said, I tried counting how many were there, but stopped after a while. Their numbers keep on increasing. It got very annoying. Tetsuya patted his head and said, so is there anyone you like among them? Milikas then looked at him with a normal expression and then said, due to a different maid coming at the call every time, I don't feel attraction towards a specific one. Tetsuya nodded and then said, you have a trough, huh? Well if you ever find someone you like feel free to ask me for help. Milikas looked at him for a while and then said, I think it will be better to talk to me about this once I am a bit more older. Tetsuya just shrugged his shoulders and said, what's the big deal, you should be thanking me that I am giving you a head start. Milikas looked at him for a while and then said, well, thanks, I guess. Tetsuya just patted his head and said, don't worry, just make sure to become a fine man of culture in future. Suddenly Tetsuya and Milikas heard someone coming towards them, and then turned around to see who was coming, and saw Venalana and Grafia walking towards them. They stopped once they came beside them, and just as they stopped Tetsuya felt Grafia staring at him intently. Venalana then asked, what are you two doing? Tetsuya and Milikas then said in unison, watching the commotion. Tetsuya then asked, so what do you two need? Venalana chuckled and said, RR is straight to the business hub, huh? well we wanted to measure your size for the clothes that you will wear in the evening. Tetsuya shook his head and said, I thank you for your concern, but oh have already arranged for my clothes for the evening. You don't have to worry. He then thought, besides Grafia is giving out a dangerous vibe. Hearing his answer Venalana just pouted, but Tetsuya clearly heard Grafia clicking her tongue making him more convinced about his guess. Later in the evening Tetsuya and his group were waiting in the hall of the Gremory mansion, for one of the star of the event, to come along with her peerage. Miyuki looked at the gate and said, they sure are taking their time. Tetsuya who was still in his casual clothes then said, well, she has to stand out a bit than the others for the event. Miyuki then looked at Tetsuya and said, anyway who are you going to escort for the event? Hearing her question all the girls who were sitting perked up and looked at Tetsuya, and were looking at him with an expression which said, of course it would be me. Tetsuya then looked at all of them who were wearing their dresses, and he only said, you all are looking fabulous, so I am unable to decide. Hearing his praise the girls just smiled at him, but then Tetsuya said, why not decide it with rock paper scissors. All of them then nodded and then gathered in a circle and started the game, and in the end only Asia was left standing. Asia jumped in joy and said, yeah she then looked at the others, and with a bright smile on her face said, in your face, losers. Hearing those words with such a cheerful voice and expression, made all of them sweat drop, but soon the door was opened and the Gremory group came inside. Seeing that all of them were there Tetsuya snapped his fingers, and then his clothes immediately changed to a black tuxedo and pants with a dark grey shirt underneath the coat. Tetsuya then said, so shall we get going? Hearing him the girls who has a slight blush on her cheeks snapped out of trance and Akeno, immediately walked towards him, and was about to latch out on his arm. But before she was able to her shoulder was held by someone. Akeno then turned around and saw Asia looking at her with a glare which made her entire body stiffen up. Asia then applied a bit pressure in her grip and said in a cold voice, make another move and you will be in one hell of pain. Akeno immediately took a step back, and Asia once again returned back to her cheerful self, and hugged Tetsuya's arm and said, let's go then. Hearing her cheerful declaration just after incident made all of them had a cold sweat and gulp their saliva and thought, I am glad that I didn't took his hand. All of them then stood inside a magic circle which was made by Tetsuya, and then all of them were teleported from the Gremory mansion. The next instant all of them appeared in front of a huge building which was looking very majestic, because of all the decoration and lighting that was present on it because of the event. Tetsuya then looked at the Gremory peerage and said, after you heir of the Gremory family. And did a bow. Seeing him acting playfully Rias played along and said, thanks for the honor. And lifted the hem of her dress and did a court bow and then started walking. The rest of them then followed her. Rias then took a side glance at the people walking behind her and then said, make sure to not stir up trouble here. Tetsuya looked at his group and said, if anyone tries to trouble you just ignore them. Rias nodded and then said, and if they are picking a fight, don't act rashly and take the best action possible. 
Tetsuya then said, if they are picking up a fight just ignore them, they are not worth your time. Rias nodded once again satisfied with Tetsuya's answer. She then said, you should be polite while answering someone who is a higher ranking than you. Tetsuya looked at his group with a smile and then said, if anyone tries to act superior to you and try to order you around just release enough power to stir up the whole building and make them piss themselves off. If it still not works just attack them with an attack which destroys the whole building or they are around the building completely to dust, and if you are still not satisfied by that I will surely revert the area back to normal, and then we can do that again till you are satisfied. Hearing his answer all of them looked at Tetsuya with a sweat drop, while Miyuki just smiled and nodded her head and said, yes, I will freeze this entire territory over and over again, if some bitch tries to get close to Uni sama And a cold aura surrounded her. Seeing that the rest of the group just sighed while Tetsuya just patted her head and then said, if that bothers you then I don't mind but just don't take this overboard and kill everyone who tries to eye me. Miyuki nodded and said, don't worry Ani sama I will not kill everyone who look toward you, Tetsuya nodded his head, and then Miyuki thought, I will just gouge their eyes out. And a smile appeared on her face. Akeno then tried to ease up the mood around them and looked at Tetsuya, and then mischievously said, by the way Tetsuya kun. what will you if the men out there tried to flirt with one of us Tetsuya looked at Akeno and just gave a smile to her. Seeing his smile Akeno's eyes twitched and she took a step back and all of them then thought, to all the devil in there we pray that you all don't incur the wrath of the Shiba siblings for the safety of underworld. Tetsuya then returned back to normal and then said, well let's get going it will be problem if one of the stars of the event is not there. All of them then nodded their head and then started walking towards the building. Tetsuya and the others were silently walking towards the hall where the stars were asked to gather, but on their way they met a buffed up man having black hair and was about their age. Seeing the man Tetsuya grinned and walked ahead of the group, confusing the grimmery group, while the rest of them gave a knowing look to Tetsuya. Tetsuya stood in front of the man with a small smile on his face, while the man had a smile as well. Tetsuya then raised his fist and, and said, long time no see Sarayarg. Sarayarg nodded his head and bumped fists with Tetsuya and said, yes it's certainly been a long time. How about it want to have a spar of the occasion of our meeting after a long time? Tetsuya just sighed and said, you really have a one-track mind atlas remember what you are here for. Sarayar just laughed out loud and then playfully smacked Tetsuya's back and said, well there was no problem in asking, right? And who knows that you might have accepted as well. Tetsuya just sighed and said, you know that I don't like troublesome things. Riaz and the others then came closer to the duo, and Sarayar then noticed them, and with a curt bow said, I a pleasure to meet you Riaz in her peerage. He then looked at Tetsuya's group and said, long time no see, I hope that you all are doing well. Riaz then gave a court bow as well and then said, the pleasure is all mine Sarayar. Tetsuya's group then nodded their heads and said, long time no see Sarayarg Zankun. We hope that you are fine as well. Riaz then looked at her peerage and then introduced them to Sarayarg. Sarayarg then looked at Asami and then said, I really hope that I can fight you someday. And moved his hand forward. Asami who was a bit nervous nodded her head and shook hands with Sarayarg. Sarayarg was about to try the strength that Asami possessed by gripping her hand tighter, but before he was able to Tetsuya came between them and separated their hands and said, I would really appreciate if you don't hold the hand of my girl for so long Sarayarg. Sarayarg then just gave a wry smile and said, now now, I don't have such intentions, I just wanted to test her strength. Tetsuya just smiled and said, want me to take her place instead, I can help you with the grip test if you want. Sarayarg immediately had cold sweat and he said, I don't want to have a completely crumbled hand just before the meet. Riaz and the other devils who were looking at the friends who were talking to each other, looked at Tetsuya's group and asked, so how do you all know them? They looked at them and just told the story about their meeting, although hiding some sensitive parts. Tetsuya then asked, so what are you doing out here, and where is your peerage? Sarayarg made an annoyed face and said, well the Agares and the Astra there arrive after me, and though the situation was still peaceful there, but when the heir of the Glacial Abolas arrived the situation turned very idiotic, and even though I tried to control the situation, but so I left and came out to have some fresh air. Tetsuya nodded and said, let me guess the delinquent and Naira-chan must be arguing. Sarayarg sighed and said, you really know them well. Tetsuya nodded and said, well then let's go and meet up with them and started walking with Sarayar towards the hall, with the rest of them silently following them, and devils asking the questions to the Tetsaya group. Soon they reached the room and Sarayar opened the door, and the scene that welcomed them were two groups of people standing in front of each other, ready to fight any moment. Tetsaya saw them, and then his gaze fell upon a green-haired girl whose arms were folded under her breasts, glaring angrily towards a rowdy-looking man. Tetsaya sighed and said, you two really get along right, Ira Chan, delinquent Kun. Hearing those nicknames both the man's and the girl's bodies flinched, and then the green-haired girl said, this nickname the other male then continued, only means one thing. Both of them then turned their head and looked at Tetsuya with a surprised expression on their faces, while Tetsuya just waved his hand and said, the man of culture Tetsuya at your service. Just as Tetsuya's presence was noticed by the two groups the men who were looking like some delinquents, got on their knees and lowered their heads and shouted at the same time, good evening Aniki. We are honored to have you here, the people behind Sigvera bowed as well and said, good evening Tetsuya-sama. 
Seeing the show of respect the Gremory group and one other devil who was standing in the corner of the room, were surprised while the kings of the peerages just sighed. Sarayard looked at the scene in front of him with satisfaction and said with a nod, as expected you still have their respect. Tetsaya then waved his hand and said, now now, you all don't need to go that far. I am happy to see you all, but please raise your heads. As he said that all the devils who were either bowing or were on their knees stood up and looked at Tetsaya with a smile on their faces. Tetsaya then inspected each one of them and said, looks like you all have got considerably stronger, especially you Ira Chan, the aura around of you have changed considerably. Speaking of aura. Sikvera then shifted her glasses, and a small smile appeared on her face on being praised. Tetsaya then turned his head towards Zephyrdal and said, you seem to have gotten rowdier than before, right the Linkwin Kun? Hearing that Zephyrdal got a bit pissed and said, bastard, you why have you come here? Tetsaya then walked towards Zephyrdal and smacked his head lightly and said, is that how I taught you to talk to your superiors? Zephyrdal who was holding his head looked at Tetsaya with a glare, and then said to his peerage, what are you bastards looking at deal with him? But his peerage looked at him and with a wry smile on their faces said, now now boss, don't you like that with a Nikki? you should be glad that he is not kicking your ass like the last time. Just as he said that a chuckle was heard by everyone, and Zephyrdal immediately turned his head to see who was making fun of him, and saw Sigvera covering her mouth with her hand. He glared at her and said, bitch you have some guts to mock me. Do you want your virgin self to be harassed that badly? But just as he said that Tetsaya said, but aren't you a virgin too Zefkun? And just as he said that Zephyrdal got embarrassed Anna looked at Tetsaya with a glare and said, oh of course and not Tetsaya then looked at him with an amused expression and said, heh. Then when was the time that you got the chance to swipe your v-card? How long did you last? Who was the girl? Was it a girl or a boy? If it was a boy who was on the top? Hearing his question all of them were left speechless and looked at Zephyrdal with a curious gaze. Seeing their gazes Zephyrdal's body got stiff, and he thought, fuck, why the hell are these bastards looking at me like that? Wait why is my peerage moving away from me? Oi bastards I am straight. Seeing that he was not answering one of the members of his peerage said, boss do you really swing that way? And took a step back. Hearing that question all of the men in the room took a step back and looked at Zephyrdal intently. Zephyrdal who was now totally pissed shouted, of course not I am totally straight. Besides I still have to do it so stop looking at me like that bastard hearing his answer, Tetsaya smiled and said, see you are still a virgin. Hearing that Zephyrdal realized what he said and then clicked his tongue and stomped his feet on the ground. All of them then started laughing, making Zephyrdal angrier. He then looked at Sigvera and said, forget it, we still had some matters to settle, right bitch? Sigvera looked at him with a smirk and said, what are you talking about cherry boy? And just as she said that Zephyrdal snapped and started to release his demonic energy. Seeing which Sigvera started to release her energy as well making the atmosphere tense once again. Seeing that the two were not going to stop Sarayard came forward and said, stop it you two, we have a meet just after this. I don't want to use force if necessary. Zephyrdal looked at him and clicked his tongue and said, what can a philo before he was able to finish Sarayard moved from his place and punched him on the face, sending him right through the wall and then said, oops to Tsai aside and looked at the delinquent peerage and said, bring him M back to which they all nodded, and then immediately rushed towards their king. Tetsaya then turned towards Sarayarg and said, calm down man. Sarayarg looked at Tetsaya for a while, and then released an annoyed sigh. Suddenly the door of the room opened once again, and the Citri peerage came in. Tetsaya who saw Sona wearing a dress, rushed towards her and hugged her, making Sona flustered and said, so Tan, good evening. He then looked at her face and said, you are looking very beautiful tonight. Sona who saw her face very close to Tetsaya, became a blushing mess, and was not able to say anything. She then lowered her head and said, T thank you for the compliment. Seeing her acting so cutely Tetsaya moved forward and whispered I her ear, if you act this cute then I might eat you right now? A shiver went down Sona's spine, but before she was able to process anything and answer Tetsaya, she was pulled back by her reliable queen, Tsubaki. Tsubaki looked at Tetsaya and said, now now, you should not mess with her right now, she still have to attend tonight's meet. Why don't I accompany you tonight? But just as she said that she felt a huge amount of killing intent aimed at her, and she got covered in sweat. She then looked at the direction from where it was coming, and saw Asia looking at her with a smile on her face. Seeing her reaction Sona smirked and pushed Tsubaki forward and said, yeah, I am busy tonight, Tsubaki why don't you accompany him tonight? Making Tsubaki experience more killing intent coming from Asia. Suddenly Asia felt someone tap her shoulder and turning around, she saw a black haired devil with a handsome face and gentle expression on his face. The devil bowed and said, nice to meet you, I am dieter before he was able to finish Asia said, I have a boyfriend. And walked away from him leaving behind a completely surprised Diodora. Seeing that Tetsaya and the rest of his group couldn't help but internally laugh at him. After Diodora was completely ignored by Asia, the delinquent soon brought back their king. Tetsaya then used his magic to heal him back, and then looked at the other young devils that were present in the room and said, we are sorry for the commotion. Please don't think bad about him, he is just in his rebellious phase. And placed his hand on Zephyrdal's head and made him now it forcefully. The delinquent looked at Tetsaya and said, bastard stop acting like my parent. To which Tetsaya simply turned his head and smiled at him. Seeing his smile the rest of the young devils just shuddered, and all of them then thought, just who is the devil amongst us? 
Tetsuya and then others then gathered around with everyone's peerage behind their kings and Tetsuya's group behind him. Sarayarg then said, well then I don't think that there is any need for it, but let's introduce ourselves. I will go first, Sarayarg bailed the heir of the Bale family. Rias then stepped forward and said, Rias Gremory, heir of the Gremory family. Sona Citri, heir of the Citri family. Sikvera Agares, heir of the Agares family. Zephyrtal Glacialobolas, heir of the Glacialobolas family. Diodora Astrath, heir of the Astrath family. After that everyone turned their heads towards Tetsaya who on noticing that said, What, I am not a part of the meet, you want me to introduce myself to? To which Sarayarg said, I mean, it's not a problem. Tetsaya shrugged his shoulders and said, Tetsaya Shiba, hm, I am businessman of sorts and a human. For all those who don't know me I just have one thing to say. He then released a bit of his aura and said, don't piss me off for your own sake. Feeling the pressure he was releasing all the devils tensed up, except for Sarayarg who had an excited smile on his face. Soon a butler came in the room seeing whom Tetsaya stopped releasing the pressure and looked at the butler. The butler then bowed and informed the others that it was now the time for the meeting to begin. All of them nodded and then left the room and walked towards the main hall. Tetsaya and the others then entered the hall and then went their separate ways. Asia immediately latched onto his arm, and then all of them went around the hall with the males giving a glare towards Tetsaya. Soon Tetsaya noticed a blur coming towards him, and immediately moved his hand and stopped the person coming towards him. Tetsaya looked at the person with a smile and said, Hey Sarah, you look beautiful tonight. And then moved back his hand. Serafol looked at Tetsaya and said, Tetsaya-chan, you look handsome as well. And immediately hugged him. Tetsaya hugged her back and said, So are you skipping your work again? Serafol looked at Tetsaya with an innocent expression and said, No, I already took care of it. Tetsaya smiled and said, So you gave your work surzages without him noticing it. Hearing which Serafol's brows twitched and she said, Ugh I don't like how you can easily read my mind. Suddenly all of them noticed a group of people coming towards them, seeing which Tetsaya raised his hand and said, Yo, long time no see Riser. Riser raised his hand as well and said with a bow, Yes, it certainly has been a long time. I hope that you are doing well, Tetsaya-san. Tetsaya nodded his head and then looked at the group of people behind Riser and said, Hello all of you, I hope that Riser is not troubling you all. Riser's peerage shook their head and said, Not at all, he takes good care of us. Then Ravel stepped forward and with lifted her dress a bit and gave a curt bow and said, Nice to meet you Tetsaya-sama. Tetsaya just smiled and placed his hand on her head and patted her making Ravel blush a bit. Good to see you as well Ravel, but didn't I told you to call me just by my name? Hearing that Ravel looked up and said, I cannot be disrespectful to you. Tetsaya gave a wry smile said, Well I don't particularly min, but before he was able to finish Ravel shook her head and said, No, not doing that. Tetsaya just sighed and said, Well then do as you please and once again patted her head. Ravel who was lightly blushing, suddenly felt some killing intent aimed at her, and slowly turned her head, and saw Kaneko glaring at her. Seeing that Ravel showed a victorious smirk towards Kaneko Mac and Kaneko's brows to twitch. The Sami and Zenovia who were standing beside her, suddenly felt some black aura coming from Kaneko and Zenovia asked, K Kaneko-chan want to eat something? Kaneko didn't even turn her head and said, freshly cooked fried chicken. And started walking towards Tetsaya's group. Seeing her walking Asami looked in the direction of her path, and suddenly frowned on seeing Kaneko heading towards Ravel, and immediately rushed behind her. Seeing her rushing Zenovia got confused but still followed them as she thought there was some problem. Tetsaya and his group who saw the three figures coming towards them, turned their heads and smiled. Tetsaya looked at Kaneko and said, What happened Kaneko, missing me already? Kaneko didn't say anything and stood beside Tetsaya and glared at Ravel. Seeing that Tetsaya said, Now now, don't fight here. But Kaneko then said, Senpai, the chicken here is not good, you should stay away from it. Noticing the meaning behind her words Ravel's smile twitched and she said, Tetsaya-sama did not need the advice of someone who only likes stinky fishes. After which both the girls started glaring at each other, and soon their aura unconsciously started to leak out. Tetsaya them immediately gave a hand chop to both of them and said, Now now, we don't want to ruin the mood here, now do we? Suddenly the lights dimmed down a bit making everyone a bit curious, but soon they noticed a spotlight aimed towards the door of the hall. Serafol then immediately paniced and said, Crap, I have to leave now. And then teleported from the spot only to appear walking through the door with the rest of the Satans, with the other three glaring at her. Tetsaya then said, So the show begins, huh? After the mass entered the hall the people started making a commotion on seeing all four of them together, which completely overshadowed the entrance of the councilmen who entered them. Tetsaya looked at the council and noticed that some of them had a displeased expression on their faces, and then a small smile appeared on his face, after he read the minds of those devils. The info given by Serzages is indeed correct. Well nothing less expected from a Mayu. All of them then got on the stage, and then Serzages came forward and gave a speech about how the youngsters were important for the future and all. Once he was done a devil who was a council man stood up and said, Now, we will continue on with the youth meet, but before that we would like to hear about the goals from the devils who will lead in the future. Hearing that the six kings came forward and stood in front of the stage. Sarayarg then took a step forward and said, My goal is to become a Mayu in the future. With a resolute expression on his face which made all the councilmen praise him for his goal and all. 
Tetsuya who noticed the side and then suddenly he heard a voice. They sure know how to butter up someone. Tetsuya then turned his head and saw Azazel standing beside him with a glass of wine in his hand. The rest of the group saw him as well, and the devils exclaimed, Sensei you are here as well. Azazel looked at his students and just nodded his head. Tetsuya nodded his head as well and then said, Well what else can they do, currently Sarayard is considered to be the strongest youth. They all are trying to make up a favorable relationship with him. They have to carry out their business in the future as well, right? Hearing him Azazel looked at him for a while, but soon shrugged it off. Tetsuya was the last person he wanted to piss off. He didn't want his wings to be torn off after all. While both of them were talking the other young devils told about their dreams as well, and finally Sona's turn came man Tetsuya then stopped and looked at Sona. Sona then came forward and said, I want to open a school which expertises in preparing the students for the raiding game. After saying that one of the council man then said, but isn't such a facility already available? Sona nodded her head and said, yes, but that is only available for the noble and high class devils. Another council man then said, then does that mean that you want to open a school which the low class devils can attend? To which Sona just nodded her head. The council man just blinked his eyes for a while, but soon burst out laughing, after which many people started laughing as well. In the end only Tetsuya's group, Azazel, Mass, Young Devils and some of the councilmen, were the ones left who were not laughing. Serafal was glaring at the councilmen, while Serzichs was looking at Tetsuya with a panicked expression on his face. Tetsuya looked back at Serzichs and once their eyes met, Tetsuya showed a friendly smile to him. Serzichs immediately understood that if he interfered with Tetsuya's actions, then death is the last thing that he should be worried about. Tetsuya who saw Serzichs understanding what he wanted to convey was suddenly called by a voice. These damn devils, they don't even know about president and are still mocking them. Aniki aren't you angry at all? Tetsuya turned his head and saw Saji glaring at the crowd who was laughing at Sona. Tetsuya then smiled and said, do you really think that I am totally calm? I want to destroy the whole underworld right now, it's just that it will not make Sona happy, even if I did something like that. Hearing his friendly tone the group who was standing near him took a step back. They clearly understood that Tetsuya was totally pissed right now, and if he got angrier then it would be very bad for them. Azazel who heard Tetsuya wanting to destroy the underworld, got panicked, but soon released a sigh of relief when N gave a silent prayer to Sona. Saji who understood how pissed his Aniki was tried to change the topic and said, B but why are they so opposed to her dream? To which Tetsuya normally said in a bit loud voice, huh, isn't that obvious? These devils are scared. And just as he said that the whole room got silent and all of them looked in their direction. The gazes who saw Tetsuya were both filled with surprise and hate, and seeing that Sona couldn't help but get worried for him. Tetsuya who saw that all the gazes were at him looked back at all of them and said, what? Isn't that a reason? Why get silenced all of a sudden? To which the council men just glared at him and the one who stared laughing pointed at him and said, who the hell are you and how dare you say something like that? Tetsuya looked at the devil and smirked which made the devil get more pissed. Tetsuya then said, well aren't you scared that your position that you got because of your lineage will be taken if what Sona said were to happen? Saji who was confused by what Tetsuya said ignored the surrounding and asked, what do you mean by that Aniki? Tetsuya looked at Saji and said, well just think about this, in the devil society those who are born in the noble families are given the title of a high class devils from their birth. Do you really think that they have the strength of a high class at that time? And then those high class devils are given their peerage pieces at a certain age to form their own peerages, with these pieces they can even turn people from other races into devils. Saji then thought for a while and then nodded his head, confirming that he understood till then. Tetsuya nodded his head as well and then said, now do you think that devils would reincarnate any normal human they want? No, they will reincarnate someone who have something special about them, like a sacred gear, strong weapon, superior genetics, etc. Now the devil society which promotes the low class devils based on their strength and the knowledge that they have about their society and the house to which they belong to. Just think about if such devils who are reincarnated as low class devils were to be given an opportunity to have the knowledge about the devil society and the raiding games. Won't they rank up very quickly as they were strong from the beginning, their growth might also be fast, and since they possess the sacred gears other things like that, it is only obvious that these new devils will easily rank up to high class. He then turned his head and looked at the devil who clearly had a displeased expression on his face and said. So it is only natural for them to get worried, as if more capable devils started to emerge more and more their positions will be in danger. The devil stood up from his seat and said, Brad do you know who are you talking to? I am not only a high class devil, but a member of the devil council as well. Do you have any idea what will happen to you? Tetsuya just looked at him with an amused expression and said, Heh, you are a high class devil? To which the devil just glared at Tetsuya and said, Yes, I am and I can clearly say that you will never reach such a position in your life. Tetsuya just chuckled and said, Is that so, then you won't mind to prove that you are a high class, right? The devil then said, Huh, what? You want me to prove that I am a high class? Tetsuya just shrugged his shoulders and said, I mean if you are actually a high class, then you won't mind, right? The devil just got more pissed and said, sure I accept it Saya just showed a gentle smile on his face and clapped his hands together and said, ah, so nice of you. Then you won't mind to take out your wings right? The high class devil must have three pairs of wings as far as I know. 
so you must have them as well right? And just as he said that most of the council men got surprised and looked at the devil who was standing with a panicked expression on their faces, while the devil in question was left completely speeches and was just looking here and there because of nervousness. The devil who was acting arrogantly just a minute ago was now completely silent and was looking around the hall with nervousness. Seeing that Tetsuya smirked and said, what happened? Weren't you going to show your high classiness to all of us? Spread your wings. He then took a step forward and said, or is it that someone cut off your wings earlier? The devil who heard him got pissed, but feeling all the gazes that were at him made him unable to speak. He then turned his head towards a particular member of the council with an expectant gaze, and in a low voice said, Lord Bale, the person who was called, then turned his head and looked at the devil with narrowed eyes, and said in a cold tone, what? Hearing his tone the devil shuddered and said, and then nothing. Lord Bale then turned his head and closed his eyes and thought, HMPH, these councilmen who have been selected just because of their house, are getting too arrogant nowadays, let them suffer. Not having power to support the devil pride then you are just rash. Tetsaya looked at Lord Bale for a while and thought, hmm. Well he is a good bastard. Tetsaya then looked at the devil and said, what are you hesitating for show the world you high classiness? Hearing that all the devil from the council who were in the same position as the devil glared at Tetsaya to which Tetsaya just smiled and said, I know I am handsome, but you don't have to stare at me. Tetsayev then looked back at the devil in question, and after waiting for a while he said, are you feeling shy about showing your wings in front of so many people? To which the devil blinked for a while and then said, I it's not like I am embarrassed, it's just that you are not worthy of seeing my majestic wings. And at that all devils in the room thought at the same time, bullshit. Tetsaya looked at him with a smile and then said, then how about a demonstration of power? Hearing that the devil once again became a bit nervous and said, and how would that confirm that I am a high class? Tetsaya then said, well you just have to fight a fellow high class. That's all. The devil then started thinking, hmm. Fighting a fellow high class huh, considering all the people that are here are the youths, the mass, th council. The only high class that I can think from are from the council, they will not guy against me. Hmm okay. The devil then said, HMPH fine, but do it quick pick up someone who is willing here and now. I don't have a lot of time. Tetsaya then smiled and walked forward and pulled two people. Choose whichever you want to fight, the ones here are the third son of the phoenix clan, Riser Phoenix. The other is the heir of the Bale clan, and the strongest youth Serayard Bale. Seeing the two people the devil council was once again shocked and looked back at the devil who was to fight dot and light to find him completely motionless. How the hell am I supposed to fight these two, I remember that I only won against Riser because he himself backed out. Not to mention, the son of Lord Bale is said to be stronger than many genuine high class devils. On the other hand the two who have been pulled by Tetsaya were confused as well, and seeing their faces Tetsaya said, just cooperate and if you win, I will give you a reward as well. Hearing the word reward both Sarayarg and Riser became spirited, and their aura started leaking out of their body, and a grin appeared on their faces. The reward from Tetsaya and his worth can be of a lot more worth than sucking up to the council. I can ask him for a fight if I beat the shit out of this council man. Both of them then looked at the devil and said, please pick me I am ready to fight you with all my might. Both of them then looked at each other and then glared and said, back down, I will be the one to fight him. HMPH, Riser is not someone who will hear to the likes of you. Riser wants to fight him. So you back down. Riser will take care of him. Both of them then started to get agitated, and soon their auras started to get wilder and wilder. Feeling the auras the most of the council men gulped their saliva, and the said devil was sweating. He then looked at Tetsaya and said, I I I don't mind f fighting either of them, but you were the one who questioned my authority, so you should be the one who should fight me. Tetsaya then grinned internally and thought, heh, he took the bait. While the other who knew of Tetsaya's prowess thought, he is in deep shit now. Tetsaya then innocently said, are you saying that you want to fight a weak and frail human like me? I should tell you the strongest thing that I fought was a Lizard Great Tread. Just as he said that the people who knew him thought, frail and weak my ass. Hearing that the devil got delighted and thought, he is a human, fuck yeah, he is so dead. The devil once again became arrogant and said, heh, so you were the guest that the mass talked about. Acting arrogant in a place where you don't belong. Looks like someone has to punish you. Hearing that Tetsaya just grabbed Miyuki and Asia who were about to beat the shit of the devil and said, oh so you want to punish me huh, then I accept your challenge. The mass then looked at the devil and said, our condolences are with you. The devils were a bit confused by that, but still shrugged it off and said, don't hold back human, this might be the last day of your life. To which Tetsaya was about to say something but Serzages interrupted him and said, oi oi hold back a bit we don't want to have casualties here. Yeah I don't want to see the end of the world. Tetsaya looked at Serzages and said, don't worry I will only swing my sword. Serzages who was still uneasy about that nodded his head and thought, what's the worst can happen if he were to just swing a sword? Just as they were about to make an imaginary field a magic circle appeared besides the mass, and two people appeared out of it. Tetsaya looked at the two people and said. Yo Michael, Gabriel. Good evening. Both the Saris then looked at Tetsaya with a smile, and then returned the greetings. Michael then noticed the tension in the atmosphere, and asked Serzages about the matter, and after hearing it looked at the devil and said, even though we are from different factions, you have my condolences. To which the devil was once again confused but still shrugged it off. 
The mast then made an raiding game field for Tetsuya and the councilmen for the battle, and both of them were standing a hundred meters away from each other. Suddenly a huge screen appeared in the sky, and the devil's face was visible in it. You can still back away if you want. To which Tetsuya just smiled and said, Oh, don't worry, I will hold back enough. The devil then clicked his tongue and said, To show how generous I am even after you disrespected me so much, I will let you make the first move. Tetsuya just smiled and said, Well, I will gratefully take you up on that. He then formed a sword out of magic and raised it up in the sky. The sword had a golden hilt with a blue handle and a shining silver blade. Seeing the sword both Michael and Gabriel felt a lot of holy energy, but still didn't know what that sword was. Golden light started to come out of the ground and gather around the blade, making it shine in a golden light. Tetsuya then smirked and then the speed of the light particles which started to gather around the sword increased, and a huge sword made of light was formed in the sky. Seeing the size of sword and the amount of holy energy that it was emitting the devil's face paled, and his whole body started shivering. You have the guts to insult Sona in front of me. Like hell you are going to let you live. X the light sword started to get bigger, and waves of energy started to come out from the sword, making a strong gust of wind. Tetsuya then used space lock so that no one could interfere with them, and then moved his hand a bit backwards, readying to swing the sword. Caliber. Tetsuya then swung the sword in devil's direction, and suddenly a huge wave fully made of holy energy was fired at the devil completely engulfing his body. Seeing the scene in front of him, Serzichas smacked his head in the table and thought, like hell just a swing of sword can't make things worse. After Tetsuya confirmed that the devil was dead, he teleported back at the venue hall, and noticed that all the devils were looking at him with both awe and fear. Tetsuya then looked towards Diodora and decided to hear what he was thinking. That attack was certainly powerful, but I think that was the power of the sword itself, also it being a holy sword was also a reason for the death of the devil anyways, I have the power of office, I will not have any problems with some small fry human. Hearing that Tetsuya internally smirked suddenly he felt some devils coming towards him and turned his head, and saw the devil council walking towards him with Lord Bale leading them. Lord Bale then stood in front of Tetsuya and looked at him with a stern expression and said, you certainly pause as a powerful weapon. Tetsuya just smiled and said, oh, I am honored to hear your praise. Lord Bale then said, but you should know that killing a member of the council will certainly make you our enemy, even though you are in an alliance with us. Tetsuya just smiled and said, I think you are mistaken, me and my group are not in an alliance we have been neutral from the beginning. Besides was he really a member of the council? The devil who was standing at the back of the group said, what do you mean of Kourc he was a member of the council? The devil then became confused. Hearing him the other members of the council became confused as well, and started to discuss among each other. Hey was he really the member of the council? Who are you talking about? The one that the human brat just killed. Oh that one I don't know? Which family did he belong to? Um I don't know, the commotion started to get louder and louder, and seeing that Tetsuya smirked and thought, mind control is simply awesome. In just an instant they even forgot about the devil. Then one of the devils said, T then too you killed a devil in front of us. Do you think that you can get away with that? Tetsuya just chuckled and said, then going by that logic, you won't mind if I take actions for all the humans that were killed in my territory by the devil's right? I don't mind swinging my sword a few more times a little bit stronger this time. And then the sword appeared in his hand. Seeing the sword which was releasing a holy aura far stronger that they have ever experienced from a holy sword all the devils became tensed and took a step back. Lord Bale looked at Tetsuya with narrowed eyes and said, do you think that you can threaten us in our own territory? Tetsuya looked at him with a deadpan look and said, um hello I am literally doing that. Lord Bale looked around, then noticed the devils around them, and then snorted seeing most of them getting scared. His gaze then fell on Serzich's, and once both of them looked into each other's eyes Serzich's vigorously shook his head in denial. Seeing that Lord Bale's eyes widened in surprise on seeing that even Serzich's didn't want to mess with Tetsuya. Tetsuya then put the sword back and said, relax, I am not going to fight here. I was just angry because he dared to berate Sona in front of me. Hearing that the council's eyes widened while Sona blushed on hearing him. Lord Bale then asked, and why would you be getting upset to that extent for Miss Citri? Going that far for a fry fiancé. Lord Bale who was about to continue stopped and looked towards Tetsuya with an astonished expression and asked, what do you mean by that? Tetsuya just smiled and said, I said that she is my fiancé Seraphol as well. Lord Bale and most of the devils in the room got shocked and looked at the two sisters who were just mentioned. Both of them who were now the center of attention had different expressions. Sona got embarrassed and looked like she just wanted to hide somewhere, while Seraphol was puffing her chest proudly with an expression which said, how about that? She then glanced at Grafia who was standing behind Serzich's and smirked. Grafia who saw Seraphol's expression smirked back remembering the thing that happened back in the Gremory mansion. Seeing the expression Seraphol hot a bit panicked and looked at Grafia with a glare which said, what happened between you two? Grafia as if understanding what Seraphol was asking showed a cheerful smile on her face and then looked away. Seraphol who saw that was about to attack Grafia a bit, stopped herself after realizing where she was and thought, I will deal with that maid later. Some of the devil from the council then looked at Seraphol and Sona and said, I didn't know that both of you will fall so low that you will get engaged with a human. Both of you have really degraded the reputation of us devils. 
Hearing that both Sona and Seraphol glared at Lord Bale who didn't even flinched at that. Tetsuya looked at those devil and then thought, looks like there is going to be quite a news in tomorrow's underworld newspaper. Serzichus who noticed Tetsuya's expression thought, looks like my work is going to increase by a large scale. And slumped his shoulders. Tetsuya then clapped his hands becoming the center of attention once again and said, now now don't scare my fiancés, otherwise there might be something funnier happen here. And took out Excalibur and started charging the magical energy in it making its blade glow. The councilmen who were standing closest to Tetsuya, took a few steps back and then except for the bale the rest of them started to flare out their auras. Tetsuya who noticed a huge amount of aura that was coming out of them, yawned and passed more energy in the sword, and moved his hand upwards, and once again a huge golden beam started forming above its blade, making all the devil including the moss panic, at the amount of holy aura. Tetsuya then said, I don't mind if you want to have a go with me but do you have the guts? Hearing him openly insult the council the devil got shocked and looked towards the council. The council men themselves got angered by the insult that Tetsuya threw at them and glared at him. Some of the members were about to argue to him, but Lord Bale then raised his hand making his fellow councilmen stop and then said, we should not let the matters escalate, we don't want the young devils to die this early. He then turned around and said, I will pretend that such a thing didn't happen here, and I hope that we don't meet again Huma Tetsuya Shiba. Seeing him the other council men also followed him while gritting their teeth. Tetsuya who heard Bale's thoughts muttered, he seriously is an interesting bastard. Just because most of the devils here were pure he left, he didn't even have an intention to back down from the fight. He truly posses the pride of the devils. Tetsuya then put back his sword and said, I am going to the washroom, and then left the hall leaving behind the people completely silent. The devil council who were walking back to were complaining to Lord Bale about Tetsuya. Bale who was silently listening to their complaints, looked back at them and said, then do any of you have the strength to stand against his attack? Hearing the question all of them got silent and lowered their heads. Lord Bale looked at them for a while and said, only speak about this when you have some kind of idea. And started walking again seeing which the others started following soon. All of them then entered the room, but once the last member entered the door got closed on its own, and then disappeared from the devil's sight. Seeing that the devils started panicking but stopped once they heard a voice. Good, now that you all are here let's start the discussion. After Tetsuya left the hall he silently walked towards the washroom. He then fixed his clothes and appearance, and once checking that everything was fine he sighed and turned serious and said, let's start. And made some clones. The clones then looked at each other and nodded their heads, and once everyone did that except for the real one, the rest of them got equipped in the covert mobile SUIT the suit that Tetsuya wore in the movie. Tetsuya looked at the now suited up clones and said, deal with them. And all of them nodded their heads and teleported from the spot. Tetsuya had a small grin on his face, and then left the room leaving the job to his clones and said, let's go back out and must be arriving soon. And then went back to the hall. Meanwhile the rest of his clones scattered all around the underworld taking their positions and doing the job that Tetsuya had given them, while one of them went to the room where the councilmen would be arriving later, and took a seat for himself, and turned around, so that he was not visible. Soon the members started entering the room, and once he confirmed that all of them were in the room, he made a replica of the room in his Kamui dimension, and teleported himself and the other devils in there, without letting them know of it. Good now that you all are here let's start the discussion. Hearing his voice which was different from his original voice the devils flinched and turned around towards the source of the voice. Tetsuya, clone, then turned around and said, now gentlemen and ladies will you please take your seats. We have a lot to discuss. And opened his arms and took out a bunch of papers and a pen, and placed them in front of each seat on the table. Seeing him who was covered in a full body suit and had a mask as well the devils got wary of him, and started releasing their demonic power. Lord Bildum said, who are you and how dare you enter this room without our permission. Tetsuya looked up and said, if you have the time to bicker about this, it would be wise if you cooperate with me. I promise that it will help the devils as well. Hearing him some of the councilmen got angry and fired their demonic energy at him. How dare you order us around. Know your place. But Tetsuya didn't flinch and just raised the pen that was placed on the table, and simply swiped his hands towards the attacks coming towards him and said, full counter. And in an instant the volume and power of the attacks doubled and was reflected back at the devils who seeing that immediately formed some barriers to protect themselves. Tetsuya the simply put the pen back and said, I won't say this again. T-A-K-E-Y-O-U-R seats. And raised a bit of his aura. Feeling the amount of pressure the devils got surprised and then started sweating. All of them glared at the suited Tetsuya for a while, and then turned their heads towards Lord Bale. Lord Bale looked at Tetsuya and said, is it really something that will benefit the devils? Hearing that Tetsuya chuckled and said in a confident tone, believe me after the discussion, you will be thanking me for telling you about all this. Lord Bale looked at Tetsuya silently, and then slowly pulled back a chair and took a seat. Seeing that the other devils were surprised but once Lord Bale glared at them, they took a step back, and then immediately pulled a seat as well and sat down. Tetsuya looked at all of them and said, now then we are already quite delayed, so let's beg, but Lord Bale interrupted him and said, before that tell us who are you? Which faction do you belong to? Tetsuya looked at Lord Bale and said, it is very rude to interrupt someone, and as for your question you can call me Black, and I belong to a small group called Dark Reunion. 
Hearing him all the devils got serious and thought, what is this dark reunion group? I haven't heard of them. Are they someone who haven't yet revealed themselves? Lord Bill then asked, and what would the dark reunion be planning contacting is this way, more importantly helping us devils? Tetsuya then simply said, don't think much. You can say that this matter is personal. He then paused for a bit, and then summoned a huge bundle of papers in front of everyone and said, now we have wasted quite a lot of time. Please go through the documents. Hearing that one of the devil looked at him and said, who are you toward before he was able to finish Tetsuya, used his psychic powers, and threw him towards the wall with a great force making a huge crack on the wall, while a lot of blood dripped from the devil's body. Seeing that the rest of the devils were shocked but Tetsuya as if nothing have happened said, please go through the documents. Hey what is the meanie once again another devil tried to raise his voice, and this time Tetsuya used his psychic powers to make him crash in the ceiling, resulting him in getting hanged in the ceiling by his head. And once again as if nothing have happened Tetsuya said, please go through the documents. All the devils then gulped their saliva and then nodded their heads. They understood that they were not in a position where they can argue with him. The devils then took the papers in their hands and started going through them the expression on their faces kept on changing from anger to fear. While this was happening Tetsuya kept on looking at all of them, while his telepathy was activated, and was hearing their thoughts with a smilly in his face. Tetsuya who was looking at the panicked devils with a face of amusement behind his mask, turned his head and looked towards the person who had the highest authority among the council, Lord Bale. Lord Bale himself looked calm and compassed, but once Tetsuya heard his thoughts he knew how angry he was at the moment. Tetsuya then looked at the other council members and said, so, how do you think our information gathering is? Awesome, right? Hearing his voice the other councilmen except for a few flinched and looked towards Tetsuya. WW what is this nonsense d do you think that anyone will believe this Tetsuya then calmly said, Mr your tone itself is telling that you are believing it. Besides there are your signatures or seals on those documents as well. Hearing that the devils wanted to retort but were not able to find anything to do so. Tetsuya then sighed and then picked up his bundle and said, but seriously I have to say, you devils sure like this kind of stuff. Trafficking seems to be your favorite. Not to mention you are doing the same with the pure devils as well. I see that you don't discriminate others based on their class. Truly magnificent. I can surely say that you all are not racists, and here I was told that the devils look down on the other species, and even the mixed blood among them. Seems like the information was wrong. You people are not like that at all. To sell people from the 72 pillars along with the other low class and mixed blood devils, man that's some serious equality levels that you follow. My respect for you all have increased significantly. And gave out a hearty laugh. Hearing him laughing the members whose deeds were now presented in front of the other councilmen, were fuming with rage, while Lord Bale and the others who worked genuinely for the council, were angry at their fellow councilmen. Tetsuya then flipped a few pages and then said, now coming to the other part of the reports, it seems like you all are performing a lot of experiments on humans that are not necessarily safe here in Underworld, and quite a number of them belongs to our territory as well. What do you have to say about that? Lord Bale too glanced at the culprits and said, I would also like to know about all this and the matter concerning the trafficking. You all surely using your rights as councilmen to the fullest huh? All of them then gave an audible gulp and started sweating after seeing the glaring Bale. The other righteous councilmen nodded as well and looked at their colleagues and waited for their answers. One of the culprit then raised his head and said, Lord Bale, believe us this bastard is just bluffing, there is no way that we the members of the council could do something that would tarnish about name. Yeah, we cannot do something like this. He is lying. Are you seriously going to believe someone whom you have met just once? Believe us Lord Bale we have never betrayed you. Seeing the devil starting to make a motion Tetsuya raised his aura a bit, making all of them shut up, and them with a calm voice said, looks like all this information have made you accumulate quite a lot of stress, and you all are not able to think properly. How about we all watch a video? And then snapped his finger, and immediately a holographic screen appeared in the air, making them a bit confused. Tetsuya then snapped his fingers once again, and the past light started to get dimmer. Tetsuya then said, all of you should know beforehand that this video might be a horrifying experience for a few. And then the video started playing. Just as an image appeared on the screen one of the devils said, hey, that's my territory. Hearing that the other devils looked more carefully and nodded their heads. Tetsuya then chuckled and said. Of course needless to say it is live as well. So you can say it is based on real events. Tetsuya then said, you can start the show all of you. Just as he said that a man who was wearing the same suit as Tetsuya came in front of the camera and said, roger that. And then the screen broke down into smaller screens, and each of them showed at different locations. Seeing that one by one the devils said, hey that is my territory. Yeah mine as well. What's the meaning of this? Mine is there as well. Lord Bale then looked at each of the territories and then said, so these are the territories of all those who are suspected among us. Tetsuya clapped his hands and said, as expected of Lord Bale. You should be knowing what fun things are about to be seen right now right? Hearing that the culprits got alerted but soon realized what was going to happen and began panicking. Tetsuya then took the documents in the hand and said, now if you may please open to the third last page. You may be able to see a list of names. 
All of them then did the same and opened the page, and after reading the names some of the councilmen began panicking, and then Tatsaya said, ah, judging by your reactions, it seems like you all know the actors who are going to work in our small video. Of course they are the ones who have been working day and night for the sake of your acts of equality. All of them then started getting agitated and glare at Tatsaya, while the man himself was sitting in a relaxed position, and had a tub of popcorn in his hand, and was silently watching the movie. Seeing that some of the devils were questioning how he was able to eat with the mask on, but they got the an answer when they saw his hand pass through the mask. All of them then looked at the screen and saw the members of Dark Reunion walking closer and closer to the facilities. Tatsaya then said, oh, the actors are about to enter. Hearing that all of them straightened themselves and just as Tatsaya said a group of people came into various screens. The group of people immediately rushed towards the Dark Reunion members, but were immediately stopped by them by telekinesis, as their bodies were simply held motionless in the air. Now you may check the faces of these devils with the list, and you will know how great was the part that they played. Lord Bale immediately started matching the faces, and once he found most of the members in the list he looked at the suspects and said, I have certainly seen some of them with you all. So is there anything that you still have to say? The devils were immediately ready to make excuses, but Tatsaya stopped them and said, wait wait let's get a closer look at the facilities as well. Some of you might say that it is all just made up and we invaded their homes. The video once again started, and the sight of labs and the places where the goods were kept to be sold later were seen in the video. Seeing them most of them were pale but still looked at it intently. The members of the dark reunion then freed the goods, and seeing that some of them shouted, hey what are you doing? Tatsaya just smiled and didn't say anything, but just pointed his finger towards something. Seeing that the devils followed their gaze in the direction and noticed Lord Bale fuming with rage with some of his power of destruction being released unconsciously because of anger. Lord Bale then said, you lot have sure grown a lot huh, looks like you don't fear what we devils can do. Just because we are at peace doesn't mean that we have forgotten how to fight. You all were with us in the war as well, and you all certainly know that how the numbers of the pure devils have diminished. But you all still have the nerve to sell out the members of the 72 pillars. Feeling the amount of aura that he was releasing the members of the council were having trouble in breathing, while Tatsaya was looking at them with an amused expression and thought, he certainly is a pure blood maniac. Lord Bale then glanced at Tatsaya and said, I really thank you on the behalf of all the devils. We certainly will deal with these scum. But I would like to know what would the Dark Reunion want in return for such information. Besides I would like if before he was able to finish Tatsaya said, to keep my mouth shut? Don't worry I will not tell anyone about this besides I didn't come here to negotiate with you. I said in the beginning that I only want to discuss with you. Now I will just finish my own business and then go back. Hearing that Bale looked at him with suspicion. This deal was too good to be true. He then hesitatingly said, and what would your business be? We will certainly cooperate with you if it is within our power. Tatsaya then said in a cheerful voice, ah don't worry it is not something difficult or painful. If you will cooperate then my job will be much more easier. Bill then asked, and what would this task be, if I may ask? Tatsaya chuckled and said, oh nothing much, just a small massacre. And took out a pair of black guns. Seeing him take out a pair of guns the devils got shocked and stood up from their seats and started the preparations for attack. Tatsaya who saw then kept on sitting calmly and said, now now don't you like that I promise you will not feel any pain. And raised his gun. One of the devil then said, D do you really think that a simple gun can kill devils like us? Even Guna filled with bullets dipped in holy water, will have trouble to kill, before he was able to finish Tatsaya pointed his gun towards him and pulled the trigger, and immediately the devil disappeared with a white light. Seeing that all the devils were speechless and had their mouths open wide. Lord Bale then glared at Tatsaya and said, you, what the hell do you think you are doing? But Tatsaya ignored his question and said, ah. Lord Bale you and the other two who are not involved with any of this shit can leave if you want. You are not a part of this massacre yet. So please don't force yourself to come in my list of people who should be fucked up. Bale who heard him was angry, but he knew that he cannot do anything to him. He gritted his teeth and said, is there no way that we can negotiate, they are still high ranking devils. Tatsaya immediately said, not a chance besides I already told you that I didn't come here for negotiations to begin with. The only thing that I can give you as an option is whether you want to go back before they die, or you will go after they die. So what will be your choice? Bale looked down and after thinking for a while he said, I don't want to see this through, I cannot let someone threaten the name of us devils. I will but Tatsaya ignored him and said, oh enough. And then pointed at the screen floating in the air and said, look there. And all of them then looked at the screen and could see the territories of various councilmen. Then one of the members of the Dark Reunion appeared on the screen holding a rifle in their hands and pointed it towards the labs and places where the devils were kept for sale. All of them then simultaneously pulled the trigger. Immediately a small orbs formed over the establishments and then started getting bigger and bigger till it completely engulfed those establishments, completely destroying them. An. The clones used material burst, seeing that all the devils were speechless and those to the territories belonged to were not able to think rationally and kept staring at the screen for a while and finally one of the innocent devils said, D did you really? Tatsaya nodded and said, yup, that was live but don't worry, I already moved the innocent people out of the area, they were not caught up in the attack. 
Tetsuya then pointed his gun towards the devils and said, let's finish this soon. And killed every devil in the room which was found guilty of doing such tasks. Tetsuya then looked at Bale and said, I will advise you taken people who are faithful or at the very least those who you can control in the council. He then passed by him and said, also make sure to tell a certain red hair that not to mess with me, it would be beneficial for him. I advise you to be wary of him as well. Bale who was continuously glaring at Tetsuya then said, what do you mean by that? Tetsuya then said, these scumbags whom I just killed were seeking the devils in human territories. Who do you think has an ownership of a human territory in recent time? And we both know Sitri cannot do such a thing. You should be knowing this since you have fought with them in the war. Bale then began thinking, it sounds reasonable. That Gremory is someone who can do something like this. I know that he always have a calm and noble aura around him, but I too think that he is faking it. Lord Baildom started charging power of destruction in his hands and said, but before all that I cannot let you go out alive. You killed all the council members in front of me? Tetsuya just looked at him and while tilting his head asked, do you really think that you can kill me? But Bale didn't say anything and kept on glaring at him. Tetsuya just smiled inside the helmet and said, you are so smart and you are also not driven by impulses. This is something that is not seen in devils very often. Tell you what, I will give you an honor. I will let you lightly offend me once. I promise that I will not retaliate that time." The room then started glowing, and Tetsuya waved his hand and said, Farewell Lord Bale, I hope that we meet soon. And just remember to not do anything that will add you to my let's fuck up this person's life list. Soon the room stopped glowing and Tetsuya disappeared from the room. Bale looked at his fellow remaining council members and said in a serious tone, Check whether those places have been actually destroyed or not. Also inform everyone to attack anyone from Dark Reunion as soon as they come in view. Also prepare for a list of individuals whom we should add in the council and walked out of the room. He then formed a magic circle near his ear and said, check the hall where the meeting for the peace treaty is happening right now. Check whether the human who killed a council man in the party earlier is present there or not. Also appoint some spies near the head of the Gremory house. Inform the mass to meet as as soon as possible. And then the magic circle disappeared. Meanwhile Tetsuya who just got informed about all the tasks which were completed, smiled and then ordered one of the clones. Make sure that they are not able to cover up the news at any cost. Spread the info among the locals there. Some people from the media will surely notice the commotion. Also make sure to accidentally drop some evidence. Tetsuya then internally and smiled and said, and make sure to pay a visit to my dear friend Zioticus. He must be feeling quite lonely. Soon he noticed a portal appear near the stage and cut the connection, and then out of the portal few people appeared. Tetsuya looked towards the portal and saw Aden, Thor and Roswes come out of the portal along with Barakiel. Aden who noticed Tetsuya whitened his eyes in surprise and said, I didn't know that you were a part of the alliance as well. Tetsuya just shook his head and said, nah, I am not a part of the alliance. I am just an invited guest here. Aden looked at Tetsuya for a while, and then shrugged his shoulders and said, well, whatever. It is good that we didn't know that you were here as well. It would have been difficult to hold back Freya and Hela from coming here if they knew. Thar and Roswes nodded their heads as well, and Roswes said, that certainly would have been very difficult. Freya-sama always complains that Tetsuya-sama have not contacted her at all. Same for Hela-sama as well. Hearing that Tetsuya and his group looked at them with a wry smile, and Tetsuya said, W well, you should be knowing that a lot have been happening in my territory as of late. So I was very busy. There are still a lot of work left back home. Hearing that the Norse group nodded their head in understanding and Thor said, make sure to complete the work quickly. We will most like come there for the alcohol soon. Ada nodded his head as well and said, yeah, that was really some fine alcohol. Make sure to stock up plenty for us. Tetsuya smiled and said, sure I don't mind, but make sure to not make a scene like the last time, if you know what is good for you. Hearing that Auden burst out laughing and said, haha no promises there. But we'll try our best. Seeing him acting like that Roswes said, Auden sama mind your behavior. What will others think of you? Auden then looked at Roswes with a frown and said, geez, Roswes. Uptight like always, loosen up a bit, will ya? Because of being like this is the reason that you are still single. Ross was immediately crouched down as black fumes started to come out of her body, and then some tears started to form in her eyes. I it's not like I am yearning for a boyfriend. Sniff sniff I don't want to stay single for the rest of my life you wit. Seeing her like that Tetsaya said, she has it hard. Azazel then came near them and said, yo, geezer from the north. Dotan and Thor then turned their heads and looked at him and said, oh fallen brat, you were here as well. Tetsaya sighed and said, great, the perverts are together. And walked away. Dotan then whispered to Azazel and asked, hey brat, found some new those type of bars? Azazel grinned and said, oh, don't worry, I never leave my research midway. And took out a notebook and showed it to Auden. Auden then immediately began flipping the pages and said, ho ho ho, gotta go to these research facilities and expand my horizon of knowledge. You coming with me brat? Azazel smiled and said, of I am going, after all both of them then shook their hands and said at the same time, research is important. Seeing the two perverts acting like that the others around them looked away and tried to act like that they don't know them. Brachiel then murmured, geez, how come a person like this is the leader of fallen angels? No sense of dignity at all. Even I am better than him. 
Because of people like you the name of us fallen angels is tarnished. Azazel who didn't hurt him clearly looked at Barakiel for a while and said, he must be bad mouthing me, well let's ruin his image in front of his daughter. Oh I Barakiel, here is the list of the SM clubs that you asked for and immediately everyone looked at Barakiel with a surprised expression, except for the ones who already knew about his great feats. Azazel then walked towards him with a smile on his face, and took out a paper from his pocket and said, here, don't need to thank me. I am already used to searching these type of stuff for you. Just write a hold back and don't come back tied in ropes. And simply walked back with a smile, and then both him and Odin started laughing, while looking at Barakiel's face, YH had expressions of both anger and embarrassment. Barakiel immediately wanted to lash out at Azazel, but then he felt some piercing gazes at him. He lowly turned his head and saw Akeno and the others looking at him with a cold and disgusted expressions on their faces. He had no problem with him being looked upon like that by O-T-H-E-R-S-A-N. Obviously he would be feeling excited in such a situation. But seeing the same expression on Akeno's face made him extremely sad. He wanted to explain the situation to her, but Akeno simply turned her head and started talking to the devil she was talking to earlier. The other people who were standing on the stage looked at Barakiel with pity, and all of them offered a silent prayer for him. Barakiel then felt a hand on his shoulder and turned around only to find Azazel with his body shaking and looking at him with twitching lips, which immediately made him understand that Azazel was trying his best to hold back from laughing at him. Seeing that Barakiel immediately got pissed and covered his fist with lightning and punched Azazel in the gut. Azazel who saw that blocked the punch with his hand and then suddenly burst out laughing. Seeing that those two were about to fight Serzages and the others immediately rushed toward them to control the matter. Tetsuya who was looking at the scene from the sideline side and said, if I already didn't knew, I wouldn't believe that these people are the leaders of factions. He then picked up the glass of wine he had been drinking from, and turned his head towards his partner and said, you have it hard to deal with someone like that daily, Roswas. Roswas whose face was flushed from drinking alcohol, looked at Tetsuya with a glass in her hand as well and said, with some tears in her eyes, you said it Tetsuya-sama. That old man is the worst. He keeps on working me to the bone and then insults Dadi e for being uptight. The worst of all he keeps on harassing me by saying that I am single. Yueya. Tetsuya who saw the girl beside him crying, looked around to ask one of his teammates to comfort her, but found that they all were already gone and were talking with others. Seeing that Tetsuya sighed and patted Roswas's back and said, don't worry, everything will be fine. Calm down. Calm down. He then took out a handkerchief and wiped her tears, and then gave said, now now calm down and stop crying. If someone who is supposed to be your boyfriend in the future sees you in such a condition, don't you think that it will be bad? Hearing that Ross was immediately looked up with puffed eyes and a flushed face, and looked around and said, huh, my boyfriend is in this place? Tetsuya who saw that looked at her with a sweat drop and thought, well alcohol really makes you honest with yourself. Tetsuya then said, who knows, look around and see if someone of your type is here? Ross was then looked at the boys in the hole for a while, and then with a defeated sigh said, no, I don't like anyone here. They all have that air of stupidness and arrogance around them. Ugh, I will never find a boyfriend. And then placed her head on the table. Tetsuya just smiled wryly and said, well don't fret too much, here let's drink. And motioned the waiter who came near them and placed two new glasses of alcohol on their table, and took back the empty glasses. Tetsuya and Roswas took their glasses and brought them to their mouths. Tetsuya was about to take a sip from his glass, but stopped when he saw Roswas immediately gulping it down and placed the glass back on the table with force and say, more Tetsuya looked at her for a while, and then moved his glass towards her. Roswas who saw the glass immediately took it from him, and again gulped it down in one go. Tetsuya then said, if only you were this open normally, you would not have been single. Ross was immediately looked at Tetsuya with narrowed eyes, but after looking at him for a while broke out crying and said, you it, now even you are saying that. I really am going to be single for the rest of my life. Tetsuya who was surprised by Roswas's suddenly outburst, looked around and saw people looking at them, but when they all noticed Tetsuya's gaze, all of them immediately turned their heads and started to pretend that they didn't notice anything. Tetsuya looked back at the silver-haired girl sitting beside him thought, she have had too much alcohol that her thought process is now completely disturbed. Tetsuya then tried to comfort her, but seeing that normal talking was not working at all he sighed and was about to make her unconscious, but before he was able to he felt someone coming towards him and turned his head. Tetsuya then saw Akeno who was wearing a black kimono and smiled at her and then glanced at Roswas. Akeno looked a bit confused but glanced towards Roswas and understood that Tetsuya was asking for help. Akeno then walked near Roswas and asked the situation from Tetsuya. After listening to everything Akeno chuckled seeing which Tetsuya thought, she is clearly going to make me regret asking her for help. Akeno then looked at Roswas and with a kind smile on her face said, then Roswas-san, why don't we take it this way? If in future you are not able to find a boyfriend for yourself and have convinced yourself that you will not find one later as well, you can join us to be with Tetsuya. He is certainly the best choice for both day and night. And innocently looked towards Tetsuya who on seeing her expression thought, yeah, I am not asking her for help in future. After Akeno was done helping Tetsuya she looked at him with a smile and said, see wasn't I helpful. Tetsuya looked at her for a while, and then with a sigh said, yeah yeah thank you. I will make sure to give you a punishment for your help. 
Akeno then placed her hand on her cheek, and with a blush on her face said, Ara, is that so, then make sure to tie me up properly and tightly. Just tell me when you want to do the kinky stuff. I will gratefully accept my punishment. Tatsaya then looked at her with a dumbfounded expression and said, Get your mind of the gutter, I was literally talking about a punishment. Sai you really are Barakiel's daughter without doubt. Hearing that Akeno frowned for a bit, but then leaned on Tatsaya and whispered in his ears, But you still didn't deny about having that kind of punishment. Aren't you a naughty one as well? And bit his ear. Looks like it will be my duty to punish this naughty boy. Tatsaya then thought, So now sadist is coming out. Let's send it back. Tatsaya then turned his head a bit and said, You really need to know who is going to punish you. And use his telekinesis to pull Akeno's nipples, making her immediately yelp in surprise, which soon turned into a feeling of pleasure. Tatsaya then took another glass of alcohol, and gave one to Roswis as well, and once again both of them started drinking, ignoring Akeno who took a seat beside him, as she her legs got a bit wobbly because of the pleasure. She then looked at Tatsaya who was talking with Roswis who kept on spouting something because of being drunk. She stared at the two of them for a while, and then lowered her head. Tatsaya who noticed that slightly shifted his gaze and thought that she got a bit jealous on seeing him talking to someone else. He was about to console her, but that he heard her mumbling. Teasing me when we are surrounded by all these people and now neglect play. A h h h h h h h h h h I am getting h o t. Tatsaya who heard that stopped his hand which was approaching her while his lips started twitching and he thought, just like her father. Meanwhile at another location of the hall. The leaders who were somehow able to stop the conflict between Azazel and Barakiel were now discussing some matters in between them. Barakiel who was talking with Azazel and Serzages about the trading of Rias and her peerage shifted his gaze to the surroundings and saw some of the people still glancing at him with disgust in their eyes. He clenched his fists and teeth and thought, just because of Azazel now all of them are looking at me with disgust. Not only that some of them are even looking at me with passionate gazes as well. Ugh, control yourself Barakiel. You have to protect your image as a CADRE which have already been destroyed in front of the others. You cannot be as shameless as Azazel. Azazel who was standing beside him, suddenly glanced at Barakiel and thought, he still have the guts to bad mouth me. Serzaches looked at Barakiel and said, so Barakiel San you are don't have any problem in helping my sister's peerage draining, right? Barakiel immediately snapped out of his thoughts and looked at Serzaches with a serious expression and said, no problems from my end, my daughter is in her group as well. So then getting stronger will prevent my daughter from getting into dangers. So in a way you can say it is in my preference as well. After all can spend some time with ache the devils. Yeah it is important to get the know then better, since we are having an alliance. Hearing that suddenly Azazel smirked and said, ho ho so you have a thing for the young ones as well, he then nodded his head sagely and said, the older you are the kinkier you get, how barakiel. Have some shame my friend your daughter will be in the group as well. And pretend to look a bit sad. Barakiel immediately whitened his eyes and looked at Azazel and said, hey what are you spook, but before he can finish a hand grabbed his shoulder with a bit of strength, making him turn his head in confusion. After turning his head the sight that welcomed him was a Serzages with a menacing aura around him and a smile on his face. Barakiel san neither it is my duty nor do I care about you we're unusual preferences, but Serzages then tightened his grip and said in a cold voice, if you try to do something to Riatan or make her sad. I will make sure to make your life so fucked up that you will feel pain even if you have those fetish preferences. With his smile not disappearing even for a second. He then loosened his grip and moved his hands back and said, I hope that you understand Barakiel san Barakiel who was dumbfounded by the sudden even was still surprised and subconsciously nodded his head. Serzaches nodded his head as well and smiled and then walked away to talk with Autumn. Barakiel who then got back to reality then said, what happened just now? Azazel just smiled and then gave a thumbs up and said, good for you my friend, you just got one more person to look down on you and think that you are some kind of shit. Now you can brag about it to your other impals. And then walked away while waving his hand and saying, I am happy for your success. Make sure to treat me later. And then stood beside Ajuka and started to discuss some technological stuff with him. After the leaders were done discussing the matters that they wanted to Serzich's gat heard the attention of others, and once all of them were focusing on him, he have a speech about the factions and the disputes that they have been having for so long, and how they were going to have an alliance with the other factions. He then looked at Odin and said, Lord Odin, if you have no objections, then please, and motioned towards a crystal monument. Odin looked around the hall, and then his gaze fell on Roswis, who was talking and drinking along with Tetsaya and some other devils from Rias and Sona's peerages, and then thought, looks like this won't be as bad as I thought. He then glanced at Azazel and then thought, besides the fallen brat, no much more research institutes than me. I can make full use of that knowledge. And gave a sagely nod. He then looked back at Serzaches, and with a serious expression on his face said, very well, let's sign the alliance. Serzaches then smiled and then led him towards the monument. Odin then moved his hand towards a panel which was in front of the monument, but before he was able to place his hand, a voice was heard by everyone in the hall. I object Odin stopped his hand and with an annoyed sigh said, so you finally decided to mess things up huh? Odin the turn around and suddenly a magic pattern appeared in the middle of the sky, and soon a man wearing white clothes with a pale skin and light blue hair, appeared out of it and floated in the air with his hands crossed. 
The man then said, I am the evil god of trickery, Loki, and I have an objection with your decision old man. Odin then said, Brad if you go back right now, I will forgive you. The man snorted and then said, shut up old shit, I don't want forgiveness from someone who is thinking of making an alliance with such weak factions. Roswiss who was drunk stood up from her spot and said, H hey hick how dar dare you insult Lord Odin like that? While wobbling on her spot. Tetsaya who was sitting beside her pulled her back on the seat and said, you are still drunk. So calm yourself a bit. And looked back at Loki and said, oh, don't mind us, continue. And looked at him while taking a sip from his glass. All the people in the hall looked at him with a dumbfounded expression, and were surprised on seeing him acting so casually in front of a god. The leaders of the factions just sighed and massaged their temples as they looked at Tetsaya, while Seraphol puffed her chest proudly. Loki who saw how Tetsaya was acting got pissed and pointed his finger at him and said, you. Who the hell are you? Tetsaya then pointed his finger at himself and said, me. To which Loki nodded his head. Tetsaya then stood up and said, I am the man of culture, Tetsaya. Nice to meet you. Hearing that the others got surprised once again seeing him acting like that, and Loki narrowed his eyes and said, just a human and still acting like that? And why do I feel like I have heard your name? Tetsaya just shrugged his shoulders and said, who knows? Why not stop wasting your time and start doing what you came for? Loki snorted and said, don't tell me what to do. And then a magic circle appeared beneath him, and three huge wolves appeared from it. Seeing them the devils in the faction leaders got tensed and thought, Fenrir. Loki then pointed towards Tetsaya and said, tear him apart. Seeing that all the leaders face palmed and said at the same time, well he is fucked. And looked at Loki with pity. Tetsaya who was drinking his fine, looked at the dogs coming towards him with an unamused expression in his face. Seeing him like that the dogs growled in anger and jumped on him. Just as they were about to approach him a skeleton appeared around Tatsuya Susanu, and then the skeleton bitch slapped the dogs away, making them plastered in the walls. Tetsaya looked at Loki and said, done yet? Seeing his wolves plastered in the wall Loki got shocked and then looked back at Tetsaya, and after a while as if he realized something said, you, you are the human that the cow's brigade have been talking about recently, right? Tetsaya the smiled and said, oh, I didn't know that I have a fan club in the cow's brigade as well. Seeing him acting as if nothing had happened, Loki's anger kept on rising and unconsciously he activated his divinity, making all the young devils shocked by the power that he was emitting. Loki then started charging his power for a big attack, seeing which Tetsaya said, I am not in the mood for that today, can we do your ass whooping at a later date? Besides this place is too small for such an attack. Except for the ones at the stage the rest of them might even die. Loki smirked and said, do you think that I care for such things, if they die, they die. If they don't die then I will kill them. Tetsaya sighed and then said, you know people die if they are killed. Loki then nodded his head and said, hmm, wise words. Tetsaya looked at him with a dumbfounded expression and then said, so you are going to kill them all. Loki nodded his head and said, yeah, I won't stop even if you beg for mercy, now. This is important for Ragnarok. Tetsaya nodded his head as well and then said, then will you start with that person? And pointed his finger towards a direction. Seeing that all of them were surprised a D turned their heads where Tetsaya was pointing and only saw a wall there. Loki and the others then turned around and and he then said, hey there is nothing in that direct, but before he was able to finish something hit his face, and his body started to glow red. Seeing that all were surprised as they saw a ball hit Loki's face. The top and bottom halves are divided by a horizontal black band. The top half of the ball is purple, with a white letter M on the front, with a pink circle on either side, while the bottom part was colored white with a button just below the M on the black band. Basically, a master ball from Pokemon. The ball then opened up and shot a red light at Loki who got covered in one as well, and was then sucked in the ball which then closed and fell on the ground. The ball then shook thrice before a sound and a flash of light came from the ball. Tetsaya then simply moved his hand forward and pulled back the ball with telekinesis and said, well, I caught a god type. After Tetsaya got the ball in his hand, he simply stored it in his storage and then walked towards the dogs. The wolves who saw him coming towards them took a defensive stance and were growling at him. They had already tried to attack him once, and now they are not going to try that again. Tetsaya stopped on his spot once he was close enough and then eyed the wolves from top to bottom. And after nodding his head he moved his hand forward and pulled the wolves towards him. The wolves tried to resist and sunk their claws in the ground, but Tetsaya simply lifted their bodies so as to stop the feudal resistance and continued to pull them. Once they were close, Tetsaya placed his hand on each of their heads one by one and tried to form a familiar contract with them. The wolves who sensed what was happening widened their eyes in surprise and then tried to look for Loki. Noticing that Tetsaya said, if you are looking for Loki, that guy is already sealed by me though I will use him later, so I would advise if you go with the flow and accept the offer, I am even ready to give a job to you three. And I promise that you all will live a comfortable life, though you may have to fight from time to time, I guess it would still be a better life than the one you have been spending with Loki. The wolves who heard him were tempted but were still hesitating to accept, and seeing that Tetsaya grinned and said, oh, if in the case you were not to accept, you would either be sealed or killed by the Norse faction, because you would be handed back to them, as technically you all are still their responsibilities. Hearing that the wolves immediately allowed to form the contract with him mana crest immediately formed on top of their heads. 
Tetsuya then smiled and used his magic to turn the three of them into small pups and said, Now then welcome to the group. To which the three pups gave a delighted bark. Tetsuya then turned his head towards Arden and said, You don't mind right? Arden who noticed his gaze opened his mouth and was about to say something, but before he could even utter a word Tetsuya said, You know I was actually attacked by a god, who knows how much damage could he have done to me, if I wasn't lucky. Who should I blame for his actions? Should I try to take actions against this? Hearing that all the people who knew Tetsuya immediately thought, like hell were you lucky it was that goddamn bitch of a god that was lucky that he didn't suffer and was simply sealed some people among them thought, he didn't even suffered the three-way war how dare you say that you were lucky. While this was happening a certain black haired and devil whose most of the body was artificial, Diodora Astrath, thought, heh, and that bitch was saying that he was a god, and refused to take Office's power. Now see he fell in demise and that too had the hand of a human. Useless. Anu saw Tetsuya's smile, showed a wry smile as well and then said, well, we would have sealed him away anyway, and like you said we would have did the same things that you mentioned with those pups behind you, but they are my grandson and great grandsons in a way, so I would be pleased if you take good care of them. And how about we discuss the matter about sealing after this event is over. Anand then thought, honestly, it is going to get me into a lot of trouble back at home, but it would still be better than to be in a conflict with him. Plus it's not like they can oppose me, I can get Thor, Hela and Freya to stand up for H as well. So not much of a problem there. Besides the sooner we get this over with, the sooner me and the fallen brat can do our research. He then looked towards Azazel who immediately noticed his gaze and nodded his head and said, Serzichus, let's continue with the treaty, and it is not like we can do anything about it anyway, the Norse faction itself has said that they have not a problem with it, and none of our people are injured as well. Besides he then slowly whispered, do you want to get on the brat's bad side? Hearing that Serzichus gulped his saliva and nodded his head and said, Odin don't know if you may, let's continue this treaty for the greater good of our factions. Odin nodded as well and said, yeah for the greater good. And placed his hand on the panel, after which the audience started clapping their hands. After the party was over all the leaders were assembled in the hall, and all of them were looking at Tetsuya, who was looking at all of them with a calm expression in his face. Thar was about to say something, but Tetsuya raised his hand to stop him and took out the ball from his storage said, come out, and then the ball opened and a white light came out of it, and Loki materialized beside him. Loki who came out looked at his surroundings and saw himself surrounded by all the leaders and immediately got into battle mode and used his magic. Seeing that everyone got surprised and were ready to attack back, but nothing happened making all of them except for Tetsuya, look at Loki in confusion. What is happening? Why can't I use my magic? Loki said and then looked at the Tetsuya who was sitting beside him and said, human. What did you do to me? Tetsuya just smiled and said, you can't use your powers without my permission also, in appreciation of our friendship, I just gave a little gift to you. See your wrist and immediately everyone looked at Loki's wrist, which had a small golden chain wrapped around it like a bracelet. Tetsuya then said, that gift of mine can suppress divinity. Do you like it? No need to thank me. Hearing that the two gods in the room other than Loki whitened their eyes and looked at the chain with shock. Loki who heard Tetsuya's explanation tried to break the bracelet, but was unable to even after using all his strength. Seeing that Tetsuya said, Fu Fu Fu, you won't be able to break it that easily, our power of friendship is very strong. Now go and rest for a while. And then moved the ball in his direction and a red light fired towards Loki, and in the next instant Loki got sucked back into the ball. Tetsuya looked at Odin and Thor and then said, As you saw that he is still alive and kicking and is totally under my control, so any more problems on your side? Thor then rose his hand and said, What are you going to do with him? Tetsuya then started thinking and said, I haven't really thought about it. Well most probably he will be doing odd jobs, like cleaning the restaurant, or working as a waiter. He can also take care of the pups, and if he works well, who knows I can even make him my take care of the my new hotel that is still under construction. Or if he wants I can even make him work in a host club if he prefers that. Well on any note, he will not run around wild causing ruckus, so you can rest assured. Thar nodded his head and said, thank you a lot. I am glad that you are taking responsibility for his actions, however he is, he is still my brother, and I care for him, even though he have tried to kill me on multiple occasions, or have set an ambush against me. Or have made me sleep with a girl who have AIDS or have turned a girl himself to seduce me and kill me while I was not looking. Sai I am surprised myself how can he come up with that sort of thing. Tetsuya just showed a wry smile and said, well look on the bright side, your brother has a good strategizing brain. Azazel then said, well if we have finished talking about Thor's love life, let's get this over with. A lot have happened today and I want to rest up a bit. So shall we over the discussion? All of them looked at each other, and then all of them shrugged their shoulders and said at the same time, no problems. And then stood up from their chairs. Azazel then stretched his body and said, well I am going to relieve some of my stress, you coming old man. Odin then careezed his beard and said, is that even a question to ask? Of course I am coming. I will show you whose spear will dominate. Azazel grinned and said, heh, we will see old man. And the two teleported away. Tetsuya then gave his farewells to the other leaders who teleported away after that, and then sighed. Hmm, let's go back the others must be waiting for me or you three let's go. While he called the puppies. Soon the three puppies came back, but on seeing them Tetsuya's eyes twitched. 
The three puppies who had the powers to kill gods came in the room while dragging the silver-haired bodyguard of Autumn, who was completely wasted because of alcohol. After the youth devil meeting ended successfully Tetsaya and the three pups along with another guest came back to the Gremory mansion. Tetsaya who was simply carrying Roswas over his shoulder, went to the only room that he have been using and saw Malika's already sleeping in his bead. Tetsaya gave a yawn as well and then used his magic and placed another bed beside the one already present in the room and laid Roswas on it. He then used his magic to change her clothes to a comfortable white nitro. He looked at the puppies and made a small comfy bed for them and said, I don't think that I need to remind you, but don't dirty the room and keep watch, if you notice someone with hostile motives enter the room, then deal with them, but don't kill them, I would talk to them personally. The pups who heard Tetsaya's instructions gave a bark and approval to which Tetsaya smiled and then bent down to pat their heads. He had to admit that even if they are god slayers, currently they look very cute and were very fluffy. He patted them for a while while having a smile on his face on seeing the puppies having a pleasant expression on their faces. He then let go of them reluctantly, and then changed his clothes to a half-shirt and boxers, and slept beside Melikas. The next morning in a room in the Gremory mansion, a silver-haired lady who was sleeping, started to wake up while having a frown on her face. The lady then groggily sat up while holding her head with her hands and muttered, I am feeling that my head is about to burst. She then rubbed her eyes for a while, and once she was done she looked around her surroundings and said, Where am I? She then checked her body and was surprised on noticing the beautiful night robe that she was wearing and thought, How come I am wearing something like this? It looks very expensive, there is no way that I will buy something like this. She then began inspecting the room more clearly, and then thought, this room looks exquisite as well, seriously where am I? Her gaze then fell on the bed beside her, and noticed a man and a child sleeping on it with the boy on top of the man. Seeing the man the lady whitened her eyes and said, huh, Tetsaya Sama. Tetsaya who heard someone calling him slowly opened his eyes with a frown on his face, and then started rubbing them. His gaze then fell on the lady who was calling him and said, ah, Roswas you are awake, do you have a headache or something? and then sat up slowly in order to not wake Milikas up and put him beside him on the bed. Roswas looked at him and then waved her hands and said, and and no I am fine just a small headache that's all, and more importantly, where are we, and why am I wearing something like this? And who changed my clothes? Tetsaya looked at the silver-haired Valkyrie being uneasy because of the sudden change in her surroundings, and with a neutral expression on his face said, we are in Underworld, last night the contract was signed, and now here we are spending our first night together. You know you were crazy last night. I couldn't believe a calm and collected woman like you could act like that. Seriously I am totally surprised. You kept on going for so long that I am completely speechless. Hearing that Roswas took some time to arrange the information that she just got, and immediately her face turned red and she said, WW what do you mean? Tetsaya crossed his arms and nodded his head and said, yeah, we kept on doing that, and you were like, more more, you seriously were something. Roswas's eyes started to get cloudy as fumes started to come out of her head and she said, W wait wasn't this too soon to de-do that? And in the first place why did you accepted the proposal so easily? Tetsaya calmly looked at her and then said, like I said, I was tricked into it by you, and not only that in order to seal the deal you made me do it with you as well. Honestly, it is me who should be complaining here as I was the one who was taken advantage of. Roswis didn't know what to do now. If what Tetsaya was saying was true she was the one who was at fault here. She took advantage of someone. And that was totally disgraceful for her as a Valkyrie. But despite it being disgraceful, she cannot say that she don't remember about it and just get away with it. She was a Valkyrie and just as righteous as she is she will take responsibility for her actions. She stood up from her head and walked towards Tetsaya and took his hands in hers and said, Don't worry Tetsaya sama no, husband I promise that I will take responsibility for my actions. I am ready to take full responsibility for you, and is even ready to give birth to healthy child and take care of it. You don't have to be troubled, I am a responsible woman, and will not give you any chance to complain. She then looked at him with a small smile, and then thought, ah, so the time for me to have a lover has come, everyone who have been humiliating me for being single for all this time, I have just one thing that I want to say to you all dot 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 in your face assholes. Always saying that I will never have a lover because I am uptight and strict fuck off. Ah I can now die peacefully. And just as she thought that she felt a lot of killing intent and her body became completely stiff. She somehow turned her head and noticed a lot of attacks coming towards her, but was not able to do anything because of the killing intent aimed at her. Tetsaya who noticed the attacks coming simply looked towards them, and all of them immediately disappeared. Tetsaya then noticed his group standing there with most of them releasing a black aura, while Kurumi was looking at them with an amused smile on her face and said, oh, this is going to be fun. Tetsaya who looked at them for a while and then said, what are you all doing? Why so enthusiastic in the morning? Miyuki looked at Tetsaya with a smile and was about to say something, but Ross was suddenly said, I knew it, the world cannot simply sit and watch my happiness, if this is the only way then be it, I am not going to give up easily. Tetsaya looked at Roswas and was about to ask her about what she was talking about, but Miyuki then said, Bitch, looks like you really want to die early, you have the guts to seduce Ani Sama, and to even call her husband, I will make sure that you suffer greatly for your crime. Hamari took a step forward as well and said, I hate to agree, but this time I agree with Miyuki. 
I will burn your whole body. And a fireball appeared in her hands. Asia looked at her with an innocent smile and then said, and I will punch the hell out of you with my heel punch, so that we can kill you over and over again. I will make you spill out your guts, and then will door you to swallow then back to your body, and repeat the process again, oh. Do T worry you will not die till I am satisfied. Tatsaya and everyone looked at Asia, who smiling innocently and thought at the same time, that's totally disturbing how can you say gat with such an innocent expression on your face Tatsaya, then clapped his hands and said, um can you explain what is going in here. And Kurumi I am sure that this is a misunderstanding, and you know about it as well so clear it right now. Kurumi chuckled and walked forward earning a confused look from the others, and then sat in Tatsaya's lap and looked at Roswis and said, now, Rossan, why did you call my Tatsaya, husband? Roswis who saw Kurumi sitting on Tatsaya's lap narrowed her eyes said, isn't it only natural to call someone whom you have copulated the with as husband? To which Tatsaya looked at her and said, wait a minute, who said that I had sex with you? The whole room fell in silence, and the only sound which was heard was coming from Kurumi who was trying hard to not break out laughing. Roswis then said, WW what are you saying, didn't you say that the contract was signed and we spent the first night? Tatsaya nodded and said, yeah, the contact for the alliance was signed yesterday, and we spent the first night as members of the alliance. All of them were then speechless and Kurumi broke out laughing. Hearing her laugh Roswis came out of her stupor and said, and what about me forcing you to do it? And they getting crazy? And keep on going for very long? Tatsaya nodded and said, yeah. Last night we started drinking, you went crazy after drinking, and then forced me to drink with you as well, and you also kept on drinking for a long time, and when I asked you to stop you refused and kept on saying more, more. Tatsaya then looked at each of them, and noticed the other girls walk towards Roswas, and then consoling her. Kurumi who was sitting on Tatsaya's lala leaned on him and asked, you were doing it on purpose, weren't you? Tatsaya hugged Kurumi back and said, as expected, you already know? Tatsaya then said, well if she is already this shocked, she might not be that much surprised by the news that I am going to tell her next. Kurumi thought for a while and then said, ah. About her being left behind by Aden? And immediately Ross was moved from her spot and grabbed Kurumi's shoulders and said, wait 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 wait, you are telling me that Lord Aden left me behind? Kurumi looked at her for a while and then simply nodded her head. Seeing that Ross was stood motionless for a while and then took a deep breath and said, I have had enough of this shit, I quit working for him. All of them then thought, aren't you already fired? Well Tatsaya thought, well she looks fine. After the whole misunderstanding was solved and Roswas was able to get over the shame. Tatsaya gave her some clothes to wear as the clothes that she had when she came to the underworld were not very comfortable to wear casually. Both of them then changed their clothes of course in different rooms and then left the room after Tatsaya woke Mullikas up. All of them then head towards the dining hall and all of them took a seat. All of them were silently eating their food till Asami said, President, you are looking very troubled. Did something happen? All of them looked towards Asami and then turned their heads towards Rias. Rias who noticed their gazes got a bit nervous and looked towards her mother. Then Alana who noticed her daughter's gaze thought for a while and then nodded her head, to which Rias nodded her head as well. Rias took a deep breath and said, last night, while we were at the meet my father was attacked by someone at the place where he was staying. Though he don't have any physical injuries, sigh his mental condition is a bit unstable. Hearing that all of them got surprised, or Atlas pretended to act surprised. Tatsaya then asked, is he still sane, or Rias then waved her hands and said, no no no, he is not home completely mad. He can still think properly, but still Tatsaya looked a bit sad and said, sorry about that. Kurumi and his team looked at him, and then all of them gave a telepathic message to him at the same time, are you really sorry? Tatsaya mentally sighed and then telepathically said to them, yeah, I am sorry that he is still sane. I wanted him to go completely mad, but it looks like he can still be normal after all that mental torture. I knew I should have used Tsukiyomi. Three-way war version. Hearing him all of them looked at him with a deadpan look, and then Kurumi telepathically said, but if he somehow was able to overcome even that, and would have told others about that, then there was a chance that they might know that you were the Dark Reunion. Since only you have the guts to use something like that and act like nothing is going wrong. Tatsaya nodded his head as well and said, I knew it, that's why I didn't us that, and I have promised Serzages that I will not kill him this time, so let's just think that he is just lucky enough to survive. All of them just nodded their heads and decided to stop thinking about the topic. Tatsaya who decided to change the topic looked at the others and asked, by the way, are you guys going to start training for your rating games today? Hearing that all of them got a bit excited, and Rias started to tell the others that she have already asked someone to guide them in the training. While Rias was explaining the others Tatsaya looked at Ross was sitting beside him and asked, and what have you decided to do? Take a vacation for a while? Ross was looked towards Tatsaya with a surprised expression, and then thought for a while and said, well, since I am now free from all my work, I think that a short vacation might be nice. After that I will search for a new job I guess. Tatsaya nodded his head and said, well good for you, and if you are unable to find a job then ask me, I might be able to help you get one. Ross was just smiled and nodded her head after hearing Tatsaya's proposal. Rias then looked at Tatsaya and his group and asked, so what are you guys planning to do? All of them then looked at Tatsaya's group and noticed that the girls other than Kurumi and Ingvald got stiff. 
Tetsuya looked towards Ria's and said, Oh, we will just make some visits here in Underworld, after which there is going to be the training session. They have to break through their current level after all. Hearing that the girls showed a displeased expression while Ingvald and Karumi just sighed and both of them thought, I am so glad that I break through the Satan level earlier, I don't have to got through much hell, this time both of them then looked at each other and gave an appreciative nod to each other. Ingvald and Karumi then looked at their teammates and looked at them with a pity mockery, as they will be having a hard time as all of them at the high ultimate class, and will require a lot of effort to go beyond that since breakthrough to the next STAGEEG from high mid class to low high class is completely different compared to the breakthrough to the next LEVELEG from low high class to mid high class. The others who noticed their gazes glared back at them to which both of them smiled and said at the same time, let's work hard, guys. Hearing that the others snorted and said, we will see both of you later. Don't get ahead you too. Seeing the interaction between the group the other people in the room were a bit confused, and Akeno asked, why are you all freaking out so much, I mean we will be training as well, right? Hearing that all the girls in Tetsuya's group glared at her making her flinch a bit, and Himari said, don't speak if you don't know what kind of hell we are going to go through, don't act so tough, since you were able to somehow manage to stay alive after the training that you went through before the game with Phoenix. Your whole training was even easier than the warm-up that we will be having in our training camp. Seeing that the Gremory group except for Zenovia, who don't know about the training that they went through before the game with Phoenix, were a bit shocked and Akeno said, now now, don't exaggerate so much. No, it is not exaggeration. All of them turned towards the one who said that and saw Asami looking at them seriously and said, I know that it is not an exaggeration, I have seen with my own eyes what kind of training they go through. So I know what will happen if he is going to dedicate himself and training them. She looked at the girls and said, just try to stay alive. The girls from Tetsuya's group who saw their junior from the Gremory team encouraging them, felt a bit moved and smiled and nodded their heads. Tetsuya who saw the interaction between them nodded his head and said, hmm hmm, fine, Asami, you are going to be in the camp as well. Asami who heard Tetsuya felt like her whole world shattered and looked at the others with pleading eyes. She looked at Tetsuya and said, now now, I don't want to trouble you all, while you are training them. Tetsuya who heard that just smiled at her and said, pack your things. Asami who heard that now knew that all the hope for her was gone, and simply lowered her in disappointment. The girls from the group looked at Asami and said at the same time, just try to stay alive. To which Asami just twitched her lips. After all of them were prepared for their training, they went to a room and saw Azazel sitting in the room. Azazel who saw Tetsuya nodded his head to which Tetsuya nodded his head as well and said, so, you brought the things that I asked for? Azazel nodded and then said, yeah, I have them with me, just bring the boy here, and I will install them in him. Tetsuya nodded and then took a seat. Azazel then started to explain the training to the members of the Gremory group, and while he was doing that Asami was looking at them with jealousy. Once they were done Tetsuya said, Okaneko will be coming with me, I have already contacted someone who will be able to help her with her senjutsu. Kaneko looked at Tetsuya to which Tetsuya just winked at her, and she understood who will be the one training her, and readily agreed with him. Once they were all done Tetsuya stood up and gave a piece of paper to Ria's making her a bit confused. Seeing which Tetsuya said, there are some physical training methods written in it. It would be great if you could become a bit more more durable. Focus more on it as you should know that you are not the type who depends on strategy. Ria's looked at Tetsuya with an offended look, but still nodded her head in approval. She knew that what Tetsuya was saying was true, but accepting it was difficult. But still she was not going to ignore what Tetsuya said, because she had already done so in the previous training session, and the results were not that good. Tetsuya then talked to the others for a while, before all of them departed for their training. Tetsuya then teleported to the Citri house and appeared in the room where Sona was talking with her peerage. All of them were shocked on seeing that someone appeared in the room and took a battle stance, but relaxed once they saw that Tetsuya was the one who came. Tetsuya then looked at the group and noticed Saji and grabbed his shoulder and looked towards Sona and said, I will be taking Saji with me, don't bother looking for him as he is going to be working under me. Bye. Love you and teleported back. All of them blinked their eyes in surprise and Sona looked at her peerage and asked, did he take my peerage member without my permission once again? All of them looked at each other and just shrugged their shoulders. Sona narrowed her eyes and said, he is going to get it from me once he returns back. Just hope that he doesn't get him injured. Tsubaki shifted her glasses and said, yeah, look like I have to do something about it. She then looked at Sona and said, don't worry Sona, I will make sure that he is punished properly for this. Just leave all this to me. Sona looked towards Tsubaki for a while and then said, you are planning on doing it with him alone. Right? Like hell I am going to give you a chance. To which Tsubaki just clicked her tongue and looked away. Tetsuya who took Saji along with him, teleported back to Gremory Mansion. Saji who was still confused about what happened looked in his surroundings and then looked towards Tetsuya, and Nikki where are we? Tets Tetsuya then entered the room where everyone was present earlier and said, I brought him, now do your work Azazel. Saji entered behind Tetsuya and looked at the people still present inside the room. Azazel looked towards the blonde following Tetsuya and said, oh, already done, fine Vritra boy come here. Saji looked towards Azazel and then looked at Tetsuya who nodded his head to which Saji nodded in response as well and got closer to Azazel. 
Azazel then took out a device from his pocket and checked Saji's body with it and said, Okay, no problem with you physically, now bring out your sacred gear. Saji just followed his instruction and took out the absorption line which appeared on his hand. Azazel looked at the sacred gear and nodded his head with a smile and said, Good, now don't move I will put it in you, it might hurt in the beginning, but trust me you will feel a lot better once it is done. Hearing that all of them looked at Azazel with a weird look on their faces, and Saji immediately jumped away from him and pointed his sacred gear at him and said, Hold it. What the hell are you trying to do to me, you creep? Azazel looked at him with a confused expression on his face and said, What, don't tell me that Tatsaya didn't tell you, he was the one who asked me to do it. He said that it will be beneficial for you. Saji looked at Tatsaya with a pleading expression on his face and said, Aniki I know that you helped me want to lose my virginity, and I am glad that you are trying to help me as well, but no way in hell, I am going to do something like this. Tatsaya just sighed and punched Azazel in the gut and said, Don't say things in a weird way, pervert. He then looked at Saji and said, What he means is that I told him to put the remaining sacred gears of the Vritra series in you, so that you can become more powerful. Tatsaya then thought, After all I want someone who can fight at Asami's level with her Saji who heard him came to realization, Aniki, to think that you will do so much for me, I am so happy to hear that, I heard this from President that those who have a dragon type sacred gear, tend to attract members of the opposite sex, so you are trying to help me get powerful and get late at the same time. As expected of Aniki. Saji said while looking at Tatsaya with shining eyes. Tatsaya who heard Saji's reasoning was left speechless as the case was the same for the rest of the people in the room, except for Azazel, who was showing a thumbs up to Saji, and thought, Beke's of that same reason I decided to make a dragon type sacred gear for myself. Looks like Tatsaya has done deep research in these types of things as well, whom it's decided as his senpai I will give him my greatest masterpiece, the road of becoming a true man of culture. I haven't even published that book yet, feel grateful Tatsaya Shaunan. Make sure to reach the zenith for all the fellow men of culture as well. And looked at Tatsaya with a proud expression on his face. Tatsaya who heard everything with his telepathy, looked at Azazel with a dumbfounded look on his face and thought, I really want to know how the hell, a man like him is the leader of a faction. Tatsaya looked at Saji and said, Don't worry you are my friend right dot even. Though I just wanted to use you as a partner for Asami, might as well train you. You will be a good guard for Sona and Tsubaki. Saji tears up a bit and said, Hey Aniki, I am so glad to have followed you. Don't worry Aniki I won't disappoint you, I will be strong enough so that I don't cause you any shame as your right hand man. Tatsaya nodded and patted on his shoulder and said, good, you have determination. Fine, I have decided that I will train you as well. Saji looked at Tatsaya with determination and nodded his head and thought, Aniki himself is going to train me, I can't let him down, he is expecting great things from me. Haya, fine I will give my 100 number 200%. While Saji was thinking this he felt a hand on his shoulder and turned his head to see Asami looking at him, Saji, as your senpai in training, I want to give you an advice, while you are training never lose your hope to live if you want to survive. And walked away leaving a completely stunned Saji. Saji who was confused by Asami's threat, looked towards her and said, wait, what do you mean Aya? But before he was able to finish it Saya took three violet blowing orbs and shoved them inside Saji's chest, making him scream in pain, though there was no physical wound on his body. Tatsaya looked at Saji and said, you can do it Saji, don't lose hope. Endure this much, just think how many girls will come at you once you have four dragon type sacred gears. Hearing that Saji's eyes widened and he said, ha, non pain no gain right. Fine then come at me with the worst you can sacred gear, I will not lose to you. For my bed to be filled with girls, and for Aniki who is placing so much hope in me, I won't back down. And held his body from falling down with a completely new determination in him. All the people in the room were complete shocked to see the degree of determination in him, and nodded their heads in appreciation, while Azazel looked at Saji and said, Ah, he is just like me when I first fell from the heaven, ahh those were the days. All the girls around me couldn't stop but wet themselves once they had a taste of me, ahh happy memories. But just as he said that Tatsaya used his telekinesis and threw him out of the window and said, I seriously doubt him as the governor of the fallen angels. After Tatsaya was done merging the sacred gears with Saji's soul, he let him rest for a while, as he was totally breathless after that and fell down on the floor. He laid him down on the sofa and told the others to take their luggage with them, as they were going to depart soon. Azazel then left the children alone as he still had to work, unfortunately him being the governor general of the fallen angels was still a fact, and actually work comes with his position. After an hour all of them were present in the living the room with their luggage as well, and in addition to the children Raswas, Grafia, Benalana and Melikas were accompanying them as well. Raswas looked at the group hesitantly and asked, Is it really fine for me to tag along with you all? Tatsaya looked at her and said, Believe me I am someone who doesn't like his HQ to be filled with strangers, but the fact that we will literally be leaving you behind here because even Grafia. Venelana and Milikas are tagging along then the only people left behind will be the servants of the Gremory Mansion, whom you do not know at all, so it is your choice if you want to follow us or not, but make sure if you are coming, then you are not going to speak even a word about my place to anyone. Raswas thought about it for a while and then said, fine, I won't tell a single soul about it, the fact that someone who I just met is treating me better than my own boss who left me behind is way too touching for me. 
All of them looked at her with pity in their eyes, making her tear up a bit. Seeing that some the girls went to her and consoled her to make her stop crying. Saji came closer to Tatsaya and whispered, I am starting to doubt whether she is truly an adult or not. Tatsaya sighed and said, her boss had harassed her a bit too much. It is only natural for her. Tatsaya then clapped his hands and said, anyway, let's keep that aside and go. Out final member has arrived. Just as Tatsaya said that a black cat jumped from the window into Tatsaya's arm who caught the cat and immediately it transformed into Kuroka. Kuroka hugged Tatsaya and said, Tatsaya nai a long time no see nai. Tatsaya just patted her head and said, yeah. Happy to see you Kuroka. Kuroka nodded and started snuggling to him, but was soon stopped by Kaneko who grabbed her sister's tail and pulled it making her groan in uneasiness. Kaneko looked at her sister coldly and said, when he saw stop disturbing Tatsaya senpai. Kuroka looked at her sister who was looking coldly at her and hugged Tatsaya tightly and said, look Tatsaya nai, Shirin is bullying me nai. Which only made Kaneko more pissed and she immediately grabbed Kuroka's legs and pulled him out of Tatsaya's embrace. Tatsaya then gave a fake cough and said, anyway let's get going. And then snapped his fingers and immediately a magic circle appeared below all of them and immediately all of them teleported from the living room. Just as Tatsaya and the others disappeared from the Gremory mansion, a magic circle appeared in Tatsaya's dimension and all of them appeared from it. The people who just appeared there along with the three dogs looked around their surroundings and were impressed with the location they were at. Tatsaya's group looked around and then said, you really have changed the whole thing here huh? Hearing that every one of them looked towards Tatsaya and all got completely speechless. Saji pointed at Tatsaya and said, hey Aniki. How did you get older so suddenly? Tatsaya looked at all of them with a calm expression on his face and said, don't make too much fuss, it's just that in this dimension you will not be able to hide your true appearance from others, till I do it for the person, of course, see you all have turned back to your original appearances as well. Hearing that all of them looked at each other and saw all the young members of Tatsaya's group to be in their grown-up appearance who looked to be around their early 20s. Seeing them the others were completely shocked and had their mouth open wide. The Sami pointed her finger at the girls who just had a wry smile on their faces and said, you guys were older than me. The girls just gave a dry laugh and shook their heads and said, this is the effect of training so long in the time chamber, our bodies did grow in that time. You have only trained there for a bit that's why you have not grown like us. Hearing that Ross was got interested in the time chamber and asked, hey, by time chamber do you mean a room with time dilation spell, so as to give a proper effect to the area according to your liking? Hearing the question none of them answered and just looked at her with a small smile on their faces. Seeing that smile Roswas was a bit confused, and then Tatsaya placed a hand on his shoulder, making her turn her face towards him, and said immediately blushing seeing his face close to hers as currently Tatsaya was close to her age, and was looking much more mature compared to his previous look, which was also accompanied with a small smile on his face. Sorry Roswas, but that is our trade secret, so you should be able to understand what I mean to say, right? Roswas who was still flustered by being so close to Tatsaya, heard his answer and nodded her head and said, why why yes I you understand sorry about that. Tatsaya's smile just widened a bit and he said, thank you for understanding. And Roswas's blush immediately deepened. The other girls who saw this were a bit jealous of Roswas's position, as even from the location they were standing Tatsaya looked charming, and they could without a doubt imagine Roswas currently being in heaven. While Mullikas was looking at Saji with a weird expression on his face as in front of him the high schooler had taken out a notebook out of nowhere and was writing all the info he could get while learning under Tatsaya about picking up girls. Tatsaya then noticed someone coming towards them and turned around and said, so they noticed us, huh? And immediately a magic circle appeared and two girls, one with red and the other with light blue hair, appeared from it. Both the girls were surprised as well on seeing Tatsaya in his mature form and were in daze for a while, but soon got back to their senses and asked about what happened to him. After all explanation was done Tatsaya looked at his group and said, let's get going we have already wasted a lot of time here. And was about to teleport, but stopped once Milikas asked about looking around the place. Seeing the excited expression on the young Grimory's face, Tatsaya sighed and nodded his head looked towards his three dogs and gave them a telepathic message. The dogs nodded their heads and a magic circle appeared over them and immediately changed to their actual form, but this time they showed no hostility at all. All of them then got on top of the wolves and immediately after all were settled, the wolves started running, with Tatsaya's wolf being in the front with Milikas and Saji sitting along with them. Tatsaya then used his magic to allow the wolves to be able to float and immediately the wolves started running in the sky. Milikas who was sitting on front of Tatsaya was looking at his surroundings with an excited expression on his face and kept on asking questions from Tatsaya. Tatsaya who was the creator of the dimension explained about each and every facility that he had installed here and was feeling a bit proud of his creation and was happy as well. The then guided the wolves to the center and then slowly the wolves started descending. Once all of them got on the ground the wolves turned back to their small form and gave a bark. Tatsaya then bent down and ruffled the pups for a bit appreciating their hard work and then led the others in the huge mansion in front of him. After all were done settling down Tatsaya gathered every trainee and said, fine then, all of you ready or not, I don't care get ready for some hellish hard work. Hearing that all of them tensed up a bit, except for Saji who was full with determination. 
Tetsuya looked at all of them from head to toe and nodded his head and said, Go and get your swimsuits, we are going to the beach. All the girls who were waiting for some bone-breaking workout were left completely speechless by Tetsuya's words and took some time to register what he just said. Tetsuya then looked at the people who he was not going to train and said, Of you guys want to go there as well, you all are most welcome to and Kuroka I don't think that I need to tell you why you have been called here for, right? Kuroka just nodded her head and pulled Kaneko in her embrace and said, Yup, I have always wanted to train Shira Nai and have some sister time with her Nai. She then looked at Kaneko with a smile, seeing which Kaneko got a bit embarrassed by the sudden affection from her sister and looked down. Though she felt very happy from inside and her ears and tails appeared. Kuroka then looked towards Tetsuya and said, and of course to make kitties with Tetsuya and YAA, and immediately the happy feeling inside started to turn dark, and she looked towards her sister with a cold expression on her face. Kuroka who felt a sudden killing intent jumped back barely missing a fist coming towards her gut from Kaneko's direction. Kaneko who saw her attack miss clicked her tongue and said, Wani sama we will be training in combat as well, right? With a smile on her face while cracking her knuckles. Seeing that all of them took a step back from the wit haired lowly and gulped their saliva. Tetsuya moved towards her and petted her head and said, Now now, don't be rude to others. And immediately her expression melted into a blissful smile, and she started purring on Tetsuya's caressing. The others who noticed a sudden change in her expression were left speechless while her sister was depressed and was murmuring, Shirin hates one each and Naya. After all the commotion was over everyone immediately rushed to get their swimsuit. Once they were done Tetsuya used his magic, and immediately a magic circle appeared under them, and all of them vanished from the mansion, only to immediately appear near the shore of the ocean. Tetsuya then snapped his fingers, and immediately a lot of beach chairs appeared on the beach. Tetsuya then looked at his trainees and said, keep your stuff and change. All of them nodded, and Tetsuya set up a tent for the girls to change into their swimsuits. Tetsuya then set up another tent for the boys, and went together with Saji and Milikas to change. Once they were done all of them came out together, and both Saji and Tetsuya were completely awestruck by the girls in their swimsuits, but both of them soon snapped out of it, as Tetsuya have already seen them naked or half-naked a lot of times, while Saji knew that the girls were his and Iki's lovers, and didn't dare to give a lustful glance to them. Tetsuya then complimented the girls for their swimsuits, to which they all just smiled at him with a slight blush on their cheeks. Tetsuya then called his trainees to his side and gave them something like a wristband to wear. All of them were confused for a bit, but soon shrugged their shoulders and put them on their wrists. Tetsuya nodded and said, now push the button on the wristband. All of them nodded and then noticed a button on it and simply pushed the button. Tetsuya just smiled sending a shiver down the smile of the girls while Saji was still fired up. Tetsuya the walked away and said, you can do as you please. Hearing that all of them blinked their eyes in surprise for a while, but soon a happy smile appeared on the faces of the girls while Saji had a slightly disappointed look on his face. I knew it, Ani Isama is not a person who will waste our summer vacation on training. Yeah, I agree with you I thought that he will make his work to our bone for our whole summer vacation in the name of training. But still it is unthinkable that Tetsuya would let us off the training so easily. Now now don't say something like that about Tetsuya, he is a great guy. Leaving that aside, let's go and play in the ocean. All of them gave a shout of excitement as well, and then started running towards the ocean, but just after all of them took a step, all of them felt huge amount of pressure on their bodies, which made them unable to move. All of them became shocked by that, but soon the girls realized something and turned their face towards the wristband and noticed that there was a slight blow in it. Tetsuya then came towards them with a smilly in his face followed by Tiamat and Raya. The girls who saw Tetsuya wanted to glare at him, but we are not able to because of the enormous pressure on their bodies, but still all of them thought, fuck you Tetsuya nodded and said, yeah, I am planning to do the same at night, but for now, let's talk about the training. Tetsuya then pointed at the wristbands and said, this must have been pretty obvious, but all of you must be feeling pretty weak and a lot of pressure on your bodies right? This is because of the, the thing that you wore, it got activated after 30 sec you switched it on. Tetsuya the waited for them to understand what all is going through their bodies and then said, now, how will you be able to move? Simple, the band on your wrists is just simply making an area in and around your bodies which increase the energy consumption, simply meaning you will require to use a lot of energy just for a simple task, even moving your eyelids must be difficult right now. So you just need to use much more energy to strengthen your body, or simply if you have the guts raise your aura enough to destroy those wristbands by overloading them. Anyway in simple terms, use as much energy as possible to move. Tetsuya then started walking away before soon turning around and said, Oh, and it is advisable by me to not simply remain standing there, the sun is very bright here, and you all without sunscreen, if you don't want to get sunburn just start moving. Hearing that all of them were shocked, but the girls were literally panicking from the news. Tetsuya then pointed towards a direction and said, after 10 kilometers, there is some sunscreen placed on the table, there, but I don't know if there is enough for everyone there or not. And once again all of them got shocked and looked at each other warily. Tetsuya was about to go back to let them try to simply move their hands, but stopped and said, oh, how can I forget about some motivation for you guys, to work hard, all the motionless trainees became immediately attentive, thinking that he was about to promise some reward to them, and looked at Tetsuya expectantly. 
Tetsuya turned towards the two dragon accompanying him and said, take off their sandals and heat up the sand. And immediately all the motionless people became pale. The people who were training under Tetsuya from before, immediately strengthened their bodies to the maximum they could, but at best they could only squirm around a bit. Tetsuya has set the limits very high for them, as he already knew how capable all of them actually were. Though, Saji's and Asami's bands give a lot less pressure compared to the others, but still for their bodies, it was still too much. The dragons simply shrugged their shoulder and walked toward the squirming dummies and started taking off the sandal. Tiamat when came closer to Kurumi looked at her for a while, but soon a smirk appeared on her face which immediately enraged her, and she tried to kick Tiamat, but it was to no avail. Tetsuya just laughed at her and took the sandals off Kurumi's feet, and started heating up the sand near her feet, earning a deadly glare from the said person, but in response, Tiamat only gave a mocking smile. Seeing what was going to happen Miyuki and Ingvald tried to use their water and ice magic to cool down the air near them, or form a barrier of sorts around them, but nothing happened. Both of them continued to try pitifully, but all their efforts resulted in nothing. Tetsuya noticed their futile attempts and saw the other trying something like that as well, but still nothing happened. Tetsuya chuckled and said, magic won't work those band block everything, your only options are either to strengthen your body and move with brute force, or pass enough energy to the bands to relieve a bit of the resistance that it is causing. All of them looked at him hatefully for a while, but soon looked towards their goal, and decided to persevere through this, they were used to his hellish methods, and it was just one of them, they can overcome it just like they did in the past. It's just at this time, their bodies were not as powerful as before, and they could actually feel the heat rising near their feet. Soon Kurumi's legs moved a bit, causing the other girls to believe that this was possible. Kurumi then started moving slowly towards the direction of the sunscreen, while she was gritting her teeth. Soon Ingvald and the others started moving as well, and now the only one who was left standing was Saji who was looking at Tetsuya with a panicked expression on his face. Tetsuya looked towards Saji with a smile on his face and said, do your best. And walked away. Saji gritted his teeth and thought, fuck I cannot remain left behind by others, my pride is a Nikki's right hand and is at stake. My future with beautiful girls all over my bed is at stake. My dream of towards an erotic future is at stake I cannot remain here. Saji pushed past your limits. Plus Ultra Aya. And pushed all the power he had in his body immediately to the band, and his body immediately became light and he started to run, but after a few steps he fell on the ground, and his body became stiff again. Tetsuya looked towards his underling from a distance and said, if you use up all your energy at once, then you will not have any energy to give to the band you idiot. How are you going to move without any energy? The other people who were not praying under him give Saji and the girls a pitiful look, and now knew why they fear Tetsuya's training. Kuroka who was training Kaneko on the side, looked at the girls and thought, I am so glad that I am not in his team. Kaneko looked at her sister and said, for the first time in a while I thought that having a sister like you is great. I don't know what would have happened to me if she was like Tetsuya Senpai. Kuroka immediately puffed her chest making her breasts jiggle a bit, making Kaneko look down at her own chest and become depressed. She then patted her chest and Ji then said, I am not small, I am just growing. Tetsuya continued to look at Saji for a while, and then sighed and said, looks like it cannot be helped. He then walked towards him and moved his hands towards his direction, and started transferring some of his energy to his body. After confirming that he had given enough energy to Saji he said, this is the only time that you are going to get a refill. Now get and move your ass. Saji who was lying on the ground completely motionless internally nodded his head and thanked Tetsuya for this chance. He then closed his eyes to concentrate better and slowly started to send the energy to the wristband, and once he found a certain limit was enough, his body twitched a bit. Noticing that he found the correct limit he got excited, and in the next moment his body became stiff once again. Tetsuya who noticed this said, don't lose your focus, you need to control your demonic energy efficiently if you want to move. Tetsuya continued to look at Saji for a while, but seeing that he was still unable to move, he sighed and thought, looks like this level of training is still difficult for him. He then used his telekinesis and lifted up Saji's body, making him confused for a moment. Tetsuya then removed his wristband, and immediately the stiffness and pressure around his body disappeared. Saji immediately started moving his limbs in order to feel them, and sighed in happiness that he was once again able to move. While he was thinking this Tetsuya said, looks like. We have to start with something easier for you, this one is too much difficult for someone who don't have a clear grasp at his energy. He then flew up in the air while dragging Saji with him through his telekinesis, and after making sure that they were quite up in the air he stopped and moved towards the ocean. After flying for a while he stopped and looked down and nodded his head. Tetsuya then said, take out your wings. To which Saji nodded and immediately a pair of black bag-like wings appeared behind him. Tetsuya then stopped using telekinesis on him, but instead formed a transparent energy field around him. Tetsuya then asked, you do know how to make shields and barriers with your demonic energy, right? Saji nodded his head and said, yes. President taught all of us from the student council for our own self-defense. Tetsuya nodded and said, good now make the strongest barrier or shield whatever you think you are better at. From here many attacks will aimed at you, but don't worry all those attacks will at best will hurt like an average adult human's punch. Saji took some time to take in the information, and then nodded his head and took a stance to get ready. 
Tetsuya nodded and said, good, you are allowed to dodge them as well, but the condition is that you will have to be inside the energy field the moment you pass or even touch the field you will suffer from a very strong electric shock, capable of killing a human. Hearing that Saji gulped his saliva but still nodded his head, although there was a slight hesitation in him. Tetsuya smiled at him and said, good, now show me your determination. And snapped his fingers, and immediately a lot of magic circles surrounded Saji, making him just gasp at the sheer number of magic circles around him. Tetsuya then flew back a bit and then said, so let's begin. Saji nodded and narrowed his eyes and was looking around attentively. He had decided to use shields instead of barriers, as his barriers were relatively weaker compared to his shields, and technically shield took much less energy compared to a barrier. Saji then moved his hands forwards, and a blue magic circle appeared in front of his hands with a diameter of 1 meter. He then looked towards Tetsuya and motioned him that he was ready. Tetsuya nodded his head with a smile on his face and said, so let's begin 3210 an important point, I forgot to mention. Saji who was looking around with a tensed face, immediately became limp and looked towards Tetsuya, with a bit of anger in his gaze, which Tetsuya just ignored and said, just remember that there are no other rules other than the two mentioned before, so anything can happen. Saji looked at him with a confused expression for a while not understanding what he was meaning to say, but still nodded his head. Tetsuya nodded and said, 3, 2, 1, go. And immediately the circles started glowing and started firing at Saji. Saji who noticed the circles glowing, immediately took his stance and blocked the first attack coming towards him, but was completely shocked by the outcome. The attack not only was transparent and was very hard to see, but the fact that just one attack completely destroyed his shield was there as well, but still this was still expected from Tetsuya who was training them like monsters, the fact that completely shocked him was Aniki what was that do you want to crush my dick, the attack was literally aimed at his dick. Tetsuya just smiled at him and said, survive for your wood to be children. Making Saji completely shocked, but soon he get out of the shock, and dodged another attack which was once again aimed at his dick. Saji then understood what Tetsuya meant by anything can happen, and gulped his saliva. He then blocked another attack with the shield in his second hand, which was once again destroyed in one hit. Seeing that Saji understood that his shields stand no chance here, and he have to continuously make shields. Tetsuya then said, yeah, that's right, you have to make sure that you use your demonic energy efficiently, no matter how strong the shield you make, they will be immediately destroyed, but, if you make shields weaker than the attack, then they will not only break the shield, but will hit you as well. Manage efficiently because not even I want to run out of energy in that place. Saji who heard him started panicking, and he immediately tried to argue with him, but stopped on seeing multiple attacks coming towards him. Dodging them he tried to run away and pass through the barrier, but before he was about to touch the barrier Tetsuya said, ah, about the electric shock from the energy field, do remember the electricity will attack on your dick as well. And immediately Saji stopped and turned around getting hit on the back since he turned around. He started to question whether Tetsuya held a grudge against him, and is torturing him instead of training and hearing that Tetsuya said, don't doubt me, it is legit training, by this, not only you will be able to use your demonic power efficiently. Your demonic power will grow as well, and the same is true for your reflexes, and if by chance you were to get hit, which you most probably will be, your endurance will raise as well. Just think of this as tough love. Saji who heard that understood what Tetsuya meant with this training, but still he felt a bit sour about this. Tetsuya then said, have your determination for your future surrounded by beauties faded away, wasn't it you who said that you will do anything for that? Don't lose hope. Give your best. Break through your limits. All this will pain only in the beginning, but the results will be much greater. All this is for the greater good Saji. Saji who heard him got reminded of his dream and his fire of determination rekindled in him, and he thought, I was an idiot like hell and Ikki will torture me, he is doing all this just for me. I cannot fall back here, I will show him that my determination is not weak. I will show him that I can get stating. I will show the whole world that Saji Jinshiro will be the greatest after an Ikki. Ah. And just as he thought that an attack hit his dick making him immediately crouch down and groan in pain and somehow by the will of the GODS author's authority, he touched the energy field and let's just say his brother will not be standing up for quite some time. And all this made Saji unconsciously with smoke coming out of his body. After hours of hellish training for Tetsuya's training and enjoyment for the others, all of them gathered together at a spot with all the girls from Tetsuya's group completely skin burned along with swollen feet and Saji standing in a weird P.O.S.T.U.R.E. like how Sonic from One Punch Man was after his balls crashed into Satama's fist. Tetsuya looked at all of them for a while, and then sighed and used his magic to heal all of them, and then removed their bands, and immediately all of them fell down on the sand, and were still motionless. Tetsuya looked at the girls for a while, and then looked towards the pups who were completely covered in sand and said, carry them all. The pups gave a bark and then transformed into Tiaf hair original size, and shook off all the sand on their bodies. Tetsuya then used his telekinesis and put all of them on their back, and then looked at Saji, but before he could place him up there, he raised his hand and stopped Tetsuya from saying anything and said, I would prefer to walk on my own. I cannot handle the shocks I will receive while being on their backs in the condition I am in. Tetsuya just shrugged his shoulders and said, do as you wish, but be prepared tomorrow would be much difficult. Saji just nodded his head and took out his wings and floated in the air, so as to not get any jerks from walking. 
Milikas looked towards Saji for a while and then said, he will have problem while peeing. Both Saji and Tatsaya looked towards the young Gremory, and Tatsaya just ruffled his hair. Both him and Saji then thought at the same time, peeing should be the least of his my worries, right now. His my children's future is at stake here. Tatsaya just cleaned his body fan changed his clothes and returned back to the mansion with everyone else. Tatsaya then ordered the wolves to place the exhausted girls in their room, and then himself went in the kitchen. Saji excused himself and then went to his room to rest and recover. The other guests looked at each other for a while, and then Kuroka said, well, I'm going to help Tatsaya NYAA, and simply slipped away from the group and went towards the kitchen. Kaneko wanted to stop her sister or go with her as well, but unfortunately she didn't know how to cook and just sat on the couch and took out some sweets and switched on the TV. Seeing which Milikas sat beside her as well as he rarely gets the chance to do so at at his home and underworld, as he is usually busy with his tutors. Then Alana as well sat beside her grandson, while Grafia decided to help Tatsaya in the kitchen, since despite being on vacation her instinct as a maid made her restless on seeing that someone else was working for her, and even Tatsaya at that. As a maid, it was unacceptable to her to let the one she would be serving was cooking for her, and decided to somehow convince him to let her do the work. Roswiswai was a bit confused about what to do looked at the two women beside her and asked, So Tiamat-sama I have heard that you have a hobby of collecting a lot of treasures, would you mind showing some to me? Hearing that someone beside her had an interest in her treasures Tiamat smiled proudly and said, Fu fu fu, well if you want to see them so badly then I guess I can show some of them to you. You coming as well Raya? Raya just waved her hand in denial and sat beside Kaneko, and took a pack of sweets from her without her permission making the little white-haired girl stayed at her in shock, but soon she stopped when she remembered that the woman beside her could kill her with a sneeze. While all this was going on Tatsaya who decided to prepare food for the others, was sitting in a corner reading a book while patting Kuroka who was lying on his lap with a smile on her face. Grafia who was somehow able to convince Tatsaya to let her do the work, was preparing the dinner for all of them, while wearing just an apron, saying that she is feeling hot for being so long on the beach. Tatsaya who was silently reading his book, occasionally glanced toward the silver-haired woman who was working in the kitchen with a mischievous smirk on her face. Kuroka who was lying on her lap said, it's hitting me nyaa don't be this naughty naya. Tatsaya looked down towards his lap and saw Kuroka looking at him with a smile while poking the bulge in his pants. Grafia who heard this smiled and said, if you want I can help you with your stress. Tatsaya didn't say anything and continued to read his book, and soon his bulge disappeared, and he thought, like you are not already planning to do the same. And saw Grafia putting something in a set of cutlery. Kuroka who smelled what she put opened her eyes wide and thought, so this maid is thinking the same as me and YAA and narrowed her eyes. Tatsaya who heard that shook his head and just left the matter be. Later that evening Grafia set up the table carefully and went to call the others not noticing a certain black cat sneaking in the room. As some of them people started to come down Grafia and Kuroka noticed that the trainees are not here yet. Seeing their confusion Tatsaya said, they all are already asleep. Just let them be they will eat it when they wake up. All of them then sat down to eat, and just immediately Kuroka and Grafia peeked towards Tatsaya's direction, who didn't notice them, and continued to eat with a smile on his face. Tatsaya then looked towards Grafia making her flinch and said, it's delicious, Grafia. Hearing that Grafia and for some reason even Kuroka gave out a sigh and smiled and welcomed him for his compliment. Raya who already knew what the cat and the maid were planning, set up a link with Tiamat and asked her, you noticed. Tiamat who heard a voice in her head, did not freak out and calmly said, yeah. So what the plan? Raya chuckled and said, what else, join the raid. You in? Tiamat smiled and said, yup. Suddenly both of them heard a voice at the same time, just come after everyone else is asleep, I don't want Milikas asking me why there were so many girls entering your room at night. Both of them flinched and immediately looked towards Tatsaya, who simply continued to eat his dinner while talking with Milikas, and making him eat the things that he was keeping at the side of his plate. After everyone was done having dinner and Tatsaya prepared some food and kept in the girls in Saji's room. He then entered the bathroom and after taking his bath he went to his room. All this while Grafia and Kuroka were waiting patiently for the others to fall asleep, while thinking that Tatsaya might be having difficulty to sleep. Once both of them confirmed that everyone was asleep, they slowly made their move towards Tatsaya's room. Once both of them came closer to his room they noticed each other, and immediately there was a moment of silence and tension in the atmosphere. Both of them stared at each other for a while till Kuroka said, so you use the same tactic as me, right? Grafia looked at her for a while with her usual cold expression on her face, and them said, no use fretting over it, both of us got the same idea and did the same thing, I guess. And once again there was silence for a while, but suddenly both of them said at the same time, let's head in together. And both of them stared at each other for a while before a chuckle left their mouth. Kuroka and Grafia then slowly opened the door in order to not make any noise, and silently entered the room and closed the door behind them. The room was completely dark, but being devils both of them didn't have any problems with their vision. Kuroka and Grafia looked towards the bed and smiled and said at the same time, just as I planned huh. Once he wakes up he will be uncontrollable. Both of them started to approach his bed, but stopped once they heard the door opening behind them. They turned around and saw Raya and Tiamat enter the room, and seeing the devil and Nekashu already in the room, both of them waved their hands, and Raya said, well, looks like both of you are very impatient. 
to come here this soon. Man, I guess it was to be expected if you were the ones who put that in his food. Hearing that both Karoka and Grafia were surprised. Their plan was already known to the two standing in front of them, and Grafia asked, so you two already knew what we were doing? Tiamat nodded her head and said, yep. Kuroka then asked, and you didn't try to stop Titsai and Naya from eating that food? Kurumi shook her head and said, why would we do that, and besides do you really think that everything is going according to your plan? Both Kuroka and Grafia looked at each other, and then back at the two dragons with a deadpan look and said, of course is Everth, Ing is going just as I planned. Said a voice which was familiar to all four of them, and immediately both Kuroka and Grafia got stiff, and slowly turned their head towards the sofa present inside the room. Just as they turned their heads the sofa which was lying vacant, suddenly had a person sitting on it while reading a book. Tetsuya put a bookmark on the page he was reading, and the book disappeared from his hand. He then stood up from his place and stretched his body and said, Man, I didn't know you guys would take this long. Rai and Tiamat chuckled on seeing the reaction of the other two, and then said, Well, the Gremory boy was very excited and took a lot longer to fall asleep. Tetsuya just nodded his head and said, Well, as long as he enjoying I guess it is fine. Well, whatever. Let's get on the business shall we? Tetsuya said and walked towards the bed. Seeing him acting normally both Kuroka and Grafia were confused and asked, aren't feeling a bit different? Tetsuya looked at the two for a while, and then smiled and said, oh, I knew about the aphrodisiac, and my body immediately detoxified it. So I am as healthy as I can be. Hearing that both Grafia's and Kuroka's eyes widened in shock, and both of them shouted at the same time, you took on an aphrodisiac which can make even a dragon king got excited for days AMD you are still fine, and this time it was the time for the other three in the room to flinch in surprise and stare at the two girls with widened eyes. All three of them then sighed and Tiamat said, I am thankful that Tetsuya didn't decide to swap the dishes and just detoxify it. I don't want to think what would have happened if someone else have eaten that food. Riot chuckled and then said, that would have been hilarious, especially if that Vritra boy would have eaten it. He probably would have been in so much pain after that training he went through, fuck, I can't even imagine it. Tetsuya massaged his temples for a while and then said, for all things I am glad that it was not Mullikas who ate that. Seriously you two from where did you got something that potent? Kuroka then said with a confident smile and said, I borrowed it from the goddess called Aphrodite, after Vali decided to fight some gods from the Pathanon. Grafia just said, trade secret, and stood silent. Tetsuya stared at the maid for a while and finally sighed in defeat. Whatever, I will just punish you two for this. And smirked and pulled all of them towards him with his telekinesis and made a time dilation field around the room. He then used the same medicine that both of them used on him, and for the whole night the room was filled with noises of the girls shouting on receiving their punishment. Time skip? 10 days after 10 days of intense training torture Tetsuya's group, along with the two dragon sacred gear wielders, were allowed to take a day off from the training. They all were so glad about it that Saji and Asami even shed some tears of joy, while the other girls nodded on seeing the two, and remembered the first time they started training. For them it was nostalgic on seeing their juniors acting like that. During these 10 days Tetsuya made them go through so much physical tortures that their bodies were now resistant to some amount of pain. For Saji he can take on any attack from mid-low class level, being like they are nothing and was himself at high mid-class level, and that is if he is not using his sacred gear. Asami too have improved, but her training with them from earlier made her capable of fighting low high class being without her sacred gear, and with her balance breaker, she can now take on peak high class beings with ease, though people like Sarayar Gun completely serious riser, were still in another league for her, but she can easily handle Rias. The girls from Tetsuya's group who have been on a bottleneck for more than a year, finally broke through, and were now all of them were Satan class beings, though low Satan class. Ingvald and Karumi who were already in Satan class level, made great progress, as well as Ingvald broke through and became mid Satan class level, and Karumi was at the bottleneck of her peak Satan class level. Both of them were very glad because of the increase in their powers, as both of them had been stuck on their previous levels for past two years, and that is not considering the time that they spent in time chamber. Ingvald also was now able to control her super class power effectively, though for a short amount of time, and now could go to low super class level for half an hour per day. And just like other super class devils she too changes her form. In her super form her violet hair turns blue with a glow coming out of her body of the same color as well. She also gains a leviathan's tail, and her skin gets covered with leviathan's scales, making her look more like a humanoid leviathan. Seeing that Ingvald getting back to her super form, the rest of the teammates were happy for her, and congratulated her with Karumi being the most enthusiastic among all of them, as both her and Ingvald have been close in strength for quite a long time, and consider each other as their rivals. Seeing that her rival got a hang of her original power, Karumi felt a little left out, since she required to enter Tetsuya's body in order to go to her tailed beast form. Hearing her problem Tetsuya just stared at her for a while and said, you really are an idiot aren't you? He then lifted his shirt which revealed his chiseled body to all of them, making the four girls who have been going on with him during the night daily blush a bit. Tetsuya ignored the looks that they were giving to him and focused on his body, and soon some black inscriptions appeared on his belly. Tetsuya simply released the seal but didn't remove it because if he did Karumi will be immediately sent back to the astral plane. 
But Kurumi who didn't knew that widened her eyes in shock and immediately grabbed Tetsuya's hand in order to stop him and said, what are you doing? Don't you know that a person will die if a failed beast is removed from its body? And immediately tried to put the seal back on him. But Tetsuya grabbed her hand and said, whoa whoa, wait a bit. I don't have any intention to die and for your information I have only released a seal, not remove the seal you are still a part of me. So don't stress too much about it. Besides do you think that something like removing a tailed beast from my body will kill me? Hearing that all of them remained silent for a while, and Kurumi felt embarrassed by thinking that something like this could harm him. Raya who have standing on the sides chuckled and said, a person who have been keeping up with me in bad for 10 days, would not suffer from something like this. But immediately all the girls who have been training for the pat 10 day, looked at her making Raya and smirk at them, while Grafia, Kuroka and Tiamat smirked as well. Seeing their smirk the others immediately glared back at them, and then dragged Tetsaya along with them to his bedroom. There was no news from any of them for three days after that incident. Three days later the door of Tetsaya's room opened and Tetsaya came out of the room while stretching his body. His muscles felt a bit sore from all the hard work that he did for all those three days, not to mention he put a time dilation barrier around the room at that. He then silently went towards the bathroom and thought, it took 12 days to make them pass out huh, looks like the training is effective in more than one way. After he was done with his bath and was feeling refreshed, he went out of his mansion and saw Grafia and Venelana teaching Milikas how to handle his demonic energy, while Saji would take out any excess energy that he had with his sacred gear. Once Tetsaya's figure was visible to them Saji immediately greeted him followed by the others with Milikas immediately rushing towards him and asking him to play with him. Tetsaya just smiled and agreed to the adorable Gremory's request and decided to take the ones why were still awake to the amusement park in his dimension. Saji declined though since he wanted to rest up a bit more, knowing that his training will begin soon and went inside the mansion. On his way Milikas who was in Tetsaya's shoulders asked, Ani-chan where are Miyuki-san and the others? Tetsaya whose smile wavered for a bit controlled himself and said, after all that training they all felt a bit sick, so I gave them the medicine, and now they are sleeping to recover. Milikas looked at him for a while and then asked, but you took three days. To his question Grafia said, big dick cough cough treatments take longer to pleak off cure Milikas sama. Hearing that all the people who knew what treatment was going on looked at her and then stared towards Tetsaya's lower half, and immediately Kaneko and Roswis had an intense blush on their faces, while Venelana just kept a hand on her mouth and said, ara ara. Tetsaya just ignored the looks he was getting and went with Milikas to the ride he wanted to go, while the others just enjoyed on their own. After enjoying to their heart's content in the amusement park, all of them went back and noticed all the girls from the Tetsaya's group cooking in the kitchen. He and the others tried to help them, but were rejected by the girls who continued to do their work. Soon the girls were done and all of them had dinner together, after which everyone just went back to sleep. A few days later, Tetsaya could be seen flying in the air with a book in hand, dodging the attacks coming towards him from the girls of his group. All of them had their weapons out, and Karumi and Ingvald were even in their tailed beast and super form respectively, with Ingvald even using her sacred gear as they were fighting over the ocean. The other girls also were releasing their immense aura while firing their attacks and trying to strike him as well, but Tetsaya would simply dodge or just push them away, which sending them flying back a few hundred meters or so. The others who were watching the fight go on were sweating bullets just seeing how much destruction each of their attacks was causing, but still the shocking display of Tetsaya just evading all of them left them speechless. Seeing their fight the devil's eyes were fixed on him with Saji and Milikas having their respect towards Tetsaya increased tenfold. Both of them knew that their Aniki brother was strong, but just seeing him in action made him practically seem like a god to them. Meanwhile the dragons were also excited on seeing the fight. Drake who was inside the gauntlet, even though didn't want to fight him head on once again, his dragon blood which was boiling on seeing the fight, was making it difficult for him to calm down. Same was the case for Vritra and Tiamat who were holding themselves back from fighting them, although Tiamat had made up her mind to fight with Kurumi once this was over. Knowing that Kurumi had access to her true form without Tetsaya's help, made her want to beat the shit out of the vixen, who was bragging so much about regaining her full power for quite a few days. But still the one having the most difficult time were Roswis and Raya. Roswis because she was just completely shaken by the display of strength by the group, and was not doing a good job to hold on to her sanity. She has learned it before that there are a lot of beings in the world who can destroy entire countries with ease, but seeing such a display with her own eyes, was something which shook her to the core. Raya on the other hand was way too eager to fight Tetsaya. It was very rare for her to find someone strong enough who can fight with her, and seeing that there was someone like that in front of him, and is still not able to fight him, made her frustrated since she was not allowed to fight Tetsaya. The reason for that was other than Tetsaya's and Vali's group, along with Kaneko nobody knew her real identity, and was introduced to the others as Tetsaya's cousin, and if she were to show her real power to others, the fact that Great Red has left the dimensional gap, would be out, and will cause a huge amount of headache for Tetsaya, who is currently sheltering her. There is also the fact that if both her and Tetsaya were to fight the chances of his dimension to be destroyed were quite high, and he really was not in the mood to rebuild everything from scratch. These facts made her very irritated, and she had decided to drag him back to the dimensional gap and have an all-out fight with him. Now back to the Tetsaya's group. 
Currently Miyuki, Himari, Kagura, Asia, Shizuka Karen and Ingvald all were all trying to slash or hit Tetsuya, who was just dodging their attacks just marginally, so as to make them a bit more frustrated from missing him so closely, and just as his intention all of them were gritting their teeth as they were unable to land even a single hit on him and were glaring at Tetsuya with the intention to kill him knowing that without that they didn't stand a chance. Tetsuya who was not bothered by their killing intent, just kept reading his book and slowly turned the page with an amused expression on his face. Seeing that action the girls just got angrier, and their aura got even more messier than before. Miyuki who was just on the brink on going to the dark side against her Ani Isama looked back and shouted, Hey bitch aren't you ready yet just fire that goddamn bomb thing of yours you glowing shit of a fox and signing use more explosive power in your shots, we have not kept you in the back to fuck yourself show motivation here we need power. You understand. We need P-O-W-E-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-
Ross was looked at Tatsaya for a while and then asked, what kind of work would it be? Tatsaya then said, well, it depends on you. Whether you want to cooperate in the supernatural business or you want to work in a more normal human-like way or both. Ross was gave it a thought for a while and then said, what might be the positions in all those respective categories? Tatsaya and her then sat down on the sofas and started discussing seeing which the others left the room and decided to check on how the others have been after the training session. Tatsaya and Roswas continued to discuss for quite a long time, and finally it was decided that Roswas would be dealing with both natural and supernatural jobs and would be working as his secretary. Tatsaya decided to give her this position as he already heard how much Aden made her work on her own and was surprised to see that she alone was working more than all his clones at his restaurant combined and by no means Tatsaya used to work less. He just gave her a look of pity and decided to give her a high salary compared to what he used to give to others, not because he was pitying her, but because the work which was assigned to her would greatly reduce the number of clones that he used to form and all the information overload he used to receive in his head when they disappear and smoke. It was not like he had problem in managing the data on his own, but if someone else was willing to do it for him, he would happily allow that person to do it. He already have a lot to do with managing multiple companies and restaurant chains, coupled with his school and supernatural business. Braswas who now had a new job was feeling happy because not only her job was better than the last one, the salary was better as well, and she also got a chance to learn some of the magic that he and his group used during the time they were at his dimension which highly intrigued her. Tatsaya who was now sitting in front of his new secretary, decided to send her back to his home and start working from today and prepare the reports so that he can go through them once he goes back to Kuo in a day or two. Roswas who received her first task from her new boss, happily nodded her head and teleported back to Shuba residence. Later that day Tatsaya and the others met Ria's and her peerage, and Tatsaya was immediately tackled by Gaspar, who started ranting about how Azazel threw him into a scary place filled with people. Tatsaya was somehow able to calm him down, and then Zenovia came forward and said, I want a rematch to see how much have I improved. Which immediately picked the interest of the Gremory peerage, except for Asami. Tatsaya who heard her just smirked and asked, sure, let's duel it out. And took out his spoon and motioned her to follow him. Seeing him still fighting with the spoon made Zenovia feel irritated seeing that he was not taking her seriously. The group who fought Tatsaya just a few days ago then thought, compared to you, he fought all of us just with a book in his hand for the whole time. Zenovia and Tatsaya were now standing in front of each other in the Gremory training field, while the others were sitting on the sides. Tatsaya who was holding his spoon like a rapier, was looking towards Zenovia, who was in her bodysuit with her durandal on her shoulders. Miyuki who was acting as a referee, just looked at both of them with a bored expression and said, just start it off. And walked away without bothering to watch them closely. She believed that it was pointless because all the moves that Zenovia would make would be hardly missed by her eyes, and if Tatsaya decided to use something complex, then not even Raya could tell what he did. So thinking that it was totally pointless to act as a referee, she just took a distance and used her ice magic to make a throne for herself and sat on it like a queen and watched a fight. Zenovia who had already experienced charging directly at him, decided to take a safe approach this time. Tatsaya who saw that smiled and asked, hey, not going to jump on me? But Zenovia didn't answer him and continued to stare at him. Tatsaya just smirked and said, then let me make the first move. And casually threw his spoon up in the sky, making the Gremory peerage confused by his action. Zenovia too looked at the spoon in surprise but was suddenly startled, never get your eyes off your opponent. And Zenovia immediately turned around to see Tatsaya standing behind her, but before she could do anything, Tatsaya pushed a pressure point in her hand, making it go numb, and snatched Durandal from Zenovia and aimed at her neck. It's my win I guess. Zenovia just looked at him for a while, but soon have a sigh and said, looks like it. Look down. Tatsaya lowered the sword as well and pushed it on the ground and healed the numbness in her hand and said, well, don't fret too much, I can tell you have improved, it's just that your enemy was way above your league. Zenovia then looked at him with widened eyes, but soon nodded her head, realizing that what he said was absolutely correct. She then stored her sword back and then said, next time I will beat you. Tatsaya just called his spoon back to him using his telekinesis and said, sure, me and my spoon will look forward to that day. And walked away while swinging his spoon between his fingers. Zenovia started following him as well, while asking tips from him to improve herself. After the duel with Zenovia Tatsaya and the others went inside for dinner, and after resting for the night, decided to go back to the human world which made Melikas, Grafia and Venelana very sad, but they knew that they had to go back to their normal lives. Melikas though said that he would soon come to meet him in Kuo to which Tatsaya consented with a smile on his face. Tatsaya and the others thanked everyone in the Gremory mansion for their help during the past few days, and then decided to say their goodbyes to the other friends like Sereerg and the others as well. While visiting Sereerg's mansion he asked for a duel from Tatsaya, who decided to entertain his friend for a bit. After the duel was over he went to the Phoenix mansion much to the surprise of Riser and his family, though Ravel was very excited and immediately went in the kitchen to bake some sweets for Tatsaya. They all talked for a while, and Asami also took some notes from Jessica Phoenix about controlling manipulating her fire. After they were done they left for the train station and met up with Citri Peerage who was accompanied by Seraphol much to Sona's displeasure. 
Seraphil immediately hugged Tetsuya like a cola and tried to make him stay for a few more days, only to be shot down by Tetsuya, which made her feel sad. Tetsuya who saw her looking depressed, sighed and said, Hey, Sarah how about we put up a magical girl even like the last time at my shop. Of course Sona will be working as well. Hearing that both the sisters looked towards Tetsuya one with fear and the other with excitement. Seraphil immediately nodded her head and said, Sure let's do that, I will prepare the cutest costume for my magical girl Sotan. Sona tried to make them give up on the idea, but the two totally ignored her making her crouch down in corner with a depressed aura around her. Seeing that Tsubaki and Ria started to comfort their childhood friend. Once their train arrived all of them get on it and started their journey back to Kuo. On the whole way there was discussion among both the peerages about how their training went during which Asami and Saji just kept quiet, not wanting to remember the torture they went through and just sat in a corner. Once they all were back home Ria's and Sona reminded all of them that they should make sure that their holiday homework is complete, if not the reputation of their clubs will worsen. Hearing that both Asami, Zenovia and some girls from Citri Group and Saji got shocked as they just remembered about that stuff and were panicking. Only Tetsuya and his group were calm about the situation, and it was not because they had already done the homework, no they haven't even started it yet. The fact that they were not panicking was that they had a private time chamber in their house, coupled with their shadow clones. It would just take them a few minutes of real world time to be done with it. Asami and Zenovia immediately teleported back to the Gremory girls' room leaving behind the others, who left soon as well, after saying goodbyes to Tetsuya and the others. Tetsuya made a clone of himself and instructed it to go through the homework, while he was going to check how well did his new secretary do her job. Tetsuya then teleported to the office he had given to Roswas, which was just a soundproof room in his house. Once he came in the room Roswas who was sitting in her desk and doing some stuff, freaked out and pointed her sword at him, but soon panicked when she noticed that it was her new boss who she was possible pointing her sword at. Kaya. Tetsuya Sama sorry about this, I was not expecting you to suddenly appear in front of me, please don't fire me. And immediately lowered her head. Tetsuya looked at her overreacting secretary and said, no need to worry about that, I am not bothered by it, so raise your head. Roswas looked up and had some tears in her eyes, seeing which Tetsuya offered her a handkerchief which she gratefully accepted. Tetsuya then said, now then if you have calmed down. Give me the report on everything. Roswas immediately went to her secretary mode and nodded her head and handed some documents to Tetsuya, while she also explained him some of the points in her reports. Tetsuya who saw the compiled reports was a bit surprised seeing how well she had done her work and was happy to know that she made a good choice in making her his secretary. Once they both were done both of them gave a tired sigh and leaned back on the sofas. Tetsuya looked at Roswas and said, good job Roswas, you did stood up to my expectations. Roswas who heard Tetsuya's words, got a bit embarrassed as she was not used to hearing praise for her work and said, I I, I am happy that I was of use to you. Tetsuya just chuckled and said, no need to be so reserved. You can give yourself more credit. Anyways and then stood up from his seat and asked, it is almost time for dinner. Is there anything that you want to eat? Ah, and no need to hold back today is the celebration of you joining our group, so you can let your imagination run wild. Hearing that Roswas felt happy. She was not treated this good ever since she started working as a Valkyrie, and seeing him giving this much importance to someone who just joined them was something she was not used to. She teared up a bit but soon wiped her eyes. Tetsuya then offered her his hand and said, well let's call the others and head off to the restaurant. Ross was nodded happily and then stood took his hand and went with him to where the others were. Tetsuya then stopped in front of a door and said, oh. And Ross was, since you have joined our ranks there is one thing that you should make sure of. Tetsuya looked at her and with a smile on his face said, The things we talk about amongst ourselves or the things that you see, should not be leaked to the others, not even your family, if they are not a part of our group or have my permission. Understood. Roswas who saw Tetsuya's smile felt a shiver and immediately nodded her head. Even though her new boss was very nice, he is very dangerous as well. Tetsuya then smiled as well and said, Good, just so you know if I come to know you have given someone information either intentionally or unintentionally, then be prepared for the worst. And then knocked on the door. Roswas who heard the warning took a step back and resolved herself to not even say a word to anyone. She was happy with her life and didn't plan of giving up on living anytime soon. Soon the door was opened by Tetsuya's clone, who on seeing Roswas and Tetsuya nodded his head and said, don't worry they have almost finished their work. Tetsuya nodded and went in the room and saw multiple clones of his girls working on their homeworks, while those who didn't have any to begin with were just lazing around. Tetsuya and Roswas then took a seat near them as well, and Tetsuya took out a fan of beer and gave it to Roswas, who immediately forgot the threat that Tetsuya just have her, and started gulping down the drink. Seeing her the other three chuckled and started drinking theirs as well, and waited for the others to finish their homework. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.